بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحانك لا نحصي سناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلم السابقين وقائد الغر المحجلين وشفيع المذنبين وسيد ولد آدم أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله الغر الميامين وأصحابه نجوم الدين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم ألهمنا رشدنا وعزنا من شرور أنفسنا اللهم هيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا أبا بعد dear brothers and sisters um, first you will have small introduction about the author Sayyidina al-Jazuri uh, I'm sorry I don't have the details you know about his life but I think he was and passed away in the uh, eighth century of Hijra he was uh, uh, in Morocco and he was buried in uh, uh, a famous city there called Fas, okay, and uh, uh, the story how did he write his this book, you know, because uh, he was very uh, highly educated uh, scholar, you know, and he went outside, you know, for one reason or another, you know, and felt thirsty and he saw a wheel without anything on it you know and he wanted to to drink from that particular uh, wheel and he looked around and he found a house there or uh, he, he knocked the door and a, a, a young girl she opened the door and uh, he, he asked her for some container you know to drink from the wheel she she asked him who are you and uh, when uh, she was told she said she was surprised really surprised you are Jazuri the big and great scholar you don't know how to get water you know follow me and uh, he followed her and she just spit in the uh, wheel you know and the whole water c came up you know uh, and he asked her how did you uh, reach this level you know and she said by making the road or salawat on the Sayyidina Muhammad who uh, used to f be followed you know by the wild animal whenever he walked in the uh, open area or whatever and this is one of the salawat in this great book uh, the, the, the main as, uh, then he uh, swear that he's going to uh, write a book, you know, on salawat. We have plenty of books, you know, on salawat ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But this book, you know, has uh, this acceptance, you know, from all Muslim wars, you know, not limited to Morocco. In all w world, I still remember when I was young, you know, in the mosques, you have the copies of the Holy Quran and next to them copies you know of Dala'il um, al-Khayrat uh, it's not like Quran but uh, you, it used in the mosques you know to be next to it you know even the woman when she get got married you know she will be uh, will have a gift you know of a copy of the Quran and a copy of Dala'il al-Khayrat what what I observed recently that this book, even though he is originally for Salawat al Nabi, but in each chapter which has been divided, I assume, after the author, you, you find a certain portion, you know, uh, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, if you try to uh, uh, select them you know, or uh, pull them away this is may be used for the ordinary dua that you have you may uh, add to it some of these sentences you know or some of these portions that has been mentioned you know, in this book you know and this is uh, as I said you know it has besides yeah, the main the, the, the main subject here to speak about the Prophet besides it we are going to find uh, 
every once in a while if you consider the book as one unit you know or in each chapter when you have it divided you know you are going to find that there is certain portion you know uh, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and very uh, unique praise form you know that myself I may not be able to do you know then after this introduction we'll go to the holy names the holy names of the prophet as i said yesterday you have different opinion about it you know i would like to subdivide it to uh, different portions you know the first portion was mentioned the holy, holy quran second portion it was mentioned in authentic hadith uh, third portion mentioned in hadith in general you know uh, the, the last portion you know was given by certain scholars that's why you find the difference you know between one copy or one book and another book you know not the copy even the copies you know in the la il khirat you may have different copies and different names you know of the same written way of word you know you may have different uh, 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 copy or sometimes difference in pronunciation even those hadith narrated you know by the Prophet Sallallahu you may have some difference in uh, pronunciation and this is going to enrich your knowledge you know about uh, the, the name itself you know that that's why you may have some names may contain different meanings you know and have different matters uh, that the number given by some scholars you know about the names of the prophet ﷺ was much higher than what mentioned here in the la il khirat but these are the uh, seed or the uh, central uh, one you know of all of his names you know and this has been accepted on you know i i have i did see a work you know i don't know what that happened to to it you know i did see a work you know a few years ago about a pakistani person who wants to collect the all names you know of the prophet and perhaps i did see two volumes i forgot you know and he reached the letter ha in arabic which is very early one you know if he was going to complete it you know for sure it's going to be very huge and large uh, portion some of these names you know mentioned in that book or here or elsewhere they may be as description not as real name okay yani here we should have even the difference you know between the description and the name why we should have the difference you know that the reality that the prophet may fit all of these matters or more than our matters you know but to to call it a name you have some controversy about it you know and uh, uh, is it important you know to call the prophet or permitted to call the prophet you have some cont controversy about it you know uh, the very last point you should whenever we read any name feel or understand the perfectness there this is above our limit above our understanding okay and it's going to be much more than what we expect and this is i summarized it you know yesterday by the narration from sayyidina ali ibn abi talib and ibn mas'ud when they said both of them إذا سمعتم الحديث عن رسول الله فظنوا به الذي هو أهدى والذي هو أتقى والذي هو أهيا and that's why you have this form was called in Arabic أفعل التفضيل or English the most or the best okay used frequently for the Prophet ﷺ even in some expression of that description by some companion they may say لم أرى قبله ولا بعده مثله I haven't seen anyone before or after similar to him uh, this is for some people that they don't have an idea this may be considered exaggeration or out of love okay but this is the reality of him sallallahu alaihi wasallam when you look thoroughly you know about his description about his uh, characters about his life or whatever you are going to, we have something you know and this is was the main reason why sayyidina khalid ibn al walid became muslim when he was uh, or he gave the, this reason you know he was not asked but he gave this reason to say Naam al he said what the meaning of it that i i'm smart one i study the 
event take place you know this life you are going to find it as mentioned by him sallallahu alaihi wasallam anything of this life related you know may go up 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 and then all of a sudden it's going to go down whereas the the matter of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is going to go up all the time you know and this is the meaning of munkar in arabic that's mean this is unusual doesn't fit any of our rules you know in this dunya okay and that's this way you know of observing what's going on with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam make khalid ibn walid become muslim you know because of this matter because he felt that this is against the rules of this dunya okay this is extraordinary all they have extraordinaries in the in their life the atheists they will consider incredible or unbelievable and they don't know any anything about it you know as muslim i will look to the extraordinaries this done by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell us in indirect way that those physical rules that you have or whatever they govern you they don't govern allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absolute do you have an example of it yes i ex i have i have example of it surah al-fatiha okay surah al-fatiha i have read it i don't know how many times thousands of time you know but i still feel i need to read it again you know if you form for me from the arabic letters a text similar to Surah Al-Fatiha and ask me to repeat it, you know, 20 times, I'll get fed up of it. This is indirect message from Allah that whatever belongs to your people, you know, is going to be too limited. What, whatever lim related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be absolute and not limited. To have the Prophet sallallahu mentioned in very far area like this and far time and whatever you know after those many years you know by itself it's extraordinary i'm speaking about myself i'm not going to speak about anyone i may know the name of my grandfather or his father or whatever you know when you go further in my language even the name i don't know besides the description besides the name uh, holy names you got you see you got my point yeah this is not something you know made in this life no this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a message given to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to feel the extraordinary there. That's why I would like from myself to start with, you know, whenever I read any name about the name, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to feel the extraordinary, okay? Not to take it as the usual measurement. On the other hand, and this is my, uh, yani my last point was of two division, you know, all of us, including myself, we should search about our benefit i i i agree with you that the prophet sallallahu at the highest point uh, the master of creation and not going to be understood well you know by me or by one and by anyone else you know but what benefit will get from mentioning his name will get our own benefit you know to understand do we share some of those specialties with him yes we share this is the specialty was given to him sallallahu but we share it with him you know when we pray wherever we want to pray when we make that tayammum this specialty of the prophet sallallahu we share it with him when you have our line you know similar to the line of angels this is specialty to the prophet but we share it you know yeah what I try, what i'm trying to say whenever you have any of those holy names try to find your portion there you know for, for the Prophet Sallallahu you should have the fly idea, you should imagine, you should go beyond your imagination or you, you, your, your thought, okay? But for yourself, try to improve yourself, you know, by finding your share there, okay? What did you get from that particular name? For sure, there are special names, you know, that you, you cannot share, you know, as the khasais, as the specialties of his, sallallahu alayhi wa khatamun nabiyin. This was one of his specialties. I don't share it with him. The, the one I gave you example about, you know, we may share it with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So here, let's try to find our way. I'm telling you, one of the problem of Muslims nowadays, what is it, yani? Why do we do we observe that many of the youth they may run away, or this is because of my problem, not because of the Prophet We don't know 
how to express ourselves toward him. We don't know how to celebrate his occasions. We don't. Yani we are going to be, for some of our people, especially the elderly, we are going to be quite nice. Okay, but for the youth, they are not interested in this, you know. This is more like classic way, you know, of celebrating, you know, the Prophet They want to have some other ideas, you know. As a, an elderly, you should share this with them, you know. You should show that you get yourself, you know, involved in this matter. Whether you like it or not, you know, you should share. Why? Because here we are in this hall and elsewhere, or as a community, we are here to help each other, you know, okay? We have a case here, yes, we have a case. We have a case with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we should get closer to him, you know, as much as we can, you know, and one of the way to help each other, you know, and inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this session, you know, a strong helper for all of us, you know, to get to know the Prophet sallallahu more, this is my problem to, to 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 get to to know the valuable matters that were, were given to me okay and try to deliver it to someone else you know because we have this problem we have some people yani this make my pain in my heart you know we have some people they run away of our islam they run away from allah subhanahu wa they run, run away from the prophet some some other muslim they may say all they are the same i'm going uh, for, for this business you know of the same i'm going to highlight i'm not telling you know these are everything you know i'm going to highlight three points mentioned by the prophet sallallahu or in the quran specialty of him sallallahu alaihi wasallam you don't find correct me if i'm wrong you don't find any messenger of Allah. All of them, they are honest, they are truthful, they are great, you know, their shoes on my head or whatever, you know. But none of them did declare this about him except the Prophet The three points that he said, I'm the last one. If you bring me, did any of the messenger did say that I'm the last one? He said, I am for all humankind. Again, no one of the messenger to I'm not putting anyone down all of them as I said their shoes is above my head even okay and the third point he said I am the best these three comments okay you may find person saying I am the best you know you may find my religion is the best perhaps he is Buddhism you know or he has Buddhism or whatever you know. but to have messenger or prophet said so it has different story in an accurate transmission okay do you have it in accurate transmission that one of the messenger did say one of these three points you know I don't see it I'm sorry to tell you not only only the non-muslim I have some comments you know or receive some comments which make me you know feel bad really about Muslim, they said if he is not sent, someone else is going to be sent. That's me, this Muslim did not understand any of the value of the Prophet. Did not understand the specialty of him. Did not understand this. this and, and, and this is our problem. Why it's our. Uh, I may, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me, you know, pass away, you know, with Islam. But this is for the other. The others is not good. Why it's not good? Because, because we are. Causing, we are creating some problem for the other to make them, make them, you know, feel that the Prophet is the same. In his time, in his life, was not the same. And in our time, it was not the same. In the uh, hereafter, the Qiyam is not going to be the same. In uh, grave uh, trial. It's not going to be the same because you are going to be asked about him and you name it, you know. We know some of those matters, we, we may not know all of them. So what I'm trying to say, what you have of those great names, you know, that make you rich, you know, in your knowledge and try to get the maximum of them, try to know the value of the Prophet Sallallahu and besides that, try to... Uh, convey it to everyone you know because we live in a time you know that we have this problem i'm going to speak about our people you know back in syria i'm sorry to tell you when we have those events you know many of them they fled to uh, europe you know or to us most of them to europe more than usa what did happen 
I'm sorry to tell you, you know, many of them, they divorce their religion completely. They don't recognize them. Why? My answer, because they did not know the value that they have in their hand. Okay? Yeah, what I'm trying to say, we are defeated inside. We are vulnerable, for, uh, we are delicate, you know, to be affected by some other. See, how great is this person? Yes, we have great person. Here is the great person, not there. Okay, here you have the great person. Here you have the great character. Here you have the great humankind that is going to confirm me as humankind. Okay, the others, they want me to be like animal. Okay, they may give me some food. They may compete, you know, for, for food or money or this or that, you know. The, all of these matters, all of these targets, you know, they don't confirm me as a humankind. In my view, the only person confirm me as humankind is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some, someone may have different look, but I'm going to be open and thorough, you know, about my, uh, how do I feel, you know. Without a Prophet, I'm going to be illegal one. And if I'm illegal son of my parents, I'm not going to sit down here and shout, you know, and speak, you know. I'm going to put my head down, you know. Some, uh, someone else may have different opinion. You know. I'm going to put my head down and just keep silent, you know, and run away and go. Okay? What make me talk and uh, speak and uh, explain and this or that, that I'm, alhamdulillah, legal. So how did I become legal? This is yeah, to tell all of us, you know, that the inaya, the care from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with us, even with, before our presence, okay? Through Him, sallallahu alayhi wa You want physical thing? I'll give you physical thing, you know. You, you recite now, towards the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, and uh, as the Prophet Sallallahu did say that this was given to him you know, from a treasure, you know, under the throne of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We are speaking about levels, you know. I don't even يعني, imagine to to have such thing, you know, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is going to forgive anyone who have a mistake or uh, uh, forgetting to do so. Rabbana la tu'akhidna anna sina akhtan qala qad fa'alt and you see, those, all of those dua, you know, toward the end of it, you know, they have been, they have been put and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where, where are you know, when, when you have those great stance, you know, I was not here. I was not يعني, mentioned, you know, by our, I was in the Adam, as they say in Arabic, you know, and all of those great matters and many other matters that, that uh, I think they, they may be much more uh, important and much more valuable to me than those matters, you know, they were given to me before even my presence, you know, in this life, you know. How you, uh, so please, I would like from myself and from the other, carry on, continue what you have. Okay, uh, try to go up, not to go down. Being having money or being having, you know, education or this or that, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you those matters to help you in this life, to get closer to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so, uh, many people, they may use it for the opposite way. They may, may use it, you know, to get away, to run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to feel themselves, you know, that they are self-efficient, you know, and they may do whatever you do. Whereas the believer, he should get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not here to prove this point for everyone, you know, because some, even of the believer, as we read in hadith or story, they may run away. It's better, inni udabbiru ibadi wa ilmi subhanahu wa ta'ala did say, because some people, when they are given this, you know, they may this may be against their case, you know, against their uh, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you name it, you know. So, uh, please beg Allah to make all of those matters, you know, all of these ni'am, you know, to make you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I may give you example of it, you know. When you return back, you know, home, you know, after long travel or long trip, and you uh, bring some presents, you know, or some gifts, you know, to your kids, if they are busy with the gift and they did not take any care to, for, to you, you know, or did not pay their attention, how do you feel about it? 
you may be wise, you know, not showing this, you know, but you are going to feel bad really in your heart, okay? Because those kids, you know, they, they have much more preference to those matters, you know, than me. And here we have the same case with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us, they are going to get themselves, you know, busy, you know, on those matters, you know, and they tend to forget Allah, don't speak with Allah, don't do anything, you know, with Allah. That's it, I'm rich, I have everything, you know, available or whatever, you know. And this is by itself, it's very bad attitude. And we are childish, you know, by this, you know. We are like children, you know, we may laugh at this. Look at this child, poor child, you know, he ran after the car, you know, and he forgets me and you, you start laughing you are doing the same you are doing the same you know with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you should change your attitude to, toward him subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, sorry I make it I did not expect to speak uh, as much you know but I make it long uh, introduction and because I want to see the practical point of mentioning the holy names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I would, I, I would like to have from my side and from everyone's side to improve our self you know, and our relation with Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After that we may start the names. The first and the most honorable, they, that this is the description of some people of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was Muhammad. Okay. Muhammad, in Arabic, derived, this word derived from praise, in the excessive form, you call it mubalagha in Arabic, excessive form, to tell that he is the excessively one praised, you know. And this is, as I said, Yesterday, I don't remember if I did say it. This is for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have the complete match between the name and the description of it, you know. Not like when I call my son, you know, a very nice name and it's go not going to fit him, you know, by any way, you know. Uh, we have the name Mu'min, believer. He may, may not be believer. He may, you have the generous, he may not be generous, and you name it, you know. No. Here it fitted it a lot, you know, or completely, or attached to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. To the extent you you may feel that when you have any praise, if it's not related to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you find it, you know, fake, you know. That's why when those uh, non-believer Meccan people, you know, they try to uh, f uh, to have a fun, you know, of him and try to call him his v uh, nickname, you know, they said Muthammam. What did the Prophet Sallallahu say according to Bukhari narration? He said, ألا تعجبون كيف يصرف الله عني شتم قريش يسبون مذمما وأنا محمد that's mean don't you surprise you know that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take away their uh, condemn or their criticism you know against me because they make it all for Muthammam and I am Muhammad okay yani when you look at him sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he doesn't fit at all you know the name Muthammam nothing there is going to be uh, matching with him sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and not by Allah, not by us, you know, as believer, by a non-believer, you know, before revelation, what did they used to call him? As-Sadiq Al-Amin. And they, they accepted all of his character, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we have plenty of stories, you know, about it, you know, that's mean, all of those matter, you know, by the non-believer, not by, by the believer, it doesn't fit him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by any way you know when you say muzammam and that's why he was called and this is the name that all muslims they should believe in it you know that's why we may use it in shahada you see ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah that's why we, we use it in the adhan you say ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah we have it in any uh, in different matters you know and this name has been mentioned in the holy quran four times even though we, we read in Shifa by Qadi Iyad that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did respect his messenger, did not call him by his name. He will call him, Ya ayyuhan nabi, Ya ayyuhan rasul, Ya ayyuhan muzzammil, Ya ayyuhan muddathir. You may have them as a form of name, you know, here in this text, you know, but it was mentioned four times, you know, in the Holy Quran, and in these four times, 
we are going to find the risala or the message or revelation or something of that, you know, next to it, either before it or after it, you know. That's why, <coughs> example of it, we have in the Holy Quran, Muhammad or Rasulullah. The, the word after it was this, the messenger of Allah. You have in Quran, Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadin min rijalikum wa lakin Rasulullah. Okay, the same thing, you know. Wa amanu bima nuzzila ala Muhammad. This is to tell about the revelation, okay. Ma kana... وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ You see, these are the four, four areas that his holy name was mentioned in the Holy Quran and you see next to it, you know, before or after, all of them after, uh, after okay, after one word or a few words, you are going to find the, the description or by message, okay. One of our friends, he used to say, they have long argument, you know, should we write down this in Sulh al Hudaybiyah? Should we write down Muhammad or Rasulullah? Or should we write down Muhammad ibn Abdullah? The Meccan people, they want him to write Muhammad ibn Abdullah. And out of his kindness, out of his uh, great character, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to save the fighting, even in the Quran that mentioned, if, they, if you are going to fight, they are going to be the loser, and they are going to have a lot of casualties, you know. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saved them of this fighting, you know, by just changing from Muhammad or Rasulullah to Muhammad ibn Abdullah. The, our friend, what did he say? If the whole earth, you know, they said, no, he's not Rasulullah, and Allah said, confirm it. Surah Al-Fatih was revealed, you know, after it, you know, Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say Muhammad al-Rasulullah. So, what, if you weigh it, you know, what's, what did he lose, you know, when he, you have this shahada from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said right away before it, what, what did he say? وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough as a witness, you know. Then he said, Muhammad or Rasulullah. See, yani here, I'm speaking about myself and about the people, you know. If we deny this, you know, we are the loser. If we confirm it, you know, we are, we are not, not, not going to uh, deliver any benefit to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say, Muhammad or Rasulullah, we are going to get the benefit for ourselves, you know, to be of this side, of this great side, of this valuable side, and you name it as I mentioned. Okay, so here, uh, as I said, this is excessive form, you know, of praise. This name was unusual among the Arab culture, even though it's Arabic language, derived from Arabic word, you know, but uh, I haven't read, you know, in it, you know, but you, you are going to find in different tribes, they, they, they may have different repetition, you know, of certain names, you know, but all Arab, without exception, they don't have this name. You have it, you know, mentioned in Sirat Ibn Hisham and elsewhere, Toward the birth of the Prophet or toward his revelation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy and out of his kindness, the news started to come that there is a Prophet coming called Muhammad. And this is make many of the Arab, not many, what, what mentioned there, four of the Arabs, you know, to call their, their son, you know, Muhammad. Okay, you have some other, you have in the uh, Ansar or Aus and Khazraj culture, you know, you have the name Muhammad, one of them is a famous companion called Muhammad ibn Maslama and his brother called Mahmoud ibn Maslama, okay, and you name it, you know, يعني, uh, this is, you may find in the Arabic culture, you know, that you have this name, but it's not as other names as Sa'ad, as Umar, as... No, 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 it's very, very unusual to have it, you know, and uh, uh, this was, was not, you know, among the Arab. This is not the name that mentioned the old book, you know, what mentioned the old book, Ahmed, we are going to come to it, you know, and uh, any of those people, you know, in that particular time, who was called Muhammad or Ahmed, none of them he declared that he is the messenger of Allah, except Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yani, uh, if you feel that the name was not protected completely, you know, of 
having someone called as such, you know, but it was protected completely because none of these people, they declare that they are the messenger. You may have later on, you know, some people called Muhammad or whatever, you know, they were dec they declared themselves as a fake prophet, you know, or whatever, you know. But in that time, even in the Harub al-Ridda during the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, I don't find, I don't remember any name called Muhammad, you know, among them or Ahmad or anything of that regard. So this is the, the, the name of the Prophet ﷺ. This is the most honorable name. This is the name that you are going to relate all names to him. You see Sayyidina Muhammad, one of his name is Ahmad. Sayyidina Muhammad, one of you see, yani here you are going to relate yourself, you know, to this particular name whenever you you want to speak about anything, you know, regarding him, sallallahu alayhi wa If anyone has a question, let him write down, you know, if he afraid that uh, he may forget uh, what he wants to ask. You know. The second name is Ahmad. And this is mentioned the Holy Quran one time. Uh, this is verse number uh, six, you know, Surah Saf. وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ التَّوْرَاهِ وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدٍ Okay, and this is what the Prophet ﷺ did say that when he he was asked once, sallallahu alayhi wa tell us about yourself. This is Mawlid in my view, okay? He said, okay, I am an da'wa to Abi Ibrahim wa bushra akhi Isa wa ra'at ummi hina wada'atni anna kharaja minha nurun adha'at lahu qusur al-sham. Okay, yani he gave two physical signals and one uh, sorry, he gave one, one physical signal and two spiritual signals. The two spiritual is about the previous prophet. You, you read it in Quran about Sayyidina Ibrahim when he was establishing, you know, the holy house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with the help of his son, you know, Ismail. They make dua in, inside that dua. Rabba, you, you have it, you know, as verse number 129, you know, in Surah Al-Baqarah. رَبَّنَا وَبَعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ I mentioned the number of the verse. If anyone interested in knowing the, 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 under, or knowing the translation of it, you know, go back and find the translated but Verse number 129 in Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay, and the Prophet ﷺ did say, and the da'wa to Abi Ibrahim. Yani I was the one who is meant, you know, by this dua from Ibrahim. Then, wa bushra akhi Isa, as the verse number six, you know, Surah al Saf, you know, if you, uh, he was given the name Ahmad. Why the previous, this is my understanding, I may be right or wrong, why the previous people they were given the description or the name Ahmad? and we are given Muhammad, because we as Muslim, in general speaking, we shouldn't look around, you know, to try to find, and the Prophet ﷺ really get angry, you know, when he has some of the companions, you know, they try to read other books, you know, or, Wallahi, law kana Musa hayyam ma wasi'u illa tiba'i. If Sayyidina Musa is uh, uh, alive in that particular time, he's going to follow me. So, we as Muslim, we have only one personality called Muhammad, okay? For the others, they are entitled, they are obliged to fo follow their Prophet, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did tell them that you have a person or a prophet coming is mo much more praised than your prophet. And that's why uh, this is was the most or all, I don't know, the name mentioned you know, by, by the previous scholars. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ did say, وَبُشْرَ أَخِي Isa. Yeah, he was the one who brought the good tiding, you know, about or good news about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For sure, this is not in, uh, uh, limited to Sayyidina Isa. You have many other messengers, you know, uh, mentioned about him as we may know, know, may read in the books, you know, I'm sorry to tell you, you know, up till now you, sh you still have some discoveries, you know, of old books, you know, mentioning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are, were made 
were written, you know, after him, uh, 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 sorry, before him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yet you have the name of him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in them, you know. I, uh, 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 we, we feel that we live in a, an open world. I'm going to tell you this story, you know, which happened to me. I was told my brother who lived in U.S. that they found in Turkey a gospel or Bible, I don't know, Christian one, and you have the name of the Prophet ﷺ in it, you know. And this is, was written 1,500 years ago, that's me before the Prophet ﷺ. And that's why in Vatican you have some chaotic matter, you know, and that's why this was the main resignation, you know, of the previous Pope, if you remember it, that he resigned, you know, because of that matter, you know, because some of those cardinals you know, or, or others, they became Muslim. When I heard this information from my brother, I tried with my wife, you know, to try in the internet, you know, to find it, you know. I'm not telling you we did not find it, we did find it, but after a difficult way, you know, and long way, you see, yani here, when you want to find anything, you know, it's going to be quite easy, right away it's going to be shown up, you know. But I'm sorry to tell you, such a thing, many Muslims, they, they are not aware of it, and when you try to, uh, to find it, you know, on the internet, it's going to take you some time, you know, and you are going to have some difficulties. What I'm trying to say, this has happened during the time of the Prophet still going on on many. They try to bury, they try to cover up, they try to hide many of those matters that tells you that the Prophet is a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, and this is one way of doing it, you know. I have a lot of stories, you know, I'm not going to mention all the stories, you know, but here the Prophet did say, We should believe it in it, you know. Why? Because this mentioned the Holy Quran, it's mentioned, you know, in different hadiths by him, it's mentioned in Sira book, you know, especially in Sirat Ibn Hisham. In Nur al Yaqeen and other Sira, you know, they are going to have special chapter, you know, before uh, before the revelation, you know, speaking about how he was mentioned Salah, in the previous book, you know. We have 100 years ago, a Christian became Muslim, you know, he was priest or something, you know, in his religion, you know, and he has a book, you know, about the Prophet وسلم, in the Bible. Muhammad fi al-kitab al-muqaddas. And this is, I did see it in Leicester in UK, translated to English if you are interested. It's the name Muhammad in the fi al-kitab muqaddas or Muhammad in the Bible. Okay? I'm going to speak about my experience. Personally, I did not expect to find this massive data, you know, about him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. After those long years in, and, 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 and many changes, you know, I did not expect. But really, this book, you know, amazed me a lot, you know, because I found it, you know, I found the text, you know, in Arabic. I found the text in in, in English. Okay, even in uh, in one narration, you know, put by the the author there. In the previous book, you have the number of army that's going to conquer Mecca, 10,000. This mentioned there, unbelievable. For me, unbelievable, okay? Because I did not ex expect, you know, to have such a thing, you know, after those long years, you know, and long uh, changes and tahrif as mentioned in the Holy Quran. And this is really the one who is interested in this subject, you know, you have it translated to English, okay? What's the meaning of Ahmad? It may mean the subject or object. What I do, do I mean by it? The most praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the most praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the business of praise, you know, which is completely related to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Reminded me of story I read it, you know, in that particular book. The most ancient or old copy of the gospel 
is written in what language? In Greek, not in Syrian. The, the, the gospel was revealed in Syrian language. Syriani, we call it in Arabic, okay? But the Syrian copies that we have them t today, they have been translated from the Greek one. Okay, you don't have the original copy. And he mentioned that the author, I, do, I have no idea. This is in Greek language, you know. You may say Pericletus or Pericletus. See, you have changed only one letter, you know, and this letter is not one of the root of the word, you know. This is, you know, phone letter or whatever you call it, you call it between Peri and Peri. He said Peri means both most praised and Peri means Ruh al Qudus as translated in most of the Gospels. Most praised. And you have it again the same thing when you say Ahmad. You have it in the gospel, in the same meaning, you know, but they change one letter, you know, in the, in the Greek language, and when you have the translation, all of the translation, they came like this. You know. what I, really, I, I personally, this is nothing against me physically, you know, but I feel a, a lot of pain about what happened to the Prophet وسلم, in that time, you know, and the, and the time after, you know, how he was accused, you know, how they have those bad pictures, you know, about him, how you know, all of these matters, they don't belong to him, وسلم, and they were done, done against him, you know. This is, I'm going to bring this story, you know, this is in the Lail al Nubuwa written by Imam Bayhaqi. Imam Bayhaqi said, I'm not going to mention in any, in any of my books, you know, any fake hadith. You have those highly educated people, they came from Najran city, which was in Arab Peninsula, and they were Christian, they, they came to Medina al Munawwara. If you want to know their story, you know, uh, you have the, the first half of Surah Ali Imran speaking about them, roughly to verse number 120 in Surah Ali Imran, you are going to find they don't speaking because the Prophet وسلم, physically was next to Jews, you know, but he was not next to Christian and those, they were the closest Christian and they came to uh, see him in Medina al-Munawar. Then they have some negotiation. I'm not going to go in detail, you know, about their story. They return back to their uh, hometown. While they were returning the, the, down, they were, you have three of the leaders of them, as sayyid wal aqib wa Abu Harith. as sayyid was the politician, al aqib was for economical matter, you know, and Abu Harith for religious affair, okay? And this Abu Harith, he has his brother with him, you know, next to him, in his own camel, not on the camel of Abu Harith. And uh, his brother, he dropped down, fell down, you know, from his camel, you know. The, according to the Arabic culture, you know, at that time, you know, when you fell down while you are walking, you know, or uh, on a camel or whatever, you are going to relate it to some bad person that you met with him. If some of your people uh, familiar with Hadith al Ifak mentioned by Sayyidina Aisha, how the mother of Mistah, she, she said when the, she fell down in on her clothes, you know, while they were walking, she said, Ta'isa Mistah. And uh, he was, <laughs> that person was defended by Sayyidina Aisha. Okay. Well, uh, what I'm trying to say that the brother of Abu Haritha, he fell down and he started right away to relate it to their meeting with the Prophet. What did Abu Haritha respond to him? No, 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 don't say anything about him. This is a real prophet. Real prophet? You did not respond to him, you know. Why did you treat him as such, you know? He said, you know, our people, you know, make us our le the, the leaders, you know. They gave us a lot of money. They gave us this or that. That brother looked at himself, you know. I'm not in this equation, you know. I'm not going to be getting any money. He just turned back and returned to Medina and make, declared his Islam. Okay? You got this point, and what I'm trying to say, you have something done, you know, against the Prophet in his time. After his time, nowadays, and if. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you, you know, to go to Abdullah in the war of Bayhaqi. Anyone who is interested in this matter, read the, the half, 
the first half of Surah Al-Baqarah and the first half of Surah Al-Imran. I'm going to tell you, you know, about my experience. Since my childhood, I love Sirah a lot, you know. You have Ibn Hisham, you know, in his Sirah, after the immigration, you have that one, roughly 100 page speaking about this issue. To be honest with you, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, inshallah. I used to hate this portion, why? Because not speaking, you know, about the Prophet Sallallahu have some other issue. But nowadays, I feel this is one of the most important portion, you know, on Sirah that should be mentioned. I'm not telling you that all books of Sirah they are going to mention as such, you know, but Ibn Hisham left 100 page after immigration to speak about certain verses in the Quran. Most of them, they are in Surah Baqarah and Ali Imran, and they are related to certain event you know happened during the time of the Prophet all of these matters you know regarding Ahmad we should know it why because in most of these Bisharat the holy name Ahmad was given Ahmad as I said mean the most praising and the most praised okay this has been changed by, by some of the people second the, the last word subhanallah this name Ahmad as many scholars they said None of the companion call Ahmad. You have one call Muhammad, but none of the comp companion call Ahmad. And the first person to be called Ahmad in the Arab culture was the father of Khalil ibn Ahmad, who is of the level, you know, of the junior successor. You see the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He protected anyone to be called as such, you know, during the time of the Prophet, after the time of the Prophet sallallahu because they said that the, the, the very last, you know, successor to pass away was in year 185, okay? That's been, yani, this is after 100, roughly after 100 years, you know, of the presence of the Prophet ﷺ, you have a person called Ahmad then, in the, the nowadays, you know, or in past days, you know, you, you may have many person, you know, called Ahmad, but you see the protection. Muhammad was not as such, you know, because you have in his time some people called Muhammad, but they said, what's the wisdom behind it? Because the Prophet ﷺ was mentioned by his holy name, Ahmad, you know, and most of these book you know and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected this name you know the, not only during his time even after his time you know some may say we believe in Ahmad not in Muhammad you are not scientific at all you know because when you look back you know at the many events you know in the time of the Prophet وسلم, you are going to find that he was called Ahmad you know by his grandfather, by someone else, did they call him Ahmad? Even in the hereafter, when, uh, as mentioned in one hadith, Subhanallah, يعني, what can I say? Uh, that Sayyidina Adam observing his children, you know, in the hereafter, and you have one of the nation of the Prophet وسلم, taking to hellfire. And he's going to shout, Sayyidina Adam, right away, Ya Ahmad, one of your, your, uh, your community, they are, uh, is taken away, you know, to, to hell fire and make the Prophet Sallallahu run to save that person, you know, okay? So, so what I'm trying to say, Adam, many other prophets, you know, or many other high figures, they are going to call him by the name Ahmad. If I have complete denial of it, you know. What is my value, you know, next to these great people, you know, these prophets, you know, Sayyidina Isa, Sayyidina Adam, and you name them. You know. I don't have anything, you know, there, you know, to, to you see? And uh, the end of that particular story that I narrated, this person did not know, who are you, you know? You saved me, I should thank you. Who are you? Subhanallah, he did not know the Prophet وسلم, even though he was the saver of him, you know, took him away from hellfire by the uh, call of Adam or whatever, you know, and he did not know him. And what I'm trying to say, please, 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 open your mind, be, uh, be, uh, do understand him, وسلم, do understand some of his qualities, you know, and specialties, and you name it, you know, to know him. Yani. It's not a matter of physical only, because you have many of those uh, person who 
their time was in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they did not have enough luck, you know, to be one of his followers, you know. In, in Syria or elsewhere, you may find that the neighbors of the Prophet Sallallahu in Mecca, neighbors, what do I mean neighbor? Yeah, neighbor, they do see him physically, you know, all the time. They did see him, okay? None of them become Muslim except one of those neighbors, you know, and he, his Islam have a large question mark, you know, about it, you know, that particular. You see, and in now, nowadays, we feel the eagerness, you know, we would like to see him, we would, would like to see him. You see, those people, even they were given, they were given, you know, such a thing, you know, they were not able, you know, to achieve the luck in this life for themselves, you know. What I'm trying to say, okay, for us, I look at it as very great position you know, to have a person, you know, see the Prophet or sit with him, you know. But the greatest thing about him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to follow his Quran and his prophetic tradition, okay? This is the main thing, you know. Because those people who did see him physically, you know, frequently, in his time, they were not Muslim. And they failed. And some of them, you know, were condemned in the Holy Quran or elsewhere, you know. So, this is great matter, great stand, great station, you know, to say, see him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but much, what, what is much more greater, you know, to follow his Quran, to follow his Sunnah Nabawi Mutahara, and that's why the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did praise, you know, those who come after him, and they are going to find his description, you know, or other facts, you know, in some books, you know. He, he did praise them, and he make them in one hadith, they are the best in their belief, you know, Afdalul Mu'minina Imana. Okay. Move to next name. I enjoy speaking, you know, the shat, shat okay, because I don't have watch. The second two names, they are derived from praise. One is Hamid, which support the idea that Ahmad means the, the most praising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one after it, Mahmud, means the most praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you may derive. And here uh, in this uh, text, you know, you have the other's name. I'm not, well, you know, I don't have good memory to remember that these names, you know, were mentioned by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here for Hamid and Mahmud, first you are going to find them covered, you know, in the previous name, okay? And they are going to find them uh, not that excessive as Muhammad and Ahmad. Ahmad, that's me the most, okay, Muhammad excessively praised, you know. Whereas, you don't, I don't understand from the meaning of Hamid or Mahmud. Why it's mentioned like this, you know. This remind me, you have it in even the holy names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have Ghafir, Ghafur, Ghaffar. Ghafir. It's the subject, you know, without any excessive meaning, you know. But we have Ghafur and Ghafar with excessive meaning. This to tell you that some people, you know, they may understand the name of Ghafur or uh, the, the Maghfir or forgiveness, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by excessive, and yeah, they are going to compare. Some others, you know, they are going to understand it as this is the one, this is the forgiver. Al Ghafir, okay, and you have a, a, a chapter in Quran, one of its names, Surah Ghafir, okay, and it speak about him, Subhanahu wa Taala, okay, and here this is what I mean, you know, why it was mentioned like Hamid and Mahmoud after this, you know, because some of us, you know, they should look to understand him that the, this is the only praised one, you know. They don't look look to the other. When you have it in excessive form, it may be felt, you know, by some of us, you know, that this is much more, uh, you have more expression, you know, of his uh, specialty, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but for the others, you have looked to, the, to someone else, you know, and that's why you put the excessive form. When you have it in Hamid and Mahmoud, that means this is the only one that you have in your case, you know, and this has happened to some of the comp companion and the other, they are going to look to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just as Hamid and Mahmoud, not as Ahmad or whatever, you know, because they don't feel, they don't look to anyone that is highly praised. And uh, uh, 
And this is mentioned in the book that why the fame poets, you know, they did not praise him sallallahu alayhi wa a lot. And the answer of it, you know, those poets, you know, they are going to be quite skillful, you know, and clever, you know, that time, you know, later on they, you have some one praised him, you know. And they, the one who they praise is going to be humankind, okay? And the humankind is going to have some good specialties and some deficiencies, you know. And that they are going to be, show their skill, you know, in magnifying those great points, you know, about him, you know, and to take away those deficiencies, you know, and try to hide them, you know. When they start to do it for the Prophet Sallallahu they did not find any deficiency there, you know. That's why they did not praise him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because of this point. One, this is one of the points that, the, why he was not praised. Even though, bearing in mind, you know, you have one of those poets, you know, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I may not understand it very well, you know, but we have Al-Imam Suhaili, very famous scholar, you know, in Arabic language and else, you know. He said that this is, this unit or this bait, you know, done by Al-Abbas ibn Mirdas, one of the companions, you know, is very great in praising the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I, uh, to be honest with you, I did not pay my attention to it, you know. Then when I have a Suhaili speaking about it, you know, I try to understand some of it, you know. And I know about a person who make full qasida, you know, uh, after that particular bit, you know, which start by, إِنَّ الْإِلَهَ بَنَا عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً فِي خَلْقِهِ وَمُحَمَّدًا سَمَّاكَ Okay, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for you a love, you know, in the hearts, you know, of his creations sometimes you may find non-muslim you know and they they love the prophet a lot you know uh, you, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the name muhammad okay and this is in my view this is was mentioned in front of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what the, what's the point there, you know, even if it's mentioned you know, in front of him, that means he accepted that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this name, you know. When you have such a name, you know, such a great name given to him, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, excessively praised, it means a lot. I may be able to understand certain points, you know, but in my inner feeling, you know, I'm going to miss the major, major points, you know, behind such a, 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 a name given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali sahbihi ajma'in. We'll move to next name, Ah Ahid, or maybe defined as Ahyad. You have the two forms, you know, of them. Uh, I try to understand the name of uh, this name. They said this is mentioned in Torah, you know, by this form. I assume those Semitic, you know, languages, you, the, you may close to each other, you know, and as you may see here, most, most of the letters, they fit the name Ahmad as mentioned before, you know, the, even though they gave some Arabic meaning to such a name that to take away or to save his community, you know, of hellfire, you know, Yahidu bihim, Hada Yahidu. This is Arabic verb, you know, okay, that's mean to take away or to deviate, you know. This matter of deviation is too important mention the Quran in different areas. Hanif, the meaning of Hanif that is deviated, okay. I, I look at it, especially in our time, it's too important, you know, because you have many bad practices, you know, and you should deviate yourself, you should get away, you know, from those matters, you know, and if this one of the names of the Prophet and its meaning as such, you know, that means you are going to follow the uh, prophetic tradition by avoid, avoiding these matters, you know. I. I, uh, we should have good thoughts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I did see many of, I feel, the uh, real lovers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but they, 
they are not that perfect, you know, in avoiding those prohibited matters, you know, in our Islam, you know. When you, when you really love the Prophet Sallallahu you should follow those instructions, you know, and this holy name, which means Ahid, that means you should deviate yourself and the Prophet is going to take us away, you know, of those uh, hard matters, you know. They are going to affect me badly, you know. I may don't feel the khushu or humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I may not feel the enjoyment, you know, when I have this good time, you know, of prayer or whatever, you know. Yani those sinful actions, you know, Many Muslims, they don't care a lot, you know, about them, you know. But here, we, I believe that when you have La ilaha Allah, you are going to enter heaven. But here you have some other issues in this life. And toward the end of this life, it's very important, you know, because uh, as they said, Al-Ma'asi Barid Al-Kufr, this belief may take in hiddenly or uh, in much more public, you know, way uh, from from your side, from your chest, you know, at the last critical moment of you, your life, you know, and this is what has been highlighted by him, sallallahu as fitnat al mahya wal mamat. Move to next uh, name, you know, which is related to the previous name called Wahid. Wahid. This is well known in Arabic la language that. You don't have anyone similar to him, you know, in his specialties and his qualities, sallallahu alayhi wa And this is mentioned in what narrated in Tirmidhi, you know, in Kitab al-Amsal, in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, uh, that uh, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa was with Abdullah bin Mas'ud, and he slept, sallallahu alayhi wa and Abdullah bin Mas'ud uh, did observe very nice looking you know creations did not know them and they start speaking about the prophet وسلم, this the the lying person is the most one to get favor from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when the prophet وسلم, woke up he did tell him that these are the angels of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here we should feel the oneness the specialties that never given to anyone else, you know, from the, uh, the Prophet ﷺ. We should feel, and how we are going to reflect this, you know, in our thing, you know, don't feel that all of everyone is the same. Feel that you have been given something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that out of being valued, you know, in this life or weighed in this life, you know. When you look at the seerah and other resources, you know, you find many persons in it, not many, some of them, they try to meet with the Prophet ﷺ. Some of them failed. Some of them were successful, but after long way and long uh, time-wise, place-wise, uh, position-wise, and you name it, you know, like Salman al-Farisi. Some of them, they were deceived, you know, by some other non-Muslim, you know, they told him he prohibit khamer. He said, okay, I'm going to retain and fill my stomach, you know, with khamer for, for, one, for one year, then return back. He passed away in this, this year. You see, yani what I'm trying to say, uh, firstly, we should know the value of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you say, ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, this is not, not doesn't mean, yani, I'm going to respect and I'm going to put on my head, you know, all of these prophets, you know, and messengers, you know. But when I say, ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, for me, this is very special, very, uh, it, it has a lot of meaning, you know. This wastage from Muslim, you know, do you have some Muslim, they don't feel the meaning, uh, the difference, you know, in that regard, make many of the Muslims and non muslims them they don't consider to be Muslim you know they ran away from Islam and you name it why because the speaker the Muslim speaker did not know the value of being one of the follower of him sallallahu and we should know this value okay yani we, we are we are, I'm not here we as Muslim we believe in all prophets we believe in all religions you know but we don't believe that they are equal. لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله. As as mentioned, you know, by many scholars, you know, uh, by prophethood, by message, they they are not different. By other specialties, they are different.
and the one who was given the most of the, these specialties was the Prophet If you have any doubt about them, there is a book book of two volumes we call Al Khasais Al Kubra, written by Imam Suyuti, and all of it, its narrations, you know, that about certain specialties which was was given to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we should be quite familiar with it. That's why for us he's Wahid, okay, and the Prophet as I said, you know, before the uh, break, he got really angry when he has some of those companions, you know, that try to look around or read some other book, you know. You have the messenger of Allah, you have the book of Allah, you have the religion of Allah, you should be too proud of them, you know, and you should uh, uh, have this translated to every, all practice, you know, in your life, you know. You, you shouldn't, yani, I read a book, you know, in Absal al-Qur'an. The title, the subject doesn't mean anything, you know. That author, you know, Aslahahu Allah, inside that book he mentioned that there was no difference. When you say no difference, you make the non-Muslim will not think to become Muslim at all. Okay, you 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 have the Muslim, they don't feel their specialty, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them, you know, with this. And what we read in Qadi Iyad, Shifa Qadi Iyad, not us, the great prophets, they ask him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the hereafter to join his community. As mentioned in Shifa al Qadi Iyad, that Sayyidina Ibrahim, he will tell him, I am the one who called you Muslim, let me be one of your community. Sayyidina Isa ibn Aryam is going to say, I no, no messenger or prophet between you and me, let me one of your uh, uh, community. Okay, Sayyidina Musa, as in the La Ilaha Nubuha, written by Abi Nu'aim, after certain special, specialties mentioned there, you know, which is about the community of Sayyidina Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Muhammad, will say, make me one of these this community and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered him as we recite in quran ya musa inni istafaytuka ala nasi bi risalati wa bi kalami fakhuz ma ataituka wa kun min ash being sallallahu alayhi wasallam wahid the only we should have it in our heart we should have the feeling you know about it you know and we should be proud of it, you know, and we should really, yani, this is, I look at it, you know, as the first step, you know, to express your pride, you know, to the others, you know, to express the valuable matter that you have been given, you know, and uh, I'm going to bring this story, you know, I love story. Those who, among your people, you know, who were yesterday, we spoke about Sayyidina Zayd ibn Harissa and about Hakim ibn Hizam, if you remember. I'm not going to repeat the story, you know. Hakim ibn Hizam, after a while, after revelation, you know, he was late, you know, in his Islam. He did not become Muslim till conquering Mecca. Okay, before this is, con before the conqueror of Mecca, he went to Uqaf as rich and noble person, you know, and merchant of among Quraysh people. And he, he saw their suit. What do the meaning of suit? When you have two pieces, you know, of same type, you know, of clothes or color, it's called suit. And uh, in Arab culture or in these old times, you know, since it was done manually, you hardly find such a thing, you know, and it's going to be quite expensive and just for the kings, you know, not for everyone, you know. Not like uh, our time, you know, we have the machine and you may have kilometers, you know, of the same type, you know, of clothes or whatever. So this suit was for a famous king of Yemen called the Yazan. When he saw it, Hakim Hizam, even though he was not Muslim, I think he used to love the Prophet Sallallahu he, he, In his mind, this is no, no one deserves to have this suit except Muhammad. He bought it right away from Uqas and traveled how much? I think more than 500 kilometers just to present this to the Prophet Sallallahu in this very old, you know, way and vehicles. When he reached Manina, the Prophet Sallallahu knows how to touch the hearts. 
He said, do not accept this from you because you are non believer. If you want, we are going to pay the price of it. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah, for a very generous person, you know, you see the touchy point here? You know, I'm going to pay the price of it. You know. Hakim ibn Hazam looked at him said, after this, this long journey, I'm going to return back in with the suit. No? Okay, I'll take the price. The Prophet said, paid him the price, took the suitcase, went inside his house, did not even wear it, you know, gave it to Osama ibn Zayd. Osama ibn Zayd went outside wearing this suitcase. Hakim ibn Hizam, look, he knows his father, he knows him, you know. You wear this suit of Ziyaza. Osama ibn Zayd was dark skin, okay? Perhaps black, I don't know, or dark skin. Sayyidina Zayd ibn Harissa was white skin, okay? But his son was very dark skin, you know, and para. And in Arab culture, you know, this is the, I'm not that high, you know, in their uh, level, you know. You, Osama bin Zayd, you wear this suit of uh, Ziyazan. And here I brought the whole story for this answer. What did Sayyidina Osama bin Zayd tell him? Listen, I am better than Ziyazan, and my father is better than his father. See? You see the different standard? We, we judge people, you know, from the outer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges people from inner. Look at your hearts. This happened in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. He was sitting with a person and a man passed through. The Prophet ﷺ asked this person who was sitting next to him, what do you think about this person? He said, this person, if he starts speaking, everyone should listen. If he come to a majlis, they should find a room or space for him. If he consider engage, engagement to some woman, you know, he should be accepted right away. The Prophet ﷺ kept silent. Another man passed through. What do you think about this person? This person, if he starts speaking, no one should listen to him. If he come to a, a majlis, no one should find a space for him, you know. If he consider engagement, you know, to some woman, you know, no, shouldn't be accepted. <coughs> Here the come the answer from the one. He said, I swear by Allah, this person equal the whole globe of that particular person. Or the whole earth of that particular person. Why? Because the, the person sitting next to the Prophet who spoke about the outer. The Prophet spoke about the inner spoke about the heart okay and if it's it's a problem you know in the time of the prophet by someone you know i think in our time it's much more problematic okay and that's why that's why we should be too careful you know about it you know we shouldn't judge you know people just from their apparent or their outer try to judge them you know from the inner and this is a little bit difficult you know and the most thing that we have in our hand they believe in Allah they believe in his messenger you know and we should judge people you know according to those standards not according to characters if you have a person of very nice character that means very good to me very good to me he took significant care of me but he's very bad with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we relate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't deserve. He's very bad to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Now, it's the decision to be made, okay? Am I going to love myself much more than Allah and his messenger, or am I going to love them more? If I love them more, I'm going to see the bad and the dark point, you know, of that particular person. Not the good character to be, you know. This is my assumption. I may be wrong, you know. Even Abu Jahl, was very nice man, you know, in his characters, in his speak, in his talk, you know, in, uh, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained about the hypocrites. He said, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامُهُمْ يَقُولُ تَسْمَعِ لِقَوْلِهِ From outside, they were great, the hypocritic, in their body, in their talking, in their characters, in many of those aspects, you know. 
but they have complete denial of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger you know and this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the, his messenger you know really bad okay this was described in in one uh, chapter of the Quran وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَ لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّا تَكَادُ السَّمَوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّنَّ مِنْهُ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ وَهَدَّا أَنْ دَعُوا لِلرَّحْمَنِ وَلَدَا وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لِلرَّحْمَنِ أَنْ يَتَّخِذَ وَلَدَا إِنْ كُلُّ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ الْأَرْضِ إِلَا أَتِ الرَّحْمَنِ عَبْدًا These are few verses, you know, of the, the end or last verses, you know, of very last verses, you know, of Surah Maryam. The one who is interested in translation, let him go or her go, you know, and have the translation about it, you know. What I'm trying to say, we should judge all people according to their relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Not what our, يعني, here, this person, he related his son to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas you have many people nowadays, they have complete denial. There is no Allah. Do you, do you accept it for yourself? If a person tell, told you, you are not here, I don't look at you, you are nothing, do you accept it? I don't accept it you know, for myself. How come you accept it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To have this complete denial you know, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should be too careful you know, about these points. Then I move to another one, Sayyiduna Mahin Mahi. This is an Arabic language, you know, uh, you put Tanween at the end, you may have the Ya according to some Arab accent, and this is mentioned in Qira'at ibn Kathir. In some words, not on all words, you know. Uh, this is mentioned in authentic hadith, and this is was given the meaning you know, by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Kufur. To be honest with you, I look forward that it's going to erase our sins, our mistakes, and this is the case with him. You have some different narration or other narration you're speaking about it. But nowadays I see the importance of what he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm sorry to tell you, يعني, I'm, I'm sorry to keep speaking you know, about this issue because this is happened frequently in our time, you know. The Prophet said, I am the eraser of kufr. Nowadays, you have some Muslims, they don't care. Kufr, not kufr, all they are very nice people, you know. And as if I have the keys, you know, of heaven you know, in my pocket, you know, this is going to go to heaven. Before speaking about someone else, speak about yourself, you know. Are you guaranteed to go to heaven? Okay. I feel, you may have different story. I feel the one who stand as such, you know, he work against Allah and against his messenger. When you say, Al-Mahi, Yamhu Allahu bi al-Kufr, you, you accept Kufr, you know, so what, you know. So, yeah, as if, yani, the Prophet has very difficult, very hard year, you know, in Mecca for 13 years, just to erase this Kufr, okay? Nowadays, we have some Muslims, they, they don't care about it, you know, so what, okay? This is very, for me, very serious, you know, and very surprised to have such an attitude from, from Muslim, you know, we should change this particular attitude. So here, personally, for myself, for my benefit, for those I love, you know, I would like even to have the sinful actions and those mistakes to be erased, you know. And this is maybe supported you know, by, by another hadith, Shafa'ati li ahli al-kaba'iri min ummati, my intercession for those who commit enormities, you know, among my nation, okay? For the others, I'm going to highlight the meaning which was mentioned by him. And this is, we should be aware of it, you know, and we try, we should work hard. Yani, I'm sorry, this is my feeling. You may have different feeling, you know. At least when you have such a statement that I have mentioned before, you are not going to make that person convert to Islam. And this is by itself, you know, it's a problem. I'm okay, you know, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm a nice person, I'm this, I'm that, you know. So what's the point, you know, of changing my religion? I'm not going to change my religion. That's what they will tell him. You know. And he, this is, may sound good, may, may be reasonable for some people, you know, but in my view, it's completely against what the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned. 
Then he mentioned Hashir. Again, this is mentioned in authentic hadith in the Li'in the Rabbi Khamsat Asma. He did not say that I have only five names. He said, one of my names, they are five, and he mentioned them, you know. As the way of his attitude be Abi wa Ummi, he used to make it easy on the people. If you're going to, like, some people, they are going to show that they are knowledgeable. And they are going to bring hundreds and hundreds of names of him, sallallahu alayhi wa The Prophet sallallahu was very simp simple and very easy. Five names. Okay? If we work hard, you know, in these five names, this is more than enough for us. You know? And this is his attitude in many aspects. As all of your people, you know, you are familiar. He cut down the prayer from 50 in number, not in reward, from 50 to 5. In my imagination, this was his attitude to cut down many of the uh, uh, obligations and many of the prohibited matters, you know. Not because he doesn't al love Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because he doesn't care, you know, about Allah. Because he knows how great is Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's efficient, you know, no need of our prayer, you know, or uh, those prohibited actions that we no do. But he knows, as Sayyidina Musa did tell him, he knows about our weakness, about our deficiencies, you know, about our incapability, about of pretending that we are busy, you know. What you are busy with, either you are cooking something, you know, or you are a uh, hard worker, you know, on your field or whatever, you know. And this is, for me, doesn't make sense, you know. Now, I'm not speaking here, I'm speaking about my country. Uh, you have... Uh, nowadays Ramadan come with the major exa exam they may be considered by some people you know as to determine your future you know this major exam of the high school you know student what did that I don't know should I call him Mufti or not you know what did that Mufti say he said it's okay to break fast what's the meaning of it the meaning of it, I'm going to give anyone priority over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command. This is what does it mean. And for me, it doesn't make any sense. And does, for me, it doesn't fit the, the way the companion they used. I'm not speaking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is much greater, you know. I speak about the companion. doesn't fit what, what the companion they used to do to handle the orders of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We are not kidding here. We are not having a joke. We are not having a good time. We have an order come from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We should find the trace of it inside myself. When I don't find the trace of it in myself, you know, I'm going to put my head down. This is, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm speaking. I'm going to put my head down, you know, and say I'm quite deficient. Okay, don't look at me. I'm not sheikh. I'm not anything, you know. Why? Because I miss many of those great matters given to me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his messenger. I did not take good care of them, you know. And that's why I feel myself deficient, okay? And this is, should be the case. Not to have, you know, full mouth, you know, to say, okay, breakfast. You see, you see the difference between these two peoples, you know? This, this has been, this story has been repeated in the Quran frequently. What's the difference between Adam and Iblis? Both of them, they commit sin, you know. But Adam, right away, Sayyidina Adam, our grand great father, you know, when he had the sin, Ya Rab Tub Ya Rab, he starts begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, start to show his need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iblis, on the other hand, so what? Yani, I'm better than him, you know. If <laughs> he start to be proud of himself, you know, start to show the difference and start to make much more, you know, uh, neglected points, you know, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command, you know. You see the difference? And here, 
I'm sorry to tell you, when I, I'm faced with such a person, I feel he, his behavior is like Iblis, okay? Not like Sayyidina Adam, his grand great father. You, you are related to Adam, you are not related to Iblis. And so here, Al-Hashir, as the, uh, interpreted, you know, by him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, الذي يحشر الناس على قدمي. يعني, uh, according to some scholars, that means he's the seal of prophethood, you know, uh, in one way. I would like to understand another meaning of it, you know, that he has the flag of praising Allah, Liwa al Hamid, and all humans, they are going to be behind him, you know, and we as followers of him, we are not going to be as perfect as him, we, as, as fo we are as followers of him, you know, we should find our prey of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have the praise start with our Quran when you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen as some scholars they did say each quarter of your Quran start by Alhamdulillah you have at the first quarter Surah Al-Fatiha and second quarter you have Surah Al-An'am third quarter you have Surah Al-Kafi fourth quarter you have Surah Saba and Surah Fatir you have your prophet called Muhammad and Ahmad and one of the meaning of Ahmad Ahmad Al-Hamidin that is a great praiser to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what's mentioned in other books you know, you have Liwa al you have Maqam Mahmud. Okay, the Prophet said, did tell us, you know, whenever we are given any favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah is going to be much more valuable than whatever favor you have been given. Okay, we should say, what do I see? I have bad look, you know, or dark look. What most people you know or muslims they are not pleased with what whatever given to them for look at this you know even though i have very nice car you know or whatever but the other one has two cars okay uh, is we are going to compare ourselves you know some people you know they may be or may not you know they, they may be given you know something more you know from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala side you don't know about the health position, situation of that particular person. You don't know about other problems. You just look at the car, you know, his car, okay? Which doesn't make sense. You should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of these matters, you know. Being healthy, being wealthy, being having this, being having that, you know, whatever, you know. We should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way I express it, you know, I haven't seen or read about any time similar to our time in our ma in this massive opening. I came to your people in the US. Just if you don't have airplane, how much is going to take me? Perhaps months, you know, to reach your people, you know. But took me less than one day, you know, to you see, this is even though I may respect or not, you know, the the pioneer of it or whatever, you know, but this is a gift from Allah. This is fatah from Allah. Okay? This is a, something giving to me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I have this old man over, you know, I'm not going to give you any lecture till I have a rest, you know, for one month or two weeks or the, something because I'm really tired, okay, of, of, you see? And this is applicable for all matters of our life. The way we eat, we are going to have multiple choices. As the Prophet Sallallahu did say, the Quran is the invitation of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sorry, we are not interested in Quran. We want to, your invitation, you know. We want this food, you know, and we are going to spend significant time, you know, in that way that, you know, uh, passing them away, you know. But we are not in interested in the invitation of Allah. The, the, the best among us, those who uh, completely, uh, re uh, repeatedly, they recite some surahs of the Quran. Okay, have you exposed yourself to the old Quran? Just imagine, you know, if you are invited to an invitation, you know, and you have all of those nice food, you know, there, and you are asked, listen, you stand, stand at the corner, you know, you are not uh, uh, eligible, you know, to eat anything. How do you feel about it? Or another person, you are permitted to drink water only. All of this nice food or fine food, not for you. Or, so, and this is our attitude to the Quran. Either we are going to have complete negligence of it, you know, or some of us, you know, they may recite certain surahs. What's, what's about 
complete exposure to it. Is it available? Have you seen anyone asking you to pay money, you know, to get this? No. No. Okay? For, for any food, for any food service, for any service, you know, you are going to be asked to pay some money. But here, which is the greatest, you know, the invitation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have it without, without any money payment or whatever, you know. We tend to make ourselves, you know, busy. I'm sorry, I'm busy, you know. I'm not going to take my time there, you know. And this is uh, part of our uh, ignorance, you know. That's why... If I want to return back, you know, to what I have spoken about, we have massive opening, you know, of everything in luxury in our time, which never happened even to our parents or grandparents. You know, I hear from the elderly, you know, they did not have in the lunch or dinner more than one type, you know, of food. Now, how many types you have? Okay, and those are the most rich one, you know, they have only one type you know, of food or one type of fruit or whatever, you know. So what I'm trying to say, I'm not saying they, these are haram, you know, or no, but you should praise Allah. You should appreciate Allah. You should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't feel for one second that uh, so and so is better than me or whatever. Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is, as I said, you know, the Prophet is going to have the flag of praise you know the hereafter because he is the Ahmad he is Ahmad he is the most praiser to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this idea just just come to my mind and may those people who did not praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot they may be far of him sallallahu alayhi wa they don't belong to him they are going to join this large parade that we have but they may be too far you know of him sallallahu alayhi wa ta'ala you want to get closer to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he was described as as Muhammad uh, as Ahmad or Ahmad al Hamidin Adillah or Hamid. Okay? And this is another meaning of Hashir. Uh, 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 you may have either meaning, you know, either as a sale of prophets or as that when you have the Hashir and you have the resurrection, all of the people they are going to be behind his flag, sallallahu alayhi wa then he mentioned Aqib, as I said, you know, in the introduction, you know, as uh, uh, explained by him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no prophet after him, okay? No prophet after him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, clearly, he said, Ana hazzukum min al anbiya wa antum hazzi min al umam. I am your portion or your chance or your luck, you know, of among the prophets, and you are my portion. For the first component of it, the way I understand it, you know, the Prophet Allah is very perfect in everything, you know, and our portion of him is going to be as perfect as we know, or we may not know, you know, about him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we look at the, the second component of it, you are hadhi min al-umam, here we have main difference, you know. You have like Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, and you like, have like me. Okay, which make a huge difference, you know, huge difference between how how we are going to be part of his luck, you know, in this life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some of them, they are going to have a heavy burden on him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in intercession, in other activities, you know, in the dua that he used to make, you know, that we are completely, you know, heedless, you know, of it. We do not know anything about it, you know. And some of them, they are going to be quite helpful. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was standing next to him, you know, on all occasion, whenever money made, needed, here's the money, whenever uh, a, a talk needed, here is the talk. Whenever anything needed, whenever protection needed, is going to be around the Prophet In Ma'raj Sharif, I cannot imagine it. You know, uh, many of the Muslims in those tough days, you know, they conferred it because their mind did not fit, you know, to understand how come the Prophet traveled to journalism and returned back on one night which is possible today, okay? You see how limited our mind, you know, and our judgment? Say now, Bakr, when he was asked, he said, if he told me that he went to the heaven, I'm going to believe in him. Okay? You see the difference? This is great haz, okay? 
The, and the prophet don't feed one for one more is going to ignore whatever done you know when he spoke with the Ansar he did say Alam atikum dullalam fahadakum Allah wa alatan fahagnakum Allah wa adaan fahallah ama innakum law shitum laqultum fala sadaqtum wala suddiqtum ataytana taridan fahawaynakum ukazzaban fasaddaqnak wa aailan fahagnaynak ومخزولا فنصرناك okay that means the prophet sallallahu did highlight in this talk the favor given to him from sadatin al ansar okay he's not the person that uh, so what you know i'm your master you know back off you know no he's going to his wafi you know call in arabic wafi and he went يعني, i i mentioned it i think before you have a woman slave woman you know in mecca breastfeed the Prophet ﷺ for a few days. When he immigrated to Medina, I don't know what did happen in Mecca, for sure it's going to be too generous in giving her many things. So when he immigrated to Medina, migrated to Medina, he's going to send some good presents or good, good matters or good money to this woman, you know, on everyone's own. Then he was heard, he did hear that she passed away. He asked any relative, yes, he her, she has a son. Kept se- sending the same good matters, you know, to the son of that woman who breastfed the Prophet ﷺ for a few days. When the, then the son passed away, the Prophet ﷺ, he asked any one of her relatives, you know, still there? They said no. If they said yes, you know, he's going to have the same attitude. I, what I'm trying to say, we may feel ourselves, you know, that we are bringing to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, good result or good uh, deed or whatever. But the reality of it, you know, that is going to have much more greater response, you know, from him side. Ours is going to be according to us, you know. His is going to go be according to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you feel the difference, you know, between us you know and him so what uh, l- let's uh, make the long story short you you are now in the time of massive opening of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have the great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which to be uh, one of those followers of the Prophet وسلم, please recognize and appreciate then thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those great favor go- given to you because I'm afraid I may be wrong, you know, that this may be taken away of the one who did not know the value or did not praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those great matters. And this is as a seal of the prophets, you know, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does, the, does it mean? Whether we love it, you know, or not, this is the last message, message delivered from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, you don't have any message, you know, after it, you know, no change, your mind, your intellect, your, be, put them aside, you know, when it comes, you know, to something, you know, in the religion, you know, put them aside. And this is the first one, you know, to show the difference was Al-Quran Al-Kareem when he speak about Roman, how did he describe them? يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِلُونَ Okay, don't mix them together, don't overlap them, okay? You have this dunya and the way how you are going to live, you may find some people, you know, that are much clever or skillful than Muslims, you know, in this regard. But those people who were mentioned in the Quran, they are completely heedless, you know, about the hereafter. I'm sorry to tell you, even some Muslims, you know, now they may have the overlap, okay? That's mean, whatever related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever in this hereafter or whatever, we are going to judge ourselves according to the look of a smart and skillful person, but not in this field, in the field of dunya. Yani we highly respect the matter of specialty all the time, but when it comes to, know, to, to, to this life and the hereafter, we have confusion we have mixture you know we are going to mix all of them you know yeah. what I'm trying to say this is the way I understand it in this life even though you may have some regulation from Allah you are prohibited to eat pork you are prohibited to drink wine or whatever, but this is the exception not the rule the most rule the more uh, that 
it's out of experience you love the tea like this drink it you don't love it you should add some milk do it and it's a matter of experience you know you try this medication you you, you are happy with this medication okay and here you have the experimental knowledge you know i'm not putting it down this is for this life allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his wisdom make it for this life then you have religion i'm speaking about your life here the definition of religion given to me that this is your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have a relation between two equal persons, you know, both of them, they are going to have input and outcome. When you have it in such a setting, you know, that one end is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the other end is very bad one, you know, very deficient. He's going to find some of his, some, not all, some of his mistakes, you know, done in the past, some of those matters that he wished that they happened and they did not happen, some of those dua that he men, men, mentioned, and he made dua of them, you know, in the past, you know, and now he's quite happy because they, they did not happen, you know. Yeah, and what I'm trying to say, when you look at yourself, you are going to find massive deficiency when you are, you are, you, 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 when you want to look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are going to find the perfectness, the, the greatness, you know, the, the thing that I may explain and much, much more that I'm incapable, you know, of explaining. So if you have such a dominant relation, the main things, you know, is going to be what? Transmission. Do or don't do. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How we are going to, to, to receive the transmission from Allah? Through the, the, his messengers, you know. For us, that the very last messenger and this was the last very last message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have some praise of this message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never mentioned for any other religions you know in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam adina today I have perfected your religion I have completed my favor on you and I'm pleased with Islam as your religion you know when, uh, I just said you know within a few seconds you know but really each word you know of this you know needs uh, years and years of understanding for the ordinary person nowadays we are in, in an era you know that many of us they don't know this value valuable matter that or treasure that w they were given you know and they should think about it much more you know than what the, so here that's mean none is going to come after the prophet i'm sorry to tell you i'm not happy with the matter that i see this has happened in uk you know one of my friend asked one, a person there what's your religion he said 20 years ago i was christian but nowadays i don't believe in allah I feel as if there is a process, you know, going on. You have many Muslim houses nowadays. They are not established on prayer, you know. They don't pray. They don't know the meaning of prayer even. You have many houses of Muslim, you know. I was told yesterday, they did not know that Fajr time uh, is over when the sun rises, you know. They saw that Fajr still till Zuhr time, you know, and they have the full choice, you know, to do it with, and what I'm trying to say, really I'm going to get scared, you know, when I hear such stories. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu spent his life, his time, his uh, effort, his fame, many, many things, you know, that we know or we may not know to establish this teaching, you know, this relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we are in a turn point, may Allah save us, all of us, you know, of it, you know, that we are putting down what has been established by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want to speak about prayer? Then, I'm sorry to tell you, you know, when you speak about characters, it's going to be much worse, you know. I'm sorry to tell you now that most Muslims nowadays, they are considered that they don't have character. Your prophet, you know, have the best character. We mentioned certain stories, you know. But how come, يعني, as if we are putting down everything was established by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
and this is really bad really i hate myself to see myself you know in this such a per uh, position you know putting down something you know that has been established by him so please be careful take care of yourself take care of those around you you know this there is a picture you know mentioned in the quran i never inshallah forget it you know what is this picture yani? and mention in detail you have said the Nuh, who oh, said the Nuh, said the Nuh, one of the best five, you know, in this life. He told his son, come and join us, you know, in the ship. So he said, no, I'm going to go to the mountain. You see the physical and spiritual? No, I'm going to go to that mountain, you know, to be saved, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this picture, and it's really, it's painful. وَحَالَ بَيْنَهُمَا الْمَوْجُ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُغْرَقِينَ In his eyes he did see that his son is gone away. Don't forget this picture. Sayyidina Nuh did not sacrifice his son by any wrong action in this life. We are wasting our children, you know, by many actions we do, you know, in this life. Okay. Here, you see it in this life, maybe mended by way, one way. The Prophet in his hadith mentioned about another picture, you know, which is quite serious, you know, and quite scary. That the people who, their souls were taken away, and the dead people, you know, when they have a soul coming, you know, from the life, like يعني, in the old days, not nowadays. Nowadays, uh, if I hear something, you know, I'm going to open the TV, you know, and just just my myself, you know. But in the old days, they are going to surround him, you know, tell us about the news. And uh, so the souls, they are going to surround that new soul com coming to them, you know, asking it, you know, about the news of the people, you know, in the life, you know. Who, how is so and so? How is that thing, you know, and you name it. Then they will ask him, you know, how is so and so about a person? He said, he did not come to you. That means he went to the other side. No change. You cannot change this, you know, because the, that person passed away and his soul was taken to some area in the Barzakh which is connected right away to hellfire, you know, and you cannot change anything. So be in remembrance, you know, of those the two cases, you know, all the time. Shall we stop here? Okay. Bye. Para means Ruh al Qudus. Okay. And that's why in many of these uh, translations, you know, in Arabic and other languages, they are going to translate it as Ruh al Qudus. Yeah, that's what the, that author he said. Yani, this perhaps has been changed, you know, in the Greek language. What is the best way? to take a portion of his names or inherit from his names, you know. As I said, we, uh, we may share with him many of these names, you know, and we should find our portion for the, the names that we don't have any portion or we may not share with him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We should be too proud of him and knowing his specialties that apparently, you know, in the first two sessions, you know, I highlighted them a lot, you know, and mentioned a lot of story about them. Could you please sh uh, share a beautiful story, you know, about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? In my, in my view, and he is the most beautiful story, okay? We have a lot of stories, you know, about his names, you know? The one who wants to go, go further, 
and uh, study his seerah and study his uh, shama'il. You are going to have a lot of these stories, you know. You may uh, try to match them with the Holy Quran. In the Holy Quran, you have many verses, you know, praising the Prophet وسلم, and this should be uh, taken under consideration. How did the Prophet وسلم, sleep, you know? Um, we have physical and spiritual patterns. The physical patterns, he used to be on his right side and to put his holy head, you know, under his cheek, you know, and to have some dhikr. The spiritual one was described in different ahadith, namely in Bukhari and elsewhere, you know, that he, his eyes may be sleeping, you know, but his heart is going to be awakened. Other questions? We'll uh, move, you know, uh, we mentioned uh, al thing, you know, as Al-Aqib, I think, then we'll move Sayyiduna Taha Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was mentioned as a name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in none authentic hadith, but you have sound chains, you know, to some scholars from the companion or successor you know about this uh, uh, this name in particular you know and in that in the narration that i said that uh, said that it was not that authentic or sound in li inda rabbi ashrat asma or li inda rabbi ashrat asma and including taha uh, and yasin and this is uh, related to the letters come at few surahs you know namely 29 surahs in the Quran, they start by these letters, you know, and you have some people, they said all of them, they are part of the name of the Prophet ﷺ. Some they have complete denial and some they have intermediate, you know. Yani what I'm trying to say, don't argue a lot you know, with a person who did not think that as such, you know, because in my introduction I did mention that some of these names, they may not be in authentic hadith, you know, they may be in otherwise. I don't have any case against you, you know, to when you are convinced on with one of these hadith to t tell you, no, don't uh, uh, have this, you know, or whatever. I may have a case, you know, against you when you uh, when you have something that I feel it doesn't fit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Here for Taha, this come from my side because it's followed by Yasin as again you have the same controversy about Yasin same as Taha you know in my understanding I may be right or wrong Pa started by the strongest letter in Arabic language you know and this is make me understand and Surah Taha make me understand that uh, uh, Taha speaking about the Jalali component of his Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he has some Jalali component you know not the thing because uh, uh, as Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib described him man ra'ahu badihatan habah wa man khalatahu ma'rifatan ahabah the one who has the first look at him is going to have some Jalal uh, as a reflection from him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then you may have the beauty when you when you get involved much more with him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that's why I understand Taha as a portion of the Jalal of him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Yasin as the portion of Jamal or uh, goodness, you know, in him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We may call of uh, all of his words. So, and all of us, you know, we should build ourselves, you know, with Jalal and Jamal. And the best among us, those who get closer to the uh, characters of the Prophet وسلم, in different attitudes, you know. And even in my mind, you may have among the angels, you may have among the prophets, you may have among the companion, or among all humankind, uh, people that you feel they are generally and people they you feel that they are otherwise you know and this is the reality even the verses of the quran as Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq did say that you, ha you are going to find uh, Jalali next to Jamali to make everyone, you know, raghiban, raghiban. He should have a lot of wishes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he should be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, even the holy names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
they are going to find some Jalali names, you know. Besides them, we are going to find Jamali name. Perhaps all of us will, would like, you know, the Jamali, which uh, has been summarized by Allah when He said, Tabarak asmu rabbika dhil jalali, majesty, and wal ikram, and for the other honorable or noble position, you know. We may lack one of all over, uh, over the others, you know. We have some events, you know, in our life that we may not be pleased with it, you know. But when you relate it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you related them to uh, his actions, then his names, then his attribute, you know. You are going to have much better uh, understanding of them. And I should mention here that... Uh, uh, a person came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asking him or seeking his advice and he said لا تتهم الله على نفسك don't accuse Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for your benefit for your own benefit you know and this is uh, it comes by building your confidence in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and this belt of Confidence, I think, is related to knowledge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have much more, much more strong relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, uh, this experience happened to me. We have a lot of poems, some of them to praise the Prophet, some of your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many of these real lovers, you know, they are going to mention the two possibilities, you know. And the other possibility, which is disliked, you know, by some of us, they are going to be changed, you know, by some singer or moonshade or by some people, and they enjoy it a lot, you know. And what I'm trying to say, all of us, with few exception, we we try to look at Allah, we try to look at the Prophet وسلم, from the area that we love. By this, you know, we are going to miss a portion of him, وسلم, okay? Yani, I have heard from many people, you know, I don't know about your people, you know, they have fake a hadith about him, وسلم. I think the reality is the best, best thing, you know. Always I put this as an assumption, you know, if you have two persons, which is impossible, if you have two persons, both of them called Muhammad, and one of them was the way you understand and you would like, and the other one, the one who has broken teeth, you know, uh, tooth in uh, Uhud battle, and he was wounded badly, and this and that. Which one you are going to love more? I think the, the real lover is going to love the real Muhammad وسلم, not the other one that I like in my idea. And I, I have heard, you know, some Muslim speaker, they may speak, you know, up about this position is better than this or whatever, you know, which is according to my standard. The Prophet وسلم, did miss his children in his life, you know, with the exception of Sayyidi Fatima. No one of us likes such a thing. The Prophet وسلم, was sent out of his house. The Prophet وسلم, was called, you know, after revelation as crazy as uh, black magician as this as that you know uh, do you think for one moment that this out of expression from Allah because he doesn't love him no because as mentioned in Fuqa Hanafi books you know and other areas you know Allah SWT is going to choose to his uh, Messenger to his beloved person, you know, the best, you know, namely the Prophet. This mentioned Bada'a Sana and elsewhere, you know, and I'm going to understand it in all aspects of his life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is if if I don't know it by detail, I should know by by summary, okay? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say in Quran, فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا under your eye, our eyes, under our eyes. I would like to read all portions, you know, of Sirah under this phrase, you know, of two words, you know, that under the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really I I'm quite convinced I'm going to look at his seal you know, from this particular point, you know, and uh, this is just to make ourselves, you know, change our standards, you know, because nowadays if someone, you know, has problem, you know, they say, he doesn't deserve this, you know, ya Allah, how come you did this to him, you know, this completely opposite or against what has been set up, you know, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, holy name and attributes and in the real life of the Prophet sallallahu All of us, we are going to face in our life something which is hated for all of us, which is 
the death, okay? The death is really hated, you know, by, by all of us, you know, but the Prophet did, did give you good outcome, you know. al mawtu kafaratun li kulli muslim, okay? And to be, you know, without any strength, you know, and to be, to have everything taken away. No one of us perhaps like this, you know, but the Prophet ﷺ make it an enormity, you know, the sort sorry, uh, the, uh, expiation, you know, that's mean you are going to be forgiven, you know, of all of your sins, you know, by this negative event that is going to happen in your life. You don't have any choice, you know. It's going to happen, you know, regardless. But, but what I'm trying to say, that here, many of those disliked matter, you know, you should understand them very well, okay? Because not my standard is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's standard, not yours, okay? And that's why Sayyidina Ubadah ibn Samit did say, uh, say that we gave bay'ah to the Prophet sallallahu to have complete obedience to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi al-usri wal-yusri wal-manshati wal-makra whether we love or hate, we should have full, complete obedience, you know? This remind me that a teenager, teenager, not, you, uh, not that old, you know. Teenager called Talha ibn al-Bara, when the Prophet ﷺ entered Medina, he started to show and experience his love to the Prophet ﷺ. He may come to the Prophet ﷺ and try to wipe his face, you know, on the holy feet of the Prophet ﷺ. And uh, in the narration, even the Prophet is going to get surprised of the way that person, that young person, you know, used to love him. One day he gave this test, this quite heavy test, you know. He said, go and kill your father. That teenager did not, why? I have seen him, you know, playing Fajr today. I, my, my father is one of the good person, you know. No, he just had the sword, you know, and was about to go. And the Prophet ﷺ sent him back uh, to, to make someone to return him back, you know. What I'm trying to say here, Sayyidina Talha ibn al-Bara, he passed this test from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's a real lover, and he showed that he's going to obey the one he loves, you know, regardless, without discussion, without saying how or why or whatever, you know, that. And this is, you know, you read it in Quran, you know. You have this verse, you know, verse number 65. I'm going to give you the number for anyone who is interested, you know, in getting much more knowledge, you know, about it, you know. Page, uh, verse number 65 in Surah An-Nisa, this is the first chapter, you know, in Quran. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِيمَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتْ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear by the word, Lord of his messenger, they are not going to be believers till they seek your judgment for any dispute among themselves, you know, and they are not going to find anything ill or negative inside themselves and they have full submission. When we uh, go to Bukhari and elsewhere, this is was revealed when the Prophet ﷺ wants to give judgment, you know, between Sayyidina Zubair and the other person. And the other person, I hate myself, you know, to mention what he mentioned to the Prophet ﷺ. And Khan ibn Ammatik, yeah, because this, this one is your cousin, you know, that's why you have this judgment, you know. You see the level that that person is speaking about and the level of the Prophet ﷺ, because your cousin, okay? And this is really make me feel bad, you know, about it, you know. And in some interpretation, they will tell you this person was hypocritical. In my feeling, no, not necessary to be hypocritic. You know, any of those, even good Muslims, you know, they may have this answer, you know, when they are faced with such things that they hate a lot, you know. And that's why we should have some tarbiya, you know, to get used, you know, to those negative or disliked events, you know, which happen in our time. And that's what uh, the Prophet ﷺ did say, you know, which is, for me, it's quite great, you know, and I'm going to repeat it, you know. Inna Allah yahmi abdahu min dunya kama yahmi ahadukum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to protect his servant you know, of this life the way your, 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 your people, you know, they have their practice for their sick person, you know. I give example of it, you know, usually that if you have very rich person, you know, 
his father lived with him in the same house, you know. And his father is diabetic, you know, and asking for some candies. And, and he has the kitchen, you know, full with candies, you know, back home, you know. He's going to tell his father, no, sorry, we don't have uh, ca candies, you know. Because he hates his father? No, because he loves him a lot, you know, and he wants to protect him. You got my point? The Prophet ﷺ gave exact example, you know, similar to that one, you know, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala case with his servant, okay? And that's why I feel for myself and for the other, we should build our confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever happened to us, you know, we should take it from the... Uh, now, when I look to my life, I'm going to speak about myself. When I look at my life, you know, I have some dua accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. And I, I have some dua not accepted or not done for me. And I should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. Now, when I look at those points that they were not answered for me really i thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i love that it, they were not answered because i feel that there's something wrong is going to happen to me with these matters you know and i'm not exaggerating really believe me you know there's many of those desired points you know that early age nowadays i feel that they are going to be harmful for me okay and this is uh, all of us, we should understand it. We tend to understand those matters. What reward I'm going to get? What benefit is going to be given to me? This is your relation with Allah. Just reward and relation. Yeah. If you have two children, let's assume and a person has two, two children. One of them keep asking you, Give me reward, you know, give me money because I have brought to you this or this, this, this. Uh, and the other one just serve you, you know, without asking for anything. Are they going to be the same, you know, in your heart? I don't think so. I don't expect so, you know. I have children. I love my children, okay? But I feel the difference, you know, between them, okay? So here, this is, should be our attitude toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not childish one, you know. That child, when you smile at him, you know, and give him candy, is going to come and hug you and whatever, you know. When you frown at, at him or you have some other behavior or two against him, you, he's going to uh, hit you, you know, quickly and run away and do something, you know. The, don't be child with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be a man. Be a real, immature man. One's a mature one, you know, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do, uh, do you have anything, you know, any person, you know, like this, you know, in our life? Yes, we have the Prophet sallallahu He was addressed by Allah. That's mean. He used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not fearing of fire, not, not uh, hoping, you know, in heaven. What did he do? He spent the whole night praying till his holy feet, you know, became swollen. Some may say, this is a prophet, you know, this is not from our day. Okay, you have Ashara Mubashirin Bil Jannah. They are not prophets, you know. They are great person. They were great, great, great person, but not, they were not prophets. You have Ahl Badr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's them, you know, go and do whatever you want to do. Have you heard any one of them, you know, have bad or wrong uh, practice or sinful action? I haven't heard. Okay. Then you have Ahl Hudayba, much larger number, you know. They are uh, between 1400 and 1900, you know, uh, person, you know. And uh, the Prophet said, no one of them is going to enter hellfire. Okay, uh, again, I don't hear any change in their life. Some of them, they commit sins, you know, and they were punished, you know, by Sayyidina Amr al-Khattab, by someone else. No one of them, they, I am so and so, you know, don't punish me. Okay, why? Because we have certain rules in this life, and they are going to be applicable, you know, on everyone. Okay, then in the hereafter, you are going to be handled, you know, in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to your position. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our position the most position accepted for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so what I'm trying to say, even you may find some person, you know, who in his life never experienced you know, any of those disliked matter, you know. 
in my view, he missed to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the majestic side. He, ha he is poor in his knowledge, you know, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for his side, you know. And uh, this is reminded me that a person came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once, to, once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to get married to his daughter. And he said, she is this, she is that, you know, keep praising her. Then he said, she never experienced headache. When he said so, the Prophet said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to marry your daughter. She never experienced headache, you know. And this is, you take it, you know, from the hadith that mentioned by the Prophet, the most among your people that are going to be tested, the prophets, and then the best, and then the, or the better, then the better. Okay? And this is, in my view, completely different than many people in your view. Let's make the long story short, okay? We are in this life, in dunya. We are not in heaven, okay? Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa take us all to, to heaven, you know. There, we are going to have the desired matters, you know, and all of them, they, they are going to be happy for us, you know. But we are in this life, okay? And in this life, we are going to find some happy and unhappy events, you know. And this has been highlighted in the Quran. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? إن تكونوا تألمون فإنهم يألمون كما تألمون وترجون من الله ما لا يرجو. If you have some difficulties, if you have some hardship, if you have some pain, they have the same experience, but you have wishes in Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Okay, and this is should be the attitude for any Muslim. We don't govern Allah, we don't dictate on Allah, we don't say why Allah you did so. I'm not exaggerating. You love stories. You know, I'm going to mention this bad and sad story for, for uh, I know, I don't know the person, but I know the story, okay? About a person who was Hafiz Quran back in Syria. He has very tremendous, you know, uh, temptation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's side. Kept making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, apparently not answered because of the wisdom of Allah. I don't need to say because or not, okay? He became atheist. There is no Allah because I made a lot of requests to him and he did not listen to me. Yani as if he wants, I'm sorry to give, astaghfirullah, to give this example. As if he wants Allah under his, you know, uh, shoulder, you know, or under his arm and he's going to dictate on him whatever he wants, you know. Whereas, you know, I think most of your people, they know Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas. This was described by the Prophet as uh, his dua or his supplication is accepted when he decided to go to Mecca to make Umrah. He lived in Medina. When the Meccan people, you know, after this long time, you know, they heard about, he has large queue, you know, waiting for him, you know, to ask him, this one went to have a little bit more salary, the other one. And a smart young person you know, of the Meccan people he observed that Sayyidina Sa'ad Maqas hardly see his way, you know. He's not completely blind. He was not blind, you know, but he has problems. He's, he said, uncle, how come, you know, you make dua for all these people? You don't take care of yourself, you know, about your sight, you know. He said, listen, son. Whatever is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beloved to me. Okay? Yani he did make dua for all of these people, this long queue, large queue, and he, yani in our standard, he forgot himself or he did not make dua to himself. You know. Why? Because he is really bad? No, because he has the best relation with Allah. Another example, I'm going to speak you know, a, a lot you know, about it. Who is that? Closest one to the Prophet in this life, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. I did, I did read, you know, and hear that the Prophet وسلم, did, did tell, you know, many of the companions, sell hajatak, ask whatever you want to ask. Have you heard the Prophet وسلم, asking Sayyidina Abu Bakr sell hajatak? No, I haven't heard it. Why? Because he doesn't like Sayyidina Abu Bakr? No, I think he loves Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Why? 
because the relation between them, you know, is much higher than to ask for some need or whatever. It's much higher than this. You know. And you feel it, you know, as I gave the example among your children, you know, you feel it, you know, the same thing, you know. And it's, it's very weird, you know, if you ask your child to do something and you uh, tell you, give me money, you know, for this, uh, that, yani. I'm not employee, you know, uh, give me some money, you know, for, uh, you got my point, yani? here, uh, our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what I like for myself, you know. I don't like to be like a stranger for Allah. I don't like to be a stranger you know, in front of the Prophet. We have some cases, you have some people that are stranger, you know, toward Allah. They are stranger with the Prophet. So some of them, they just stayed with the Prophet وسلم, for an hour or so and returned back home. These are strangers, you know. They are not the real family, the real inner, you know, of the Prophet وسلم, which I don't like this idea to have it, okay? So, so here, we should upgrade our look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should build our confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should fully understand the Prophet. When you have some of his behavior, sallallahu alayhi wa that you don't like, for sure, I'm not going to care a lot, you know, about your whatever you like or not, you know. But for yourself, you know, be confident that these characters, you know, come from him, sallallahu alayhi wa And we should have complete obe the obedience of him, sallallahu alayhi wa And that's why uh, after that verse, you know, in the Quran 65 in Surah Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave some possibilities, you know, that uh, if we order them, you know, to kill themselves, you know, get outside of the houses, what the outcome? Only few of them they are going to do it. Yeah, I be sure. Shame on us, you know. Only few of us, you know, they are going to do. All of us, you know, most of us, we just relate ourselves to Allah and to His Messenger for our benefit, not for the matter of love, okay? Uh, I, I would like to mention the word love because this is, uh, in my view, you know, the most word that has been abused, you know, by the people. They speak about love nowadays. What's the love, you know, from the, those two, these two lovers? They want to get benefit, you know, from the other. When they feel that there is no benefit, they are going to run away from each other, you know. Whereas the love that's been, the one who loves you is going to love you for your sake, not for his sake, for your benefit, not his benefit, you know. And this is our case with the Prophet Sallallahu Really, you don't, you don't find for even the most one far, and I, perhaps it's hated to be called, you know, the most one far, because all of us, you know, in his view, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are going to be close to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's going to be, to do, do, to defend them, you know, to find the best thing for them, you know. That means he is real lover of us, you know, because he look after our benefit, okay? It may sound sometimes that they are, we are going to have some hardship, you know, or difficulty, you know, because you need it, okay? I'm going to speak about myself, you know, not about someone else, you know. Uh, I, I was raised up, you know, in my family, you know, with my parents till I became 24 years old, you know, and uh, there was a must, you know, to travel, you know, to another area, you know. Really, this was too, too, too difficult and too hard on me. Were they needed for me or not? Now, when I look back, yes, they were needed for me to make me, you know, come and speak, you know, with you or, okay? It was very bad experience for me at that particular time, but it was needed for me. This may sound strange for many persons, you know, especially in U.S. or because they tend to get away from their family. Or, I'm not used to, the, to have this thing, you know, and really I had very bad experience, but it was needed. And what I'm trying to say, since my parents, they send me away and I have, I trust them, you know, a lot, you know, don't accuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have something negative or some disliked or what, you may know, you may not know, you know, what the wisdom behind it, you know, okay? And uh, uh, they are not obliged you know, to tell you, yeah, that we have done this, you know, for this purpose. To best of my knowledge, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam canceled his or uh, command, you know, to Talha ibn al-Bara, he did not tell him why 
he, he used it, you know, or why he commanded him of such a thing, you know. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the verse after that uh, verse in Surah An-Nisa, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ فَعَلُوا مَا يُعَظُونَ بِهِ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ أَشَدَّ تَسْبِيتًا If they are going to be, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and whatever, you know, even though they may hate it, you know, a lot, it's going to be much better for them, and much more stand still for them, you know. وَإِذَا لَا أَتَيْنَاهُمْ مِنْ لَدُنَّا أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا وَلَا هَدَيْنَاهُمْ صِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا They are going to give them a great and tremendous reward, and we are going to guide them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned وَمَنْ يُطِعَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُ This, in my view, this is a verse of the lovers, you know, because it was revealed when Sayyidina Sawban and Say, uh, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Zayd and some other companion, they started to experience uh, some of their love to the Prophet sallallahu namely by being weak, you know, or having some yellowish skin, you know, or whatever, you know, because of that regard. So here, really, uh, why did I, I'm sorry, and I kept speaking and speaking you know, about this point, because in my understanding is not well understood for many of us. We feel ourselves that we are judges of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll tell him, why did you do so? Why, do, okay? This, this, is, this type of relation, I don't like it, okay? We would like to be real slaves, real servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, al -wakil. what's the meaning of ni'ma al-wakil? You have your representative, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? When you have such a representative, you know, you should be too confident that whatever is going to ha done from him, you know, is, to be done for him, you know, is going to be much better than what's, whatever you know you is done, you know, from you. And this is the way I understand the mi'raj. What is the mi'raj? An appointment between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our humankind, our people, who we are going to send. You send me or send you or send someone, you know. We are not going to be that efficient the way the Prophet ﷺ was. Did he bring us gifts, you know, a present? Yes. He gave a lot of presents, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave us the five prayers. He gave us Fatiha and, and the last two verses, you know, of Surah Baqarah. They are from treasure under the throne. Whether I understand or not, okay? He gave us good news, you know, or good message from Sayyidina Ibrahim. I said, say salam to your nation and tell them that the heaven needs some plants there. And the plants there, they are subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allah akbar. We are going to see the hereafter when you have this balance, you know, like a forest, you know, because of the tree. Why? Because this person, you know, he kept, you know, making zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other one, he has very nice palace, you know, but no trees at all, you know. Why? Because it, this is the message we, are, we, we have been given from Sayyidina Ibrahim, from some other prophets, you know, we have message. We have a message, you know, from the angels, as narrated, I think, in Ibn Majah, that the angels told the Prophet sallallahu is very good, you know, for your nation. Let them do, do cuping uh, every day, every year. Hijama, we call it in Arabic. I think you. Cupping, okay, whatever, okay. It, it, <laughs> this means that we are heedless, we are nothing, and we receive message from Allah. We receive message from these great people, you know, these great creations that, that even we don't know them. Okay, and this is give us, you know, even though you yani, cupping, you know, are going to have some blood, you know, and some people they run away from blood, you know, or may be uh, pass out, you know, or knocked out, you know. <laughs> but but this this is the angel they told you that this is good for you. Okay, do it. So this is the way I understand Taha and Yasin. You have the two component in him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You have the component of Jalali, and I think Taha. It's going to show, you, to show it to you, you know, in very uh, strong and vivid way. And we have the Jamali one, and this, this is by Yasin. Move to another uh, name, Tahir. This 
This may be translated as pure. This is my look. You may differ than me, you know. I don't see anyone pure, you know, in this life. I feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his kindness, out of his nice matter, you know, sent this pure person, you know, to a place that he doesn't fit to be there, you know, just to get him mixed, you know. He, he mixed himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with some people, with some dirty people, dirty ideas, dirty this, dirty bad, and, and you name it, you know, and he's quite pure. Uh, same example of it, you know, you have it with Quran. Quran doesn't fit to be among us, you know. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we descended the Quran. Descend, yani I d take it from the physical meaning of it. This is not the place of the Quran, okay? The place of Quran should be much higher than this, you know? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, descend the Quran for us, you know, f to, to upgrade us, you know? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really I felt this meaning you know, about the Prophet sallallahu when we went visiting, you know, Bahira. And there you have not the the footprint of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have the footprint of his camel. Subhanallah. Such a thing, you know, feel it completely different than the whole world. And I have this feeling, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't fit to be among us, you know. It's, it's much higher than this, you know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, you know, he sent us, you know, the Prophet, you know, to to purify us, you know. I give this example, and I like that example that I give, or this question all the time. Let's put, let's put it in assumption. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the full capacity to send a messenger to us, you know, very bad shape, very bad characters, very bad everything, you know. How we are going to receive this, this messenger, this sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You should hide respect, and take all of his matters, you know. But you see how kind, how nice is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He sent you this great messenger, you know, in his characters, in his shape, in what, whatever. Okay, and this is all of them that I know about Tahir, that pure, you know. Uh, he, he have also pure inner, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tried to avoid or protect himself of having some impurity there, okay? Once he told his companion, don't let anyone, you know, tell me about anyone of the companion. I would like to get outside to them, you know, with very pure heart. I don't know about your community, but this is really badly practiced in our com uh, community, you know. And everyone is going to have bad thoughts about the other. What did so and so say when I left, left the room? I'm going to spy on him, okay? I'm going to beat some instrument, you know, to listen to his telephone, to listen. You see, yeah, and all of this, the, whereas the Prophet said, the most knowledgeable one, he said, don't let anyone tell me about anyone of my company. I would like to get outside you know, to them, you know, with very pure heart. You see the difference? I feel the difference there. This is the purity. This is the meaning of Tahir. This is the meaning of purified person, you know, a purified heart, you know. His inner, his outer. What share we have in this, you know. This is for sure we are not going to reach uh, his purity, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we see we are lucky because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in the Quran two chapters for you, one to purify your outer and one to purify your inner. Okay, Surah Al-Baqarah, if you are going to practice Surah Al-Baqarah exactly as it should be practiced, you are going to purify your outer. Okay, when you are going to practice Surah Ali Imran, you are going to purify, you know, your inner, you know. What? What's the point, you know? Do I have any favor, you know, done on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him send such a thing for me? No. I don't have anything in my life, you know, equal to those matters, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify me. Okay? This is not our behavior. When, when, when we have something dirty, we are going to throw it right away, you know, in the garbage or elsewhere. Okay? Whereas here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... Anything dirty is going to clean it, you know, to make it. 
and we are the, the most dirty one, you know, in this, in this life, and we should clean ourselves. I'm sorry to tell you, many of us, you know, I'm speaking about myself, we clean the outer, okay? Nice bro, this. If I have any dirt, you know, on my face, and someone told me about it, you know, after, after the class, I feel really bad, you know, about it. You know. But we don't ca take care, you know, of our inner, you know, we don't take care, you know, of our heart. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking to our heart. So here, uh, find your portion, you know, or your share, you know, in the, the holy name Tahir. Work hard to get closer to him by the outer, by the inner, you know, by all of those maneuvers that is going to fix your, your purification. Then you have the holy name Sayyiduna Mutahhar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or this may be pronounced as Mutahhir, okay? It may be subject or object, okay? Uh, and, and I see it, you know, in both aspects, you know. As I said, you know, about Tahir, you are going to find the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam purify everyone, you know, by, by uh, the message given from Allah in Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran and the, uh, the great practice of him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in those surahs, okay? And he is Mutahhar. Yeah, this is was done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani I had to give examples. If you have this room, you know, you ask a person you know, to clean it. Then you ask another person, you know, you f find the difference, you know, between the two cleaning maneuvers that they were done by two different person, you know. If this room is cleaned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do you expect, okay? You are going to find it, you know, really unbelievable, you know, how beautiful, how nice, how shiny, how is, how that, you know? And here I would like to have it, you know, for all specialties of the Prophet For sure he, he was hard worker, you know, but all of those matters, they were a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Part of your aqidah, that the prophethood, not only for our prophet, you know, for any prophet, you know, is something, a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot relate it, you know, to reasonable matter, you know, or that they gain it of this or that. And this purification from uh, uh, what we hear about him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which we may know some of it, not all of it, you know. It's, when you say mutahhar, that means there is one who cleaned him, you know, even though he's, he was clean, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this was the Sayyidina Muhammad, uh, who was cleaned by Allah subhanahu wa taala. Example of it, yes, you, we are familiar with the example. I think when the, his holy uh, breast was open, you know, and they had the heart outside, you know, and was cleaned uh, and rinsed, you know, and you name it, you know. So, just I want to mention this, you know, even though it has no, no relation to our subject, some of the great scholars, you know, Islam, they became atheists because they said it's impossible to have someone have his heart out, you know, and uh, without this, you know. Nowadays, we have the ordinary people, they, the heart surgeon, they do this, you know. You see how silly, how limited we are? We are too limited, you know, in our thought, in our ideas. Sayyiduna Tayyib. And here, if you want to translate it the, as original, you know, perfume or original, original beauty or original kuhl or original whatever you want, original purity or whatever you know, this has been well known, you know, among the companions. The Prophet Sallallahu personally, he used to love perfume a lot, you know, but he has his, the, the smell of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, much better than any perfume that is given to him. And that's why this has been practiced by some companion, by Sayyidina Umm Sulaim and the other, they used to add his sweat, you know, to the perfume given there, you know, to, to make their, their, their perfume, you know, smell much better. And this is mentioned, you know, as a habitual matter, you know, from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever he wiped the, the head, you know, of one of these 
kids, you know, is going to be well recognized among the others, you know, that this was wiped by the Prophet ﷺ. Whenever he passed in any road or street, you know, the, even after hours, you know, if someone passed in that particular street, he's going to know that the Prophet ﷺ did pass there, you know, in that particular uh, street. The, uh, his servant, Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik, he described that the holy hand of the Prophet ﷺ, I haven't smelled any any perfume in my life, his life, and he lived for more than 100 years, you know, he had been smelled in, in his life, anything, you know, similar to the smell of the holy hand of the Prophet ﷺ. I haven't touched, you know, anything much more soft than the holy hand of the Prophet ﷺ. As I, I said before, we are, I'm going to repeat myself. This is May felt by some people as exaggeration or out of love. But I'm telling you, this is the reality of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is, this is the smell of heaven. This is the, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the best practitioner of it. Whenever you, they have a rain, he's going to expose himself, you know, to this, you know, saying, Hadithu Ahdim Bi Rabbi. Brand new, new to come from Allah. When they have the fruit, you know, as you may know, nowadays because of refrigerator, you have all the time, you have all type of fruits, you know, all the time, you know. But in these old days, you know, you have special seasons, you know, for the fruit, you know. When the fruit come in Medina al Munawwara, or when, when you have some plant come in Medina al Munawwara, those great people, you know, of Medina, they will take the first one, you know. And bring it to the Prophet. The Prophet is not going to eat it. What's he going to do? He's going to put it on his holy eyes and then call for the youngest boy you know, in his majlis and give it, give it to him. And what I'm trying to say, we, all of us, we are incapable you know, of attaining Allah. That's why whenever anything comes from Allah, especially the one will come at first, you should be completely directed to such a thing, you know. And the one who come at first from Allah is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Okay? That's why you are going to find him original in his perfume, tayyib. You are going to find him uh, original in his purification, tahir. You are going to find him original in all of those matters, you know. Uh, a real man, you know, on, on all descriptions, you know, that we heard about, that we did not hear about, you know, and you name it, okay? And all of those matters, you know. I'm not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the full capacity to make anyone you like this, but you have this first one, you know, come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designated to have such, uh, this, the first person, you know, as having all of these qualities, you know, and we should be able, you know, to understand it, you know. Yeah. Don't believe me, don't believe me, you know. In Bukhari, you read it, you know. During the sickness of the Prophet, sallallahu this when he passed away, bi abi anta ummi ya Rasulullah. The Muslims, they missed him, you know, because he assigned Sayyidina Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. Then, on the day of his death, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, namely Monday, he passed away, you know, during Duha time. This is a Fajr time, you know. He lift up the curtain, you know, from his Hujra. According to narration in Bukhari, you know, Sayyidina Anas said, everything was illuminated, you know, when he, they, they have this shiny face coming, you know, from the window, not from the door. Okay, everything was shiny. Just imagine it, you know, nowadays, when you go and pray, you know, in the mosque or elsewhere, you know, you have complete darkness, you know. And you have those artificial, you know, lights to make some areas, you know, but here, to have this complete darkness, you know, and all of a sudden they have this shyness, you know, by, by his holy face, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This narrated in Bukhari, not elsewhere, you know, and we should fully understand it, you know. Sayyiduna Sayyid. Okay. A master, and he translated, I don't know. Okay. 
anyone, especially for voting, you know, and uh, be eligible for something, you know, is, go is going to show himself, you know, as higher than his re reality. The Prophet ﷺ was commanded by Allah, tell them that you are master. He has this smart idea, you know, to say, and I see you do not see al Qiyam, because this command, Wala Fakhr. I'm not saying it, you know, the way your people, you know, you say it, you know, you say it to, to, to be, to have more acceptance, you know, by people. I'm saying it not out of pride. I did say it, you know, just because I was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say it. Okay. Then, for sure, I'm going to love this meaning a lot. I'm going to attach my heart to it. This is my imagination, but such, such a noble person like the Prophet ﷺ is going to hold the duty of all of it, you know, example of it. The Prophet ﷺ, whenever Janazah come, you know, he used to ask, does he have any debt, you know, to be given? If he, they said yes, will not pray on that person, you know, let someone else pray. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an nabiyu awla bil mu'midina min anfusihim, that's mean he's the most guardian and most loyal to them, much more than themselves, you know. What did he do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Right away when it was revealed, he's going to pray on that, that, the person, you know, and he's going to pay his debt, you know, from his own money. And this, that's why I said, say it, even though for me it's going to have all those meaning of the highness that I'm speaking about, but for him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is going to mean all this meaning, you know, of responsibility, you know, and duty, and you name it. That's why we say Sayyiduna Muhammad. And one time he... He recited in Quran in to Adibum fa inna um ibaduk in tafir lahum fa inna ka antal azizul hakim. What did he do? Spent the whole night repeating that verse, crying and saying, Ya Allah, my community, not myself, my community. Toward the, the morning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him. Sayyidina Jibreel asking him, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the bit, why you are crying? And he said, Ya Rab, Ummati, Ummati. And then Sayyidina Jibreel returned with that, this answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and returned back telling, telling him, Inna sanurdika fi ummatika wa la suq. We are going to please you in your nation. I will not make you unhappy. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. I'll try to answer some questions you know before going you know here we have very long question you know perhaps I understand some portion of it portions of it not all of it you know speak about the gender you know the way I look at it you know. We should be quite careful, you know, about the both genders, you know. I, this massive opening, you know, in sex, you know, it's not for the benefit of humanity. If you speak about uh, some other issues, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say, مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ I don't think this is natural thing, you know, to happen, even though it has been practiced, you know, some areas you know but this is not the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to be done okay yeah what I'm trying to say we should be Muslims you know in all of our activities not affected you know by the surrounding or something which is against our Islam then uh, here they gave the difference you know between boys and girls what is the first or top three things you know that the Prophet وسلم, said to, to, to raise uh, I think there's no differentiation uh, the Prophet وسلم, did say about the children in general 
حب نبيكم وحب آل بيته وقراءة القرآن. That's mean you should build the real love, you know, in their heart, heart, you know, about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about his family, and about the, the recitation of the Quran. Uh, by the way, you know, the recitation of the Quran, even the Prophet Sallallahu was the most fluent when, uh, whenever he has any matter or any thing he is going to recite certain surahs uh, or certain portion of the Quran, you know, when he meets with someone, you know, and that's what we read in Sirat Hisham and elsewhere, whenever he wants to invite some people or try to make them accept him is going to start by reciting some Quran, you know. And when he was given the offer from uh, the uh, Meccan people, again he recited certain portion, you know, of the Holy Quran. And this is, uh, yeah, uh, I'm speaking about myself, we may not give it the importance, you know, in the life, you know, but it's too important, you know, especially when we uh, teach our children, you know, the Holy Quran. Then here, here we have a, another question. What was the favorite place name post uh, uh, the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam like for him? You know himself. I think the ordinary name, you know, of Muhammad. This is this is my. Uh, understand the understanding of it, you know. You may consider Abu Qasim because this is part of his task also. Okay. So by by this, if anyone has any more questions, you know, we'll try to answer. Otherwise, we are going to carry on, you know, in our text. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The author said, Sayyiduna Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of his name, Rasul, this is maybe failed to start with that. It's not special for him. It may be for any messenger. But uh, as Qadi Ayyad did say, you know, in Shifa, that all messengers, they were called, you know, by their name, except the, Pro the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was called by Ya Ayyuhar Rasul or Ya Ayyuhar Nabi. And this, in Arabic language, when you have the come at the beginning of the word, means, means the perfect one, you know, the one who perfected himself, you know, in that regard. And this is, uh, I look at what was going on here now, as perfection, you know, of his message, you know, because to have the availability, you know, of Quran in such a far country, country, you know, and uh, in uh, far, far time, you know, after those more than 1,000 years, you know, it's by itself tells you tells you how perfect was his his way, you know, of delivering the message of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Some people they may feel it's quite normal and, and ordinary but for me it sounds extraordinary and the Prophet ﷺ showed his effort you know to make it available for everyone and qu was quite efficient you know when the revelation started he used to have writers you know uh, the n number of writers 44 or 45 writers you know which is a huge number for that particular time you know and he used to expose himself you know whenever any revelation even in the Meccan time when he has some critical positions you know that he may expose himself to and uh, uh, this was his way you know till the end of his life to convey the message then the companion the great companion they held the same attitude you know towards Quran and by this, yani, the perfectness, you know, of the uh, messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was not only in himself; it was in himself and in the surrounding. Then we, he mentioned Nabi. Nabi again, the Prophet sallallahu was addressed in many verses the Quran as an Nabi, ya ayyuhan Nabi. What the difference between Rasul and Nabi? Some scholars may say. They are the same, but most scholars, they said, the Nabi, the one who received revelation and may govern the people, you know, according to the, to the revelation that he has, when he has a message that means some teaching, you know, or some way of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he conveyed to the others, you know, was asked to convey it for the other, 
that he became Rasul. And they said for the Prophet ﷺ in particular, his Nubuwa, his prophethood started when he was received the revelation of Iqra, as you are familiar, in the cave of Hira, and he became messenger when he received the message of Qum Fa'anzir, which was, which was the second revelation, you know, and it's a short period of time, you know, but in this po short period of time, he was prophet, was not messenger, you know, according to the opinion of Qadr Iyad and many scholars, you know. So, so here, I, uh, I believe in his perfect perfectness, you know, in his uh, message, in his prophet, you know, and this is what should be felt, you know. What's the difference between them? Message related to any Islamic duty, namely when we say prohibition, obligation, dislike, highly recommended or permissible, these are the matter, you know, of the Risala. Prophethood, uh, I may not know all of the aspect of it. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ highlighted dreams, you know, in one of his hadith, in other hadith, al-iqtisad was samt al-hasan wal hadi was salih, or that's mean to be moderate, you know, and to have a nice outcome, you know, and to have the hadith, the, the guidance. These are par portions of the prophethood. In third hadith, he mentioned about the one who memorized the whole Quran as if he has the prophethood you know, between his shoulder, even though he doesn't have revelation. And this I may consider part of the characters, you know, or of uh, prophethood. They are not the same as the message, you know, or uh, being messenger has different tasks, you know, and the Prophet ﷺ used to hold many different tasks, you know. He was messenger, he was prophet, he was uh, wali, he was uh, believer, he was mufti, he was qadi, he was uh, military leader, he was uh, governor, and you know it, you know, uh, he was advisor, you know, and uh, many, uh, and uh, I think Imam al qarafi he did mention you know, in some of his books, you know, from what point that did the Prophet ﷺ mention this, you know, from any uh, one of these points, you know, that have been mentioned, you know, that's why I'm trying to say, even though you have one person, you know, but uh, he has different description according to his tasks, you know, something related to his message, something related to his prophethood, and you name it, you know. Here, I believe that the Prophet ﷺ did not hide any teaching, you know, in his message, you know, did not kept uh, kept it away, uh, did not keep it away. Whereas when it comes to prophethood or other matters, you know, he may tell some people, he may not tell others, you know. You see, yeah, here we have some people they show this as problem. You know, how come the Prophet ﷺ did cover, you know, some of those teaching? I think the one which was covered by him, it's not needed as a part of his message to Allah. Any part of his message was delivered, you know, in very perfect and complete way as this has been praised, you know, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the third verse, you know, in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Whereas you may find many aspects of his prophethood, you know, or otherwise they were hidden, you know, by him to Allah. Then uh, we go to another one. Rasul uh, al-Rahma, okay. Uh, no doubt that the Prophet ﷺ has the majestic, you know, and merciful, you know, description. Okay, uh, we take it from Allah subhanahu wa taala when He said in the Quran, "Rahmati wasi'at kull shay," and in the Hadith Al-Qudsi, Rahmati Tasbiqu Ghadabi or Taghribu Ghadabi is going to be much more superior, the mercy, than the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since we believe that the Prophet is the best one, you know, to show or reflect those descriptions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I understand the same thing we are going to have. That means that the, the, the side of mercy of the Prophet is going to be much more than the side of anger anger, you know, or majesty, you know, in his side. And that's why he was described here as Rasul al-Rahma, uh, 
uh, in one narration narrated in Muslim, you know, that Rasul al-Malahim, okay, this may be from the other side, you know, or from the, uh, this was translated, I don't know if we are going to come to it, you know, as massacre, you know, which is, I don't like, I completely refute this translation. I th say the messenger of fighting, not the messenger of massacre, you know, as that has been translated in some work, you know, I forgot where, okay. So here, uh, and and the Prophet ﷺ did say, إِنَّمَا أَنَا رَحْمَةٌ مُهْدَاهُ This is like a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as in the merciful form, you know, given to us, you know, alhamdulillah, we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. We should get the maximum of such a, a gift given to us from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll go to another one, uh, number 19, it's Qayyim, okay, and uh, in some edition, or some copies you have it as Qusam, okay, and do, both of them they fit him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Qayyim, because he was the one who responsible for all matters, you know, uh, Islamic teaching, namely, or anything, you know, which make anyone closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you have as happened between Sayyidina Al-Khadr and Sayyidina Musa, he said, I have a knowledge that you don't know, and you have a knowledge that I don't know. And here, you don't have the absolute preference for anyone over anyone, except this, the exception of it, you know, when it comes to the case of the Prophet ﷺ, you are going to find everyone, all creations or uh, humankind, they inherit from him a certain portion or more than uh, this amount Amount of portion, you know, uh, this namely applicable for patience, for truth, for, truth, for uh, uh, worship, for anything, you know, of that regard, you know, and all they have been inherited from him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That means he he was the best one, you know, to uh, be responsible for all of these matters, you know, and all of us, you know, we don't have anyone has the preference over him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In any aspect, you know, we are going to be under his supervision, you know, and we are going to inherit cert certain portion, you know, of those matters which was established by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, and uh, the closest um, uh, among ourselves, you know, those who are uh, quite efficient in doing all of them, you know. One of them, woman, woman was next to another woman, you know, in the airplane, the other one without hijab, she told her, not necessary to be in religion 10 over 10, let's be 7 over 10. When she, uh, when I was told about it, you know, do you accept to be in beauty, you know, 7 over 10? I'm going to hate this thing, you know. Yani what I'm trying to say, we put the religion as the last choice, or one of the choices. We are going to give preference for our matters, you know. That's why this question come, come to my mind, you know. To what extent was the Prophet Sallallahu As he said, you know, he said, there's nothing of hair or good matters without mentioning or be ex being explained by me. There's nothing of evil doing, you know, without being explained to you. So you see, yeah, that's mean for us, you know, for our level, anything you want to speak about, you know, in the positive side or in the negative side has been explained, you know, and mentioned, you know, thoroughly by him, sallallahu alayhi wa And he was the most perfect one, you know, to have them adopted, not only for the people, on his family and on everyone, you know, including the others, you know, and he usually he starts with his family, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that's why we should love Al al-Bayt a lot, you know, because this is the reflection of his terbiyah, you know, the ref ref reflection of uh, his hard work, you know, and this is one of the reasons behind it. When you say Qusam, this is one of the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa what the meaning it, of it, you know, in Arabic language, perhaps, this is very collective meaning, you know, it means that when they describe anyone as Qutham, as if he pined in himself, you know, every, everything good, and he is not included in anything which is bad, you know. And this name has been used, you know, for some of his family, namely his uncle, you know, 
according to one narration that he has an uncle called Qusam, he has his cousin called Qusam, you know, and Qusam, this the son of Abbas, was one of those four who were the most one, you know, to look like the Prophet ﷺ. Namely, they are Sayyidina al-Hassan, Sayyidina Ja'far ibn Talib, Qusam ibn Abbas, and Abu Sufyan ibn al-Haris. Qusam was one of them, you know, as here, the meaning of Qusam, as I may understand from the book of la Arabic language, the one who holds everything good, you know, and is aware of anything, you know, which is bad, you know. Then you have the. This is Qayyim, Qayyim. This is for Qayyim, not, uh, not for Qusam, right? For Qayyim, a bride. Or I think the holder, you know, or the, the one take care, you know, of all of those commands or instruction given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we move to the holy name Jami'. Okay, uh, there's a poet, you know, in Arabic. He say, "وَلَيْسَ عَلَى اللَّهِ بِمُسْتَنْكَرٍ أَنْ يَجْمَعَ الْعَالَمَ فِي وَاحِدٍ." They said, "They said no one fit this description is except the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala may have the ability, you know, to uh, collect all of those good matters, you know, in one person, you know, and that's what happened, you know, for him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's what the meaning of Jami'. Jami' doesn't mean a place to play, pray or anything of that. That's mean mass collection you know from his side you know this I may not understand it you know they said that each prophet or messenger is going to be according to the nature of his message when you look at the Prophet وسلم, and he is, is the messenger to all humankind you see how collective how massive was him sallallahu alaihi wasallam to have all of those collections you know on his side and uh, this is uh, uh, according to some standard you know of great people you know this is the name of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam abdul jami' okay al jami' is one of the holy names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it means to have the collection you know of all of these matters you know or items you know in one baggage you know and here in our case was the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because we don't recognize anything beyond this, you know, of having, and the, the, this is what was was the description, as I said, of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Said there is nothing of the good matter without explaining to the, to you, and nothing of the bad matter or evil matter without warning you against it, you know. And when uh, the, and he was described by some of the companions that that this man were not going to find anything good, you know, without having him in his, having that in him, inside him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or pointing at him, you know, and you are not going to find anything bad or evil, you know, without having it away of him, you know, or not belong to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he mentioned the name Muqtafi. This is, you may take it from the verse. This is the most collection, you know, of the names of prophets, you know, was mentioned in Surah Al-An'am. They mentioned 18 prophets there or 18 messengers there at the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say فَبِهُدَاهُ مُقْتَدِ and Fakhr Razi in his tafsir or in his interpretation showed you the specialty of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and such a thing you know because he was instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to collect all of these guidance you know which has been distributed, you know, among the other message, messengers, you know, to have this collection inside himself, you know. And some scholars, they may say that this guidance originally his guidance, you know, and that's why when he was asked, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when your prophet, you do, your prophet had became available or started the effective work or effort, effective compulsory and he said wa adamu bayna ar-ruh wal jasad yani when the uh, sayna adam was in the intermediate phase you know between the physical body and the soul which is spiritual or non physical matter you know? and this is to tell us that even the scholars uh, so, sorry even the prophets you know or messengers you know 
they were like a deputy of him and that's why Imam Subki did mention that the Prophet was Nabiul Anbiya, the Prophet of the Prophets, you know, as we have this may be used in different patterns you know, for different people, you know, or to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you say Malik al-Muluk, okay, and this is uh, when you say Muqtafi, that means for she, as uh, the Prophet وسلم, was instructed to say قُلْ مَا كُنْتُ بِدْعَمْ مِنَ الرُّسُولِ He did not bring something which is unusual, you know, or something that the other they did not bring, you know. And the most famous one, you know, to, to mention here, the Hanafi people when they said حَسَنُ لِذَاتِهِ That means this is which has uh, has the acceptance, you know, on all religions, in all prophets, you know. And we have the قَبِيحُ لِذَاتِهِ which is rejected or condemned you know by all prophets you know or all messengers you know i may not be able you know, to go for it you know then you have the holy name muqaffi or muqaff all according to imam suyuti you may pronounce it as muqaffa yani here you have the possibilities of the subject or the object you know when you say muqaffi or muqaffa this is has been mentioned in some uh, authentic ahadith that mean that the name was mentioned by him sallallahu alaihi wasallam what the meaning of it when you say muqaffi that mean he is the very last one you know he came after them and he's going to follow the same guidance okay when you say muqaff muqaffa that he came at first which may sound you know opposed with each other you know <coughs> but in his case you should understand it and believe it you know because he uh, uh, he was described in uh, one of those ahadith of Mi'raj when they started praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did tell the Prophet said that he is the f the opener and he is the last one okay he was he's the opener and the last one which means yani, for our standard we may feel it's opposite you know but this is the you have it you know and this holy name of him sallallahu alaihi wasallam when you say muqaffi and muqaffa at the same time you know and as imam suyuti did mention the two possibilities you know in that regard move to another one rasul al-malahim this is mentioned in Sahih Muslim. I'm sorry to tell you that some of Muslim speaker back in Syria, you know, he said he de had complete denial of this this pain. You know, this pain, uh, this name may sound tough for some people. You know, they know about the UN, you know, treaty nowadays. You know, and they feel that the Prophet ﷺ should fit, you know, the UN, not the UN to fit him. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You see, and yani they have it in the opposite way, and that's why. They are going to scale all of those given matters, you know, for for him, Salasa, according to our culture or our environment or our understanding, which I think completely wrong. The one who wants to uh, be really close to him, Salasa, he should leave away, you know, all of those teaching, you know, and get closer to him, Salasa, and try to learn from him, Salallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's why those great person, you know, around around him, say, namely, like say now Bakr and say now. Omar. Both of them, they, they say now uh, that the most merciful one, you know, as he mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gained some of the toughness, you know, by uh, being, you know, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Say now Omar Khattam was the toughest one, you know, according to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam statement, he gained some mercy, you know, from the behavior. And he said thoroughly, thoroughly, say now Omar Khattam, he said, Without Quran and without this instruction, you are going to see, you are going to, sorry, he did not say you are going to see, he said you are going to see something completely different, you know. I'm going to be much more tougher, you know, and I'm going to show, yeah, what I'm trying to say, all of us, we have a nature, okay? Let's have this nature, you know, adjusted, you know, according to the holy names, the holy attributes of him, sallallahu alayhi wa Whether you love or like, uh, or hate, okay? Even the one it's hated, you know, it's nothing wrong, you know, to, to not accept some of this portion. What's wrong, you know, about it? When you start speaking up about it. Okay, that's mean you are criticizing him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We are criticizing Allah subhanahu wa taala, and here you have a problem. You know, when you have it inside yourself, this is according to my understanding. May happen to some companion because they said, "Bayana Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ta'a fil usr wal usr wal manshati wal makra." That's mean they gave bay'a 
to have complete obedience, you know, whenever it's easy or difficult on them, whenever it's liked or disliked for them, you know. And this should be our attitude, you know. And uh, all of us, we are going to find this inside ourselves. We are going to find some of those teaching, you know, they are quite close to us and they are quite strong and we have a very strong way, you know, of uh, uh, explaining and expressing th them. I'm going to find in, inside myself many other items, you know, that they are not that strong. They, I feel myself, you know, weak in them, you know, and may, I not, may not be able, you know, to explain them, you know. The, the, the best among us, you know, those who doesn't, don't speak, you know, about the other negative matters in their side, in, inside themselves, you know, not in the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in the side of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and they are going to feel themselves deficient, you know, in these areas, you know, and try to correct themselves, you know, and make themselves, you know, much stronger, you know, in these matters. And yani this is May be related to what I have said before, the confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are confident, whatever order or command given to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are going to take it for guarantee. This is narrated in Bukhari. I keep forgetting the, the name. Either this is one of the uncles, you know, of Rafi ibn Khadij or Sayyidina Zayd ibn Sabit. What did he say? Rafi ibn Khadij was one of the young or the junior companion. He narrated that the Prophet says, Naha anil mukhabara. What is mukhabara? That's mean you have many farms in Medina al Munawwara. They don't have the sophisticated way, you know, to agriculture, all of it, you know. They may give some portion of their land to someone else, you know, to have it done, you know, well. Okay, and they are going to be so, uh, some, uh, they going to have in the contract some partner partnership, you know, with that particular person, you know, about the fruit or the outcome, you know, of that particular farm. This is called Mukhabar. And Sayyidina Rafi Ibn Khadish, he narrated, according to Bukhari, that the Prophet Sallallahu prohibited such a thing. What was the comment of that person? Person who was the uncle or Sayyidina Zayd ibn Thabit, what did he say? He said, we got a lot of benefit of such a contract and to follow the instruction of the Prophet is going to be much more beneficial to us. They have full confidence in this, okay? Okay? And what's the point here? Should I put some money in my pocket, you know, or... Uh, prove my point or I, I have a case, you know. No, it's not as such, you know. You, uh, you, all of us, without exception, we are going to move to a s stage or an area where no one has any rules except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best among us, those who try to get themselves, you know, used to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rules in this life, you know, not when they move to other, and not, not when they got surprised, you know, about certain thing, you know, or certain matter. You know. And that's why the prophet of fighting, and I'm going to mention this as last thing, you know, for, for explanation of it, you know. Some of the non-Muslim, they said, Islam was spread, you know, spread over, you know, by sword. And some Muslim, you know, out of their jealousy or they say, no, not by sword. My, my answer is going to be, the Prophet ﷺ did use the sword when it's the place to use the sword, and he did not use the sword, you know, when it's not the place to use the sword. Okay, this, and th that's, that's why you have the two combination of what may sound, they contradict with each other, Rasul al-Rahma and Rasul al-Malahi. He did use his mercy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever it's the, the place or the holy names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be used, you know, as such, you know, and he used the other uh, measurement or the other type, you know, of 
behavior when it was the case and even you, you start by Allah you should understand tabarak asmu rabbika zul jalali wal ikram he has the two components of majestic you know and ikram okay noble things you know when it comes to the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are going to find in this life the two actions of it you know and don't be for one second you know criticizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for such a thing you know then you are going to find the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as such you are, you are going to f find many of those uh, matters that we may be aware of you know as such you know and we should have full submission to such a thing you know and the best among us those who fully understand from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his point and they will be as such one of the zikr of the Prophet sallallahu was in the morning and the evening Allahumma law sallayta min salatin fa'ala man sallayt wa ma la'anta min la'anati fa'ala ma la'an man la'ant okay when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has nice wording or prayer you know for anyone the Prophet did say, I am with him. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares someone, what did he say, Sallallahu I am with him. Okay? And that's why this merciful Prophet, be Abi wa Ummi, he cares some people doing something, he cares some uh, uh, practices, he cares some, uh, okay? Why? Some people, they may not understand it, you know. I myself may not understand some of these points, you know. But I'm going to consider inside myself that I have weak points, you know, in this, these areas, you know. And the one who clearly understands this point is going to be much better than me. Okay? So here, uh, what may sound negative for some people, it's quite positive, you know, in his case, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even... You read in Sirah, the Prophet ﷺ did kill one person. His name is Ubay ibn Khalaf. This person was always threatening the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca that I'm going to kill you. I have a, for a horse. I'm going to feed that particular horse a lot. You know, I'm going to kill you. The Prophet ﷺ said, I, I, I'm going to kill you, inshallah. It's truthful. It's not a liar, you know. When he said so, that means going to kill him, you know. And in Uhud battle, you know, when many of the Muslims, they were defeated, you know, uh, that uh, person, Ubay ibn Khalaf, found it, you know, as an, a good opportunity, you know, to kill the Prophet ﷺ. And he came, and the Prophet ﷺ was surrounded by great companion and all of them you know they want to save him you know from this uh, event you know to fight with that person you know but the prophet sallallahu said no leave me alone with him okay and he took the one of the weapon you know, from one and it was very mild thing you know here in his in his neck you know and he started shouting that person you know he was not killed you know right away you know but he was killed when they in their way went to mecca you want to know the majesty of it, you know? The, pref the Prophet said in one hadith, the worst among humankind, the one who was killed, you know, by a prophet, or he killed a prophet. These are the worst, you know, among the hum humankind. Okay? That's mean, we, we may know, we may not know the nature of these people, you know, but they are the worst, you know, according to him, sallallahu alayhi wa And here, uh, when you look at him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, killing someone of the worst, you know, you feel the the massive, the significant favor that he gave to the other, you know, to get rid, make them get rid, you know, from one of the worst, you know, person at all, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, most truthful when he did say. Then he said, Sayyiduna Rasulul Raha. Okay. This is as any holy name of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I may highlight certain points, but I feel my deficiency there, you know. Here, what, what benefit I got, you know, from reciting many of these books, you know, of hadith, this is one of the impression that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to make it easy, you know, on everyone, you know. I'm sorry to tell you about this, you know. And he, many 
other person, you know, it may make it difficult on you. I have heard the Muslim speaker, you know, what did he say? In Hanafi, in Maraqi, Falah, you have 55 Sunnah. My friend, we are in a time that people run away from performing prayer, you know. When, you, when they hear that there's 55 something, you know, they are going to run away. Make it easy for them. Make them come to it, you know, at the Prophet And I read in Sunan Ibn Majah that a girl, you know, became a woman, you know, and the Prophet did cut part of his turban to cover her head, you know. In my imagination, if this case happened to anyone, go and cover your head. Okay? The Prophet make it easy on that girl, you know. Just offer to her, you know, a material to cover her head, you know. And this was his attitude in, uh, in another hadith, you know, you read in Bukhari. I'm not here, you know, because I feel myself quite deficient to show you the ease of the Prophet ﷺ, but really I believe in the ease of him ﷺ in all aspects of these matters, you know. In another hadith, a woman offered her, herself, you know, to the Prophet ﷺ, according to the verse, you know, Apparently the Prophet ﷺ was not interested in her. And a person of the audience, he said, Ya Rasulullah Zawajniha, go find something. This is Malaysia, and not, uh, he did not find anything, you know. And the Prophet wants to make it easy for him, you know. He said, okay, do you memorize some Quran? Yes, I memorize some Quran. Okay, I'm, I make you marry her, you know, according to the Quran. You see, yeah, what I'm trying to say, you may have different opinion or whatever. What I'm trying to say, the Prophet will work hard, you know, to make it easy on everyone. Okay. I think all of your people you are familiar with the, the Mi'raj occasion, you know, when the Prophet ﷺ cut down the 50 prayers to five prayers, you know. Now we have a lot of arguments, you know, about the five prayers. Just imagine if they are 50 prayers, you know, how we are going to deal with them, you know. So here, the, all of this, the messenger of ease, okay, to make it easy, not to make it complicated, you know. You are not that lucky, you know. If you are in the time of the Prophet it's going to make it too easy on your people, you know. You are in the time of someone else, you know, and it's going to make it much more complicated for you. So please try to understand the Islam as the easy. This is the way I understand the prophetic tradition. This is from collection, you know, from different stories that he used to cut down, you know, the number of uh, obligations and prohibition to make them the least. And he used to open the gate, you know, for the nafila. Nafila here doesn't mean only prayer, you know. You may have nafila in prayer, in fasting, in characters, in the, how to deal with this person, you know, how to treat that particular person. All of these matters, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu used to hide himself, you know, not to make it difficult or burdening on someone, you know. And that's why when that person, Udayf ibn al-Haris, he asked the, the wife of the Prophet, Sayyida Aisha, when the Prophet has Janaba is going to wash his body, you know, at the beginning of the night or at the end of the night. She said, whenever you want to see him, you know, washing his body, you know, at the beginning, you know, are going to wash him, you know, so do so. Whenever you want to see him, you know, washing his body, it's going to, to be as such at the end of the night, okay? Now you have some, I have heard it, you know, and I assume some of your people have heard, no, you should do it right away. Okay. Then he asked Sayyidah Aisha, when the Prophet ﷺ finished his prayer, he's going to come from the right side or from the left side. She said, whenever you want to, to, to him to come from the right side, it's going, and when, and he, he, the Prophet ﷺ, anything which is optional, you know, or you have many possibilities, is going to show the possibilities. He said, what time is the Prophet is going to pray overnight? 
she said whenever you want to see the prophet sallallahu alaihi sleeping overnight you're going to find him whenever you want to see him you know standing or praying around him. okay what time the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to have fasting you know this is nafila not the obligation of ramadan she said whenever you you see and he ha, ha, asked her you know a plenty of these questions you know and he received the optional formula of uh, of her radiallahu ta'ala anha which yani, I think his wife sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she got this idea from him you know and she did show this optional idea and this was mentioned by him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, you have uh, few or more than few a hadith started by lawla an ashukka ala ummati what does it mean one of its meaning that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like those actions but he was hesitant to do them because he did not want anyone to feel that they are obligation or compulsory. He would like to have the bright teeth, you know, but he did not want to make it, you know, as obligation or compulsory. He said, لولا أن أشق على أمتي لأمرتهم بالسواك. I'm going to uh, command them, you know, to clean their teeth. لولا أن أشق على أمتي لأخرت العشاء إلى هذا الوقت. يعني this is the best time for عشاء prayer, you know, to have it delayed, you know, to roughly to one third of the time. Okay, but because don't scale it to our time nowadays to to stay awake, you know, it's too easy, you know. But in the time without power, you know. To stay after sunset, you know, it's too difficult, you know. That's why one was one of the most difficult prayer, you know, on the uh, people was Salat al Isha. Why? Because to stay in darkness, you know, and tired persons, you know, for that part of now, uh, and the, the Prophet Sallallahu out of his mercy is going to pray Isha right on the beginning of the time and did not delay it to that preferred time. You know, he mentioned about fighting also يعني, that I would like to go in each really يعني, when you read in Sirat Ibn Hisham the number of traveling of the Prophet and getting outside Medina al munawwara you are going to have huge number for a person who was above 50 year old okay yet he said that I would would like to to get out for any of those troops or any of those uh, passengers that uh, they are going to hold some task you know, from my side. But the problem that there's people you know, in Medina, they would like to join me and I don't have it available, the vehicle you know, and other matters to, to make it easy on them. You know. What I'm trying to understand from those uh, evidences, you know, and the other evidences that I missed to um, uh, to mention them, and I really I have this impression in my heart that the Prophet وسلم, one of his tradition was to make it easy on everyone. Okay, that's why he was called here in this particular holy name, Rasul Raha. Okay, it's going to make it easy. This is for this life. In the hereafter, it's going to be much more pronounced than, than here, you know, because you, you have those miserable people. They are going to be go, uh, go. They are going to go to hellfire, you know, and you are going to find really the luxury of the life, you know, in the heaven, inshallah, all of us. Then he mentioned Kamil, perfect. Yes. As I said before, you know, this you may derive it, you know, from the, uh, uh, the, his religion and this reflect his nature. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ And you are going to find the perfectness, you know, in all cases of him, sallallahu alayhi wa Perfect. Kamil, that's me. Perfect. There is a, a story or an event, you know, happen as narrated in Sahih Muslim. I'm sorry to tell you, some of the famous scholars, they rejected it. You know. Even though, for me, it make me feel that this is quite perfect. I'm going to share the idea about it, you know, with your people. The Prophet ﷺ was given Sayyidi Maria. And she got pregnant from him. You see, all the life of the prophet, he used to be hurt, you know, or harmed, you know, by some 
lousy people. The hypocrite, what did they say? This son, you know, this pregnancy come from Ma'bur. Who is Ma'bur? Another person came from Egypt with Sayyidi Maria and he used to get in and out, you know, and he doesn't have the Arab uh, habit, habit, you know, in that matter, you know, and he used to feel free, you know, to get in and out, you know, the house of Sayyidi Maria. See how perfect he seems, Sallallahu Alaihi What did he do? He told Ali ibn Abi Talib, go and kill that person. This question comes from, from Ali ibn Abi Talib, which is unbelievable. What did he say? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I can be in America as a sukkah in Muhammad, as a shahid, you are a mala, you are a ghaib. Okay, when you give me that command, you want me to do it right away like an arrow when it goes, or I'm going to adjust myself according to what I see. He said, but shahid, you are a mala, you are a ghaib. Adjust yourself, you know, according to what you see. He went there. We still have it in Medina, you know, the area of Sayyidi Maria, you know, and the farm which, where, where she used to stay, you know. He entered that farm, and that person, Ma'bur, he observed him, you know, from a distance, you know, he felt that he wanted to kill him. What did he do, this Ma'bur? He uncovered his, himself, you know, and he, has, he doesn't have the organ, you know, there completely. What did Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib do? He put his sword, you know, down and returned back to the Prophet You see how perfect? Firstly, he proved for everyone that this is my son, not the son of that person. Secondly, you may take it as warning sign for that person. Don't, don't go in, inside, you know, frequently. Be careful, you know, about it. You, you see, yani, those, the way I understand, perhaps you have many different way, you know, many different perfect matter. This was done by the Prophet ﷺ. I think this is my belief. When he said, go and kill that person, in his mind, he doesn't want to, that person to be killed, you know. But he wants to show some, he wants to terrify that person, yes. Why, why he wants to terrify that person? Because he, re, apparently, he abused himself, you know, by going back and forth, you know, to the uh, woman of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay. This is maybe not be understood for certain people, for different culture, you know, or whatever, you know, but really, you are going to feel the perfectness you know of it you know by each movement of it you know and how the prophet ﷺ did prove for everyone that this is his real son and how he sent you know indirect message to that person you know to keep himself you know away of entering the houses of the prophet ﷺ. so here the camel, not only in, in his shape, you know, or this is was, yani, were recognized by different people, you know, even the non-believer, you know. One time, the Prophet وسلم, in his time, you have a tribe coming to Medina al munawar and as the, the usual habit, you know, of the caravans, they are going to have a station, you know, before entering Medina. In that station, before entering the Medina, a person show up to them. Bargain with them, you know, about a camel. Then, they came to a deal, you know, about the price of that camel, and that person took the camel and went away. When he went away, they start looking at each other, you know, how come, you know, we send this camel, you know, it's very valuable, you know, uh, thing, you know, we send it, you know, he did not pay us anything, you know. I raise this story for this point, you know, a woman there, you know, in the caravan, she said, I guarantee this, you know. I have seen a face, that face will not lie at all. She did not finish her word till they have the messenger of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam coming. He said, you have this date, you know, part of the price. 
the rest of the price you are going to get it in Medina al Munawwara. Okay? And what I'm trying to say, this woman, without knowing that this is the Prophet, just looking at his face, you know, she guaranteed, she secured everyone that this person is not going to lie, you know, with you. Okay? And this is part of the perfectness, you know. He was perfect in his face, he was per perfect in his body, he was perfect in his life, he was perfect in his religion, he was perfect, in, you know, in all matters, you know, and he is the only one, according to some writers, you know, that he completed everything which was assigned to him, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّ يعني even بأبي أنت وأمي يا رسول الله he did not get the physical fruit that we expect you know in this life when he finished his work as Sayyidina Ibn Abbas did say this, ver this chapter was revealed to tell him that it's time to go okay and this is really when you have such a person this is double the perfectness you know he's not the person that he got the uh, the fruit of his work in this life you know which he deserved it completely you know but subhanallah he passed away before getting you know any of these fruits you know in this life you know and uh, as i said you know you are going to find the per another example of perfectness you make seven rounds you know around Kaaba. The Prophet Sallallahu make sunnah to pray two rakahs behind say Maqam Sayyidina Ibrahim. I just imagine if this is not a sunnah you know. Many people they are going not to complete the, la the, the last round you know. They are in rush you know and they are going to go and they <laughs> you see that the Prophet Sallallahu make it to complete that round and to come you have some section, you know, or small section of the other round. And the, you see, the, 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 the scholars in Hanafi and other mazhab book, what did they say? That they said, any compulsory there is going to complete or perfect, you know, your obligation. Any sunnah or prophetic tradition there is going to complete your compulsory. You got it, you, got it, you know, in prayer, What's the importance of it, you know? Because in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to deal you, with you in the, the same pattern, you know? If someone has missing prayer, they are going to be completed, you know, by the nafila. okay? When you have some missing, you know, fasting, I, I don't uh, advise anyone to do so, you know, in this life. Please, if you are sure, you know, about some missing, you know, make them up, you know, don't misunderstand me, okay? When you have any missing, you know, fasting, are going to be completed, you know, by the nafila that you have done. You know. When you have any missing, you know, zakat to be paid, they are going. When you have some um, misportion, you know, done in the hajj, you know, it's going to be completed and you name it, you know. All of your deeds, they are going to be according to this. Shall we stop here? Okay. If anyone has a question, you know, we'll try to answer. No questions. No questions? Okay, very good. That's mean everyone did understand everything or no one did understand anyone. Right. To be honest with you, I don't, did not come to this conclusion, you know, or this comment, you know, by anyone, okay? But I think the hadith is authentic that the worst, you know, among the humankind, the one who killed a prophet, which confirmed in the Holy Quran, or was killed by a prophet, which, which was confirmed also in the Quran, you know, by Sayyidina Musa killing someone, okay? So here, uh, uh, I would like, to be scientific. I don't like 
to understand the Prophet according to my emotion and according to my love. I would like to understand him according to his actions, to what he has done, okay? If I hate killing, you know, that doesn't mean that the Prophet did not kill anyone. I, I, at any way, you know, I'm not going to tell you this is authentic, you know, because this is mentioned in Sira, okay, it's quite uh, famous, you know, in Sira. Uh, I, I'm sorry to tell you, I haven't studied this uh, narration, you know, to confirm it or to disconfirm it. Other hadith, other question? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi hamdan iwafi ni'amahu wa yukafi'u mazidah. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yambaghi li jalali wajihika wa azimi sultanik. Subhanaka la nuhsi sanaan alayka anta kama aznayta ala nafsik. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wa afdalu salati wa atamu taslima ala sayyidina Muhammad. مدين الصادق الأمين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيد الأولين والآخرين وعالم السابقين وشفيع المذنبين وسيد ولد آدم أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم بارك عليه وعلى آله الغر الميامين وأصحابه نجوم الدين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما وفقهنا إذا علمتنا أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters, inshallah we'll carry on in the holy name of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We reach number 26, Sayyiduna Iklil. Iklil, according to many scholars, they translate it as the crown, okay, because it's going to be surrounded, you know, uh, surrounding the head, okay, and uh, uh, most they give the superior to everyone you know physically uh, which uh, for sure is going to be superior uh, spiritually not physically physically you may have uh, some people they show themselves you know or have uh, more superiority but in the spiritual in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala standard you are going to find in him the, the crown and this is perhaps mentioned I, I'm not quite sure if it's mentioned here or elsewhere I, the other meaning of Iqlil that I would uh, uh, concentrate a lot of it, you know, to have the ihata surrounding everything. That's mean uh, anything, any way make you closer to Allah, any religion, any worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has been contained by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and by his teaching, you know. And this is the meaning of Iqlil, yani. I'm going to give this meaning just to tell about how uh, he had, the, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had this massive collection of other matters that uh, uh, has been distributed, you know, in someone else, you know. That's why when some people, you know, for the spiritual matters, for uh, other reason, they may look for other matter or teaching, you know, this is completely wrong. And this is, has, has been illustrated when one of the dearest companions come to the Prophet Sallallahu and he really got angry because he said, لو كان موسى حيا ما وسعه إلا اتباعي. This is not the way we express ourselves. We would like, I'm going to feel bad if someone will go to someone else rather than me. This is completely far of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is, doesn't fit his characters, you know. But he did say so that whenever you look for any matter or what, anything, you are going to find it available in himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in his book, in his teaching, and you name it, you know. We have examples of it, you know. Uh, the Holy Quran, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I was given uh, uh, the Sab'a Tiwal, the first portion of the Quran, which is rough 10 you know as a substitute of 
Torah, and I have been given the mean that this is the second portion of the Quran as a substitute of gospel or Injil. I was given the Masani, which is the third portion, you know, of the Quran as a substitute of Psalm uh, or the book of Sayyidina David, Sayyidina Dawood. Then, this was special. Yeah, this for me, why I would like to mention such a hadith, because this is, is going to clarify for me, make me more, much more understand the position of him Sallallahu said that he contained all of the previous matters and this is maybe understood by the holy name Iklil and he has something extra or something special for him and we have some specific areas you know the Quran mentioned that is taken from the Suhufi uh, Ibrahim or Musa you have بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا في الصحف الأولى Suhufi Ibrahim or Musa that's mean to give preference for life and uh, this this nature you know and to bypass the uh, uh, hereafter which is much more, more better and much more long lasting eternally lasting for you uh, this has been mentioned you know in Suhuf Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Musa you have another area in the Quran am lam yunabba bima fi suhuf Musa wa Ibrahim alladhi waffa alla tazir waziratun wizra ukhra wa alaysa lil insani illa ma sa'a wa anna sa'ihahu sawfa yura thumma yujdahu jazaa al uh, till the end, I think, of it, of them, I, I'm not quite sure when, where they end, okay, and this is to tell about certain facts, you know, this is, uh, even though elsewhere has been mentioned, you know, that this is from the Prophet ﷺ, it was mentioned here that this is uh, from the previous uh, Suhuf uh, uh, or previous scripts uh, given to Sayyidina Ibrahim or Sayyidina Musa, and this is, was part, you know, of the teaching of Islam. Okay, again, you may have in a hadith some of those statements. If you are not ashamed, do whatever you want to do, uh, and uh, I'm not to speak about the translation of it, you know, but this is as a gift to us, you know, from the previous uh, uh, script, okay? Uh, again, you have the long hadith of Sina Abu Dhar, uh, many pages, you know, narrated by Ibn Hibban in his Sahih, okay? We have some controversy about the authentic, authenticity or sound of this hadith, and uh, some they consider it da'if, the other they may consider it authentic or uh, uh, sound okay anyway uh, Sayyidina Abu Dhar did ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this long hadith about what's written in the scripts of Sayyidina Ibrahim what's written in the scriptures of Sayyidina Musa uh, this for me you may differ in opinion with me this for me means that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Thing, you know this is against the idea I have some book written ba back in my country or you may I may hear it from some Muslim speaker that they will say each pro prophet has his identity and his specialty and his nature this is quite right when it did not come to the Prophet Sallallahu when it comes to the Prophet Sallallahu you are going to find him in himself in his religion in his and you name it, you know, he contained all of these matters, you know, and all of these facts may be uh, understood from the holy name Iklil. Iklil means surrounding every, or everything. Move to another holy name. This is was mentioned the Quran, Muddathir. And this is uh, according to Sayyidina Jabir ibn Abdullah and narrated in uh, Sahih al-Bukhari. This is the second uh, second revelation after Iqra. Iqra, not all of it was revealed. Five of the first verses, they were revealed from Iqra. After it, you have Al-Muddathir to be, uh, I think this is again not all of it, you know, because after the introduction, the, uh, the, the surah speak about some of the Meccan people, you know, condemning him, you know, and I expect that this is happen later on, you know, not in the same fir second revelation that we are speaking here. Muddathir, uh, that mean you have uh, Shi'ar and Disar in Arabic. Shi'ar, the 
inner clothes that you have. Desire is the one you have it outside, okay? Uh, for sure they did not have those uh, things that we have nowadays uh, uh, for, to, to protect us, you know, the, the shirt, you know, the uh, uh, short uh, one that we have, you know, but they have shi'aris, uh, and this is what the Prophet ﷺ did say about relation, his relation to people, he said, النَّاسُ دِثَارْ وَالْأَنصَارُ شِعَار Okay, as if Sadat and Ansar, they are next to his holy body, you know, whereas the rest of people, they are the outer of it, okay, to, to, to see it, you know. Here, when I read Al-Muddassir, I cannot forget. I'm going to remember, you know, the one who make this peaceful environment available for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Khadija radiallahu anha. We should remember her very well. This is the first wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She made, she was quite successful, you know, in making the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam peaceful. And uh, even this was described that whenever the Prophet Nowadays, you know, and we should find the, what's called in Arabic sakina or peaceful or secure uh, environment back in our home. And this is, uh, I think, the main role is done by the woman. Okay, and that's why and the man uh, he may go outside, he may have some problems, he may have some stress, some pressure. You know, when he returns back home, this is the the main task of. That woman, you know, to make that house peaceful, you know, and uh, sedated, you know, as Sayyidah Khadisha did do for the Prophet ﷺ. And this is what has been, to my understanding, mentioned in Surah Al-Rub. Yeah, this is, was mentioned before the love, before the mercy. What did he say? Subhanahu wa ta'ala, min ayati an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwajan, wat litaskunu ilayha. To have this peaceful environment. This is the love and mercy come after it, you know. Perhaps many cultures you have the love come at first, you know, but here in this verse it comes second after the first one, you know. In my experience, I don't see it available in most houses, you know. That's why. Uh, the, the people, they come to and complain to certain shuyukh or certain social worker or certain... Why? Because they don't have the peaceful environment inside their house, you know. And when uh, the Prophet ﷺ spoke about the reward of Sayyidah Khadija, it was exactly similar. He said, أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أُبَشِّرَ خَدِيجَ بِبَيْتٍ فِي الْجَنَّةِ مِنْ قَصَبٍ لَا صَخَبَ فِيهِ وَلَا نَصَبٍ There's no noisy area and no uh, hardship, you know, in that particular house. He did not say palace. He did not say anything. He said house. For say the Khadija. Okay. I think her house, if we if we have the quality, is going to be much higher than anyone else's house. Okay. Yet the description of it was spiritual, much more than physical. He said, La fihi wa la Okay. This is what I look forward. Alhamdulillah, I may get some of it, you know, in my house. But I would look forward to have it in every, or every Muslim house, you know, to be as such, you know. It's not a matter, you know, of proving my point or her point, okay? It's not a matter of being equal. It's not a matter. It's a matter of giving that man and after him the family, the children, to give them that peaceful environment. In my opinion, I may be right or wrong, this is the... The duty of the woman herself, because Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha, really I admire, admire that woman a lot, you know. She made the house of the Prophet as such. And that's what I look forward to have it in all Muslims' houses. Then you have Al-Muzzammil, another expression, you know, of having a blanket or covered by it, you know, again, 
the same thing, you know, uh, which is applicable to to whatever has been said before is going to be said, you know, for Muzammil, okay? We as males, we are, this is my experience, I may be wrong, you know, we are humankind. What does it mean, you know, humankind? You, you are going to see me just speaking or whatever, you know. Some of my household, they may see me, you know, having some problem or get angry or shouting you know, or go to bathroom, have some food, you know. That's why the level of respect is going to be changed, you know, as, uh, as these points, you know. Uh, you, you got my point? That's why I observe, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, many of the women, they respect their father much more than their husband, you know, because of this matter, you know, because they, they don't observe their father except as a man, you know, and taking charge, whereas the husband, you know, they so see all of his needs, you know, or whatever, you know, of that regard. Whereas Sayyidah Khadija was completely opposite of this idea. She used to take good care of the Prophet even before revelation. One day as narrated by Fath al-Bari, uh, Fath al-Bari and he related to, to Al-Faqihi in the stories of Mecca, okay, this is a book called Akhbar Mecca, okay, and alhamdulillah, firstly, I did not find it in Al-Faqihi, then in the computer, I don't have the book, you know, I found uh, the, the same narration, you know, come from Sayyidah uh, that the Prophet Salazar got really surprised, you know, about his wife and the care that she take of him. And to have such a noble person like the Prophet Salah be surprised, that means it's too much, you know, of care, too much of handling matters, you know, in the, inside the house. And he asked her one, one time, why do you do all of these matters? And she said, listen carefully, I expect that you are the prophet of this nation. It's before revelation. And the Prophet said, Yes, I am the Prophet, you know, you know. He gave a very logical you know, answer. What did he say? He said, If I'm the Prophet, you are going to see what's going to happen to you. If I'm not the Prophet, you know, the Lord of that Prophet will not forget you. Okay? I don't and I don't see it nowadays, you know. Not about among the females, among the males and females. If I did so, you know, and when you give away something for the sake of Allah, what reward I'll get, you know? <laughs> the, as if, yani, we are, we are completely, you know, forgetting, you know, what did the Prophet ﷺ did say the Khadija. The Lord of that Prophet will not forget you, okay? The Lord that you are working for you, even if you have complete failure, will not forget you. And this is for me, you know, for, in my uh, understanding, never happened for any, in any case, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? Yani if you have your dearest relative and friend, you know, and you work with him, you know, and this is for one time was failure, second time was failure, let's assume 10 times, yeah, he, he may forgive you, he may accept you for one time, two times, three. when it comes to 10 times, it's too much, you tell him. Listen, my friend, listen, my dear friend, you know, we, we love each other, you know, a lot, but apparently in this life we cannot live to get together. So you, you go find your way, I'm going to find my way. Whereas in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not ask you for the result. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you have this pure and directed heart to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, going to accept you. I'm, don't misunderstand me. I'm not telling you to put the obligation or prohibition down. But it happens. It happens in your case. may happen here because you have much longer day, you know, in, during Ramadan, during summer, you know. Some of the people, they may feel, billah, we are going to fast this long day. The other one will be quite happy, you know, they want to reach Ramadan and have these activities with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think that Allah, look, to the to these hearts you know both of them and much more than these both you know and it's going to uh, uh, reward them according now, i'm not dictating on allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the absolute you know 
but uh, in my expectation is going to reward. Yani what I'm trying to say, have your heart come with you when you have anything you know to build your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't, don't forget your heart, don't forget your inner, don't for, forget these issues, you know. Nowadays, most of us, they became materialistic. So, so again, to make the long story short, I think in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares a lot, you know, about your intention, cares a lot about your uh, direction of the heart, and you name it. And this is mentioned by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did he say? This is not sound hadith according to most scholars. It's weak hadith. What did he say? The one who passed away without memorizing the Quran, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did know that he, in his intention he wants to memorize the whole Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send an angel for him Teaching, teaching him the Quran in his grave and is going to be joined in the hereafter to the people of Quran. You see? Yeah, this is the, uh, uh, to, to memorize the whole Quran is not obligation. I'm not going to tell you that it's obligation. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at the hearts, you know, and yeah, what I'm trying to say, this is for me and for everyone, believe me, you know, when you direct your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have full confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to have much larger and bigger response, you know, to you. And those really, yeah, I'm not exaggerating, yeah, Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, before his death, you know, he passed out, knocked out. And when he opened his eyes, what did he say? He said in Arabic, innakum satu'ayinuna min fadlillahi ma la yakhturu lakum alaba. You are going to observe from the favor and good matters from Allah that never even pass through your mind, you know, or your expectation. Okay? And this is by, this is, Part of our worshiping to Allah, when the Prophet ﷺ did say, min husn al ibadah to have these good thoughts, you know, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this part of your worshiping Allah, or perhaps for a, pe a person like me, this is the best part, you know, the best portion, you know, ever, you know, of his worshiping to Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to have such a thing. And this is, I, I may take all of the things that I mentioned from the story of Sayyidina Khadija before Islam and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala met her expectation, you know, made, made her, you know, our highly respected mother, you know, in this life. And really, if we love her, if we love the Prophet وسلم, to have this relief, this release of this duty, you know, in this life, in, in the, this life. This is really very, very important thing, you know. I don't have the task that the Prophet ﷺ did have. I don't have the burden that, but really when I feel that myself that I'm relieved of it, you know, or released, th th this is the heaven for me. Okay, and the, the Sayyidah Khadija, yani, uh, uh, this class not for Sayyidah Khadija, but I should praise her a lot, you know, and we should show my love to her, you know, because she made that great house, you know, as very unique for him, very quiet, very uh, uh, peaceful for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this reminded me this really very bad story, you know, when, the, when Sayyidina Khadija passed away and his uncle Ab Abu Talib, he went outside his house, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In that particular day, he did not meet anyone, free or slave, young or old, without calling him liar. This is not for me. Yani I, perhaps I have some lies, you know, in my life. This is for the most honest and most truthful one, you know. He, he did not face in that particular day anyone without calling him liar. You know? See how much? This is too much. Okay. And that's why whenever, please, uh, whenever you recite Quran, or Muzzamil, or in the Pakistani culture, they they have the the name of Muzzamil or Muddassir, Please don't forget Sayyidi Khadija because she was the one who made this available for him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then he has few names, you know, in connection to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Okay, and this is for the lover of him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is going to mean that everything in his case 
or all of this we call it in Arabic idafa when you connect one to another you know it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by this you are going to have it much more or much less I think it's much more you know you, you may, I may meet with some person who wants me to have my original skill or whatever you know but in my mind the best skill that I have with me is what's given from Allah subhanahu wa and this is what benefit we'll get from it you know about our characters you know some of them they are going to be nature in you some you should force yourself to do it and that's what the Prophet did say إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمْ وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ to be patient you should train, your, train yourself to get knowledge you should train yourself and you name it too. and I think such a thing you know is not going to be as easy you know as when you have it come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why I love these names you know which with this connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about him first first holy name was Abdullah the servant of Allah and some scholars they said in the Holy Quran in the most noble position or condition of the Prophet he was described as Abdullah he, in Isra Sharif Subhanalladhi Asra bi Abdihi in Mi'raj Sharif the, you may have this as a hint you know Surah Najm fa'awha ila abdihi ma awha in that uh, uh, case or position you know of inviting everyone to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa annahu lamma qama abdullahi yad'uh okay and that's why in Hanafi you say wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Okay, you have the two narration. You have one narration, Anna, anna Muhammad Rasulullah. You have the narration of, of Anna Muhammad and Abduhu wa Rasuluh. And this is what the Hanafi they took it. This is the tahiyyat mentioned by Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Then you have the name Habibullah. This is the love. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell us that he loves some of his people, you know, will not even understand it. The love that started from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You as a servant of Allah, you should find your way, you know, you should improve yourself in your love to Allah and to, in your love to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then anything, you know, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people, they... In my view, they misunderstand the meaning of Habibullah, and they said uh, the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did mention that he loved many of those items, you know. But the others, like Qadi Ayyad or someone else, he said, this is the best description. It's much better than Khalilullah, even though we don't taste, you know, both of them, you know. But Habibullah is much higher. Why? Because this is only for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then, second, secondary to it, he may love the patient people. Why? Because his prophet was patient. He may love the muqsid, the just one, in Allah yuhibu al-muqsiteen, Allah yuhibu al-sabirin. Why? Because the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was great, you know, in his justice. You know. He may love the mutatahirin, because as we mentioned before, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was mutahhar. Okay, he may love the tawabin because the best of, you, you got my point. Even nowadays, we may experience it sometimes when you love a person, you know, for certain description, you are going to love everyone has the same description as me. Even sometimes, this is for love, accepted from love, love side, you know, even sometimes the name. The name is going to shake you all over, you know, because this is only the name, okay? And this is, you are going to find it, you know, in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala case that he loves all of these items or all of these people according to his most beloved one who is the, the Prophet sallallahu That's why we don't see, we don't have any clue that this name Habibullah was given to anyone except the Prophet sallallahu okay? You, this may be... It, it come in the verb form or different form, you know, to tell you that 
Allah Subhanahu loves those people, you know. And by understanding, you may differ with me, I, I look at them, you know, Allah Subhanahu loves them because they match the description of his beloved person, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this has happened dramatically, you know, when uh, the, the people of Najran, they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is my expectation, is going to have great manifestation, you know, for especially those who are highly educated or have good knowledge, you know. But they were faced with this manifestation, you know. They told him, we are not going to believe in you, but we love Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. What did Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala say? This is the answer, you know. This, this answer comes from Allah. No? Well, in kuntum tuhibun Allah, fattabi'udhi yahbukum Allah. If we declare that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, follow me to have the love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? This is really amazed me a lot. Okay? The, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam make it quite simple for the one who is interested in loving Allah and have the love come to him from Allah. He make it quite simple, you know. In one narration, I think in Tabarani, that... When he came to Medina al-Munawwara, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have a few persons, you know, of the Ansar, just follow him wherever he goes. When he spit, they are going to wipe their face. When he had any holy hair come down, will come on their face. Yani nothing is going to be wasted, you know, or come to the floor. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, why do you do so? They said, listen, they said because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. And here comes the perfect shinus aside from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he, no, no need for evidence here, I think, you know, to see that these people really, they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. He said, don't want to, to be loved, you know, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. They yes, said yes. Okay. He gave me all these three instructions. أَصْدُقُوا إِذَا حَدَّثْتُمْ وَأَدُّوا إِذَا أَتُمِنْتُمْ وَأَحْسُنُ جُوَارًا مَنْ شَوَرَكُمْ You are going to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. When you are truthful, you know, whatever you speak, when you are trustworthy, you know, when anyone give you something or give you a seeker to be trusted, you know, with, and to be good to your neighbors, you know. All these three items, as you may see here, you know, you are not going to deliver any benefit to Allah, you are not going to deliver any benefit to the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yet they are going to love you. Why? Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is going to love you because you have some, not all, some of the characters given to him, to his Messenger. Amana, you, you imagine this Amana, yani he, uh, those enemies, you know, in Mecca, they want to kill him, you know, by the price of 100 camel. Yet the Prophet Sallallahu left Ali ibn Abi Talib because those enemies, you know, they used to, when they have anything, anything valuable, to leave it in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu he, he did not take them, you know, run away with them, you know, no. He left Ali ibn Abi Talib to return each amana to, to, the, to the owner to the real owner, you know, see. So here, what I'm trying to say, we are going to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we try to match the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Prophet is going to love us, you know, because he loved whatever is, is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is about Habibullah, then Safiullah. You have something called choice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or highly refined from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may have it, I don't think it's available in this text, you know, the holy name Mustafa or Mujtaba or Muntaqa or Mukhtar. Perhaps it's there, you know, I'm, I'm wrong, sorry. Okay, but here Safiullah, that means highly selected from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have it in the Quran? Yes, we have it in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this verse, you know, uh, which is I think 32 or 33 of uh, Ali Imran, he said, Inna Allah astafa Adama wa Nuhan wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al-alam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected, highly selected Sayyidina Adam, Sayyidina Nuh, and the family of Sayyidina Ibrahim and the family of Imran over everyone, you know. Then the, the complete of that particular chain, you know, 
which started by Sayyidina Adam, then Nuh, then Sayyidina Ibrahim. It was mentioned by him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as narrated in Sahih Muslim and Sunan Tirmidhi by Wasila ibn al-Asqa, that in Allah astafa min waladi Ibrahim Ismail, wa astafa min waladi Ismail Kinana, wa astafa min Kinana ta Quraysh, wa astafa min Quraysh ibn Hashim, wa astafani min Bani Hashim. You see this, this chain is going to go all the way till him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the highly selected one, you know, among the children of Sayyidina Ibrahim was Sayyidina Ismail, and among those tribes you know, of Arab, Kinana was the highly selected. From them, the subdivision was Quraysh, and from them, the subdivision is going to be Bani Hashim. And from Bani Hashim, the, uh, this is, uh, was the selection you know, of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is what Abu Talib said in his poem. إذا اجتمعت يوما قريش لمفخر فعبد مناف سرها وصميمها وأن حصلت أنساب عبد منافها ففي هاشم أنسابها وقديمها وإن فخرت يوما فإن محمدا هو المصطفى من سرها وصميمها And this is should be mentioned you know after the Quran because this prophetic tradition you know uh, the Prophet said, whenever you have any branches, you know, bifurcation, bifurcation you know, by uh, the lineage, you know, matter, you may have a person have two children or three or four. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to select to me, this is the, uh, uh, the statement of Him, وسلم, to select to me the best one. Okay, that's why this is give us an idea you know about the highly selectivity of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the parents and grandparents grand great parents you know of uh, his family sallallahu alayhi wasallam in all days you know i had some sketch you know about quraysh as tribe i have some sketch you know about ansar as a tribe the ansar you are going to find them like any other tribe, you know, in, in Arab, you know, like a tree and you have branches, you know, and from the branches you have branches and you name it. In Quraysh is completely different. This, this amazed me a lot, you know. You are going to find main trunk and a branch come from it, you know. Then you have main trunk, another branch. The main trunk is when where, where, where it goes completely to the Prophet And you have some branch. Yeah, it doesn't look, you know, the sketch that I have done, you know, for Quraysh doesn't look like Ansar or any other tribe. This is my expectation. They are going to be, if you understand me, if I explain it very well, you know, like a tree and like branches, you know, whereas here, you, you, yani I give you example of it, you know, Quraysh, they are 12 subdivision, okay? When you go one step down, you may have one division or two. Then the whole bulk of Quraysh is going to go, go down. Then you have another one or two subdivision. And all the way till Abdi Manaf, you know, this is the subdivision of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yani in my mind or my understanding, you know, the bulk of Quraysh, they were in the fathers and grand great fathers, you know, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you have some subdivision there. You know. If anyone has any question about it, I'll try to make it much more clear. Okay, and this is, Yani, as we said, you know, about his parents, it's going to be much more about his physical body, be abi wa ummi, and that's why yaqulu na'ituhu lam arra qablahu wa la ba'dahu mislahu, and uh, whatever, you know, meant there for the physical body is going to be much more pronounced about his inner, you know, about his spirit, about his uh, light, and you name it of, we know some of these specialties, we, uh, for sure, we are not going to know all of them, you know that regard shall we have no not now okay Sayyiduna Najiullah Munaja in Arabic language when you have privacy with, with someone you know to speak with him this is in Holy Quran it did happen to Sayyidina Musa وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا and it happened to the Prophet ﷺ during Mi'raj, okay? And that's why he has this quality, you know, this gives you a, an example. You have some specialties, you know, among the Prophets. You have many specialties, okay? But uh, we may know about them, we may not know about them, you know? But one of the specialties mentioned here in this particular name, 
happened to the Prophet ﷺ, we are quite, and this is not ordinary specialty, this is very highly selected, you know, specialty of him, sallallahu alayhi wa that happened to him, you know, during, during Mi'raj Sharif. And that's why he's called Najiyullah. Naji, this is an, uh, an adjective derived from uh, uh, the uh, object, objective, you know, of it, you know, that he was addressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he did speak with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, was done for us, you know, but not in the simi similar pattern, you know. Whenever you start your prayer, you know, you are going to speak with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but not in this formula that you, you have for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is, tells us about what I mentioned about clear that anything, you know, given to anyone is going to be contained by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Move to next one, Kalimullah. This is uh, what the difference between Najiullah and Kalimullah. Najiullah is in privacy, whereas Kalimullah not necessary to be in privacy. That's why uh, the Prophet ﷺ did tell Sayyidina Musa that he made an obligation on me, 50 prayers, you know, and then, then you have this famous, you know, talk. But this is not everything was said there because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say in Surah Al-Najm, فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى He did not specify what's going on there, okay? I give example of it usually. You have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr, they stayed in the cave of Thawr three days with three nights. Do you imagine that the only talk happened between these two persons? La tahzan in Allah ma'ana? No, they have a lot of talks there, you know. But what we, we are aware of, what we know about the, that, you know, this. And this is, you may consider it as mukalama, okay, because this is not a privacy, okay. Whereas the other talks that we are, uh, I'm not aware of it, you know, or I'm not familiar with it, or, or I don't know anything about it, you know, this you may call it as munaja. That's why, yani, this is, I try for myself and for the other, don't feel the repetition here, okay. Every name mentioned, you know, by Imam al-Jazuli should have extra meaning, you know, should have something special for that particular name, you know, that you cannot take it from the others, you know. Uh, even this human made, but it's, make, it's made for the best among creation, you know, and that's why my expectation is going to be as such, you know. When you have it human made for ordinary matter, you know, you may have repetition, you may have something right, you may have something wrong. Whereas my belief here, when you speak about the Prophet everything is going to be much less and much below the, the reality of it. Then he mentioned Khatam al-Anbiya, Khatam al-Anbiya, the seal of all prophets or the very last one of them, you know. And this is mentioned in the Quran in different formula. He said, Khatam al Nabiyin. Okay, the Nabiyin is the uh, uh, plural form, you know, of Nabi. But this is, you have in Arabic language, you have the two possibilities. You have Salim, which is yani, uh, going to be safe or uh, did not cause any destruction to the root of the word Nabi, Nabiyin. Okay, and you have the other one may cause some destruction towards Jama' Taksir. Okay, and this is Al Anbiya. Okay, so he he put it in the form of Jama' Taksir Anbiya. This is mentioned in the Quran elsewhere, and in, in, the, in that particular paragraph in Surah Al Ahzab uh, or a verse in Surah Al Ahzab, it was mentioned as Khatamun Nabiyin. Okay, as I said yesterday, you have these three specialties. You may have more than them. Okay, this they should be clear in everyone's mind that the Prophet ﷺ was the very last one. What does it mean for me? For sure, for him, ﷺ is going to mean very great matters, you know, beyond my limitation. But what does it mean for, for me? This is the last message come to me from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have any message after that, okay? You may have 
partial message because the Prophet ﷺ said about the dreams that this is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks with some of his people, you know. But this is not going to be as complete as the message that you have it in the Holy Quran and the, in the prophetic tradition, you know. And the other specialty is that he mentioned Ana Sayyidu Waladi Adam Yom Al Qiyama, specifically Wala Fakhr. This is never mentioned. And the third one in Quran, Wa Ma'ar Salnaka Illa Kafatan Linnas. These three items, to best of my knowledge, I don't find any of the prophets, you know. Uh, even in the change books nowadays, you know, has this expression, you know, done, you know, by him. So here, that the term Khatam al Anbiya, that's mean the, the seal of prophets, you know, number of prophets, you know, uh, not part of our belief, you know, some high scholars, they, they said they were 124,000, you know, prophet, okay, and uh, 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 since we mentioned about Iqlil that is going to have everything, you know, contained in his teaching, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that scholar, he did say that you are going to find inheritance for all prophets, you know, in the community or nation of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? And uh, 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 that's why th this same scholar, what did he say? He said, at least you have awliya, 124,000 in each time. See, you see how rich we are, how how great we are, you know, not by ourselves, you know. This is all inheritance, you know, from him because he, he has his uh, nature and his attitude, you know, contain all, every prophets, you know, before him. And this is, يعني, this is part of the meaning of Khatab al-Anbiya, okay? You may have many other points, you know, that should be mentioned there, you know. If you speak about your religion, religion-wise, speak about your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, speak about a certain worship of Allah subhanahu wa or whatever, you are going to have it, all of it, you know, contained in this great teaching which was, was given, you know, by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then you have Khatam al Rusul. Again, there's no repetition because, uh, as we said, you know, before, most scholars, they did, did say that the Prophet is the one who received revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger is much more special, you know, there because he was commanded, you know, to deliver this message to someone else. You know. That's why Khatam al-Rusul does, Khatam al-Anbiya, not necessary to be Khatam al-Rusul, but in the case of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it, wa, it was as such, you know, and he was the, 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 the last among the messengers, you know. And uh, some scholars, as I said before, they said his prophethood started when he received the revelation of Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, when he received the second revelation in it, you know, قُمْ فَأَنذِرْ uh, This is uh, the, the start of his message, you know, and uh, this was ended, you know, the message was ended, you know, by his time because no one has the authority to change any portion you know, of his message, you know, or of his religion. You cannot make Fajr prayer three rak'ahs or four rak'ahs. You cannot make in one rak'ah two ruku' or whatever, you know, of that regard. Okay? Then Nubuwa is going to carry on, you know. You have some items, you know, of Nubuwa that we still have. We are not prophets. We don't have revelation. But there's some characters, you know, some description given by him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to keep up his nubuwa sallallahu alayhi wa in his nation, you know. Uh, example of it, as I mentioned before, the inheritance, you know, when you inherit, as, the, as he mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned about Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq that he has inheritance from Sayyidina Ibrahim, he has inheritance from Sayyidina Isa, and he mentioned about Sayyidina Umar al Khattab, he has inheritance from Sayyidina Nuh, and he has inheritance of, uh, from Sayyidina Musa, and uh, uh, my understanding of that, that comment, you know, of that particular scholar, that any of these prophets, you know, they may have the inheritance, you know, uh, or they should have, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed, you know, to have the, the inheriti, uh, or the inheritance, you know, of all prophets, you know, in all time, as I mentioned before. So that's why Khatam al-Rusul doesn't mean exactly the name of 
Khatam al-Anbiya. In his case, Allah said, he was one person, you know, he was the seal of prophets, he was the seal of messengers, you know, but it's not necessary to have it as such, because here you, you speak about more specialized matter, you know, in, in a way that means nothing is going to abrogate his teaching, you know. You may have some messenger, they come later on. We believe that Sayyidina Isa ibn Nurim is go going to come, is coming one day, okay? Uh, is not going to abrogate, you know, any of the teaching given by the Prophet Sallallahu Why? Because he is not looked at as a messenger, you know? He may have revelation, he may have something, you know, we don't know about his nature, you know? But he's not going to change the teachings which was given, you know, uh, by him, Sallallahu And that's why in the Holy Quran, in two places, you know, when he describes Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam, he describes him that is knowledgeable in the Kitab wal Hikmah before Torah and Injil which for me may not make that sense, you know, and, and this is to tell us in indirect way that the Sayyidina Isa ibn Naram was familiar with the Holy Quran, familiar with the prophetic tradition, you know, and this is indirect way, you know, of expressing that he will come uh, back, you know, to this life. So then we have the holy name Sayyidina Muhyi, okay, uh, to revive or to resurrect, you know, after I'm sorry to tell you, many people nowadays, they are interested in the physical form, formula of it, you know. This has happened to the Prophet ﷺ, as mentioned, Qadi Ayyad, I forgot the one, the book who mentioned it, you know, the resurrection of the body, it did happen to him ﷺ. Not mentioned thoroughly, you know, as um, happened to Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam, but in the authentic hadith, it's going to happen, happen to who? Al-Masih al-Dajjal. Okay, yani here you have this broad differences, you know, between the prophets and uh, Al-Masih al-Dajjal, and all of them, they have what is considered, you know, medically or physiologically nowadays, you know, as a miracle, you know, and those who study deeply, you know, on these fields, you know, they will imagine that it's impossible to happen, it did happen to say Naïs ibn Maryam as a miracle, it's going to happen to Masih Dajjal as extraordinary. We have some narration that it did happen to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Imam Shafi, he highlighted, I think in his book Risala or elsewhere, that to resurrect, you know, the souls of humankind is much more important. Yani, yani you look at the spiritual component of it, not the physical one. As I said to you before, most of people, they are interested in the physical one, but when you look at the non-physical or the spiritual one, you are going to find it much greater, you know. And this has been summarized by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said, as narrated in Sahih Muslim, إِنَّ اللَّهَ نَظَرَ إِلَى إِلَى الْعِبَادِهِ فَمَقَتَهُمْ عَرَبَهُمْ وَعَجَمَهُمْ إِلَّا بَقَايَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ This was the position, you know, before the revelation come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at the people or humankind on the earth, and he was angry with all of them, you know, except few persons, you know, left there, you know, from the people of book. What did happen when he came, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, khayru al-quruni qarni. You see, yani from the bottom till the top, you know, he, this is by the barakah, the, by the blessing, you know, of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what happened to us, you know, and this is, we may understand, we may not understand, this is spiritual, upgrading, you know, or revive, or resurrection. Since we are going to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's going to be much, much more important, you know, than the physical one. The, the body which was resurrected, what do you expect? It's going to li live for eternally? No, it's going to die eventually after one year, two years, three years. I don't know how many years, okay? Whereas, when you have a person, you know, saved from going to hellfire and go to heaven, this is going to f be eternally for him, you know. It's going to last forever for him, you know. And the, the, one of the value there, you know, about the time, I'm not speaking about all values, you know. I just compare it from time-wise. If you want me to compare it from other uh, aspects, you know, 
you have the position wise, you know, the, the, uh, uh, as Hakim Tirmizi narrated in some of his books, you know, when uh, the people of heaven, they enter heaven, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send a letter for everyone. Yeah, really, uh, here I feel myself like an ant, you know, since too small. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send a letter to ev everyone, uh, each one, you know, each inhabitant, you know, back in the heaven. من الحي الذي لا يموت إلى الحي الذي لا يموت إني أقول الأشياء كن فيكون وجعلتك تقول الأشياء كن فيكون. This is a letter is addressed from the the alive that never die, namely Allah, to the alive never die. But don't think for your one second that we are we are going to become lords, you know, or gods. No, this is. given to us, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The original one, whether we understand it or not, is going to be completely different than the one who was given it, you know. And uh, he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in that letter, that I say, kum fayakun, be, and it's going to be right away. We read it in Quran in different areas, you know. And I enabled you, I make you today, say to anything, you know, be, and it's going to be, you see. And here, this quality, in my understanding, is much more important than the life, okay? Some people, they may feel that they are only in this life. In my view, as a humankind, I ran over different stages. I have many stages before this life, and uh, at least I'm going to have two stages, you know, after it, the stage of Barzakh, mentioned the Quran, and then the stage of hereafter till I find my way, inshallah, all the audience they will be in heaven, you know, by this, you know. So what I'm trying to say is there's complete difference between the one who feels that when he dies is going to, uh, um, uh, oh, the whole story is finished, you know, and the one who consider it as one of his stages. You know. Another example I'm, I'm going to give you, you know, uh, you, you recite in Surah Yasin, the one who is familiar with it, قِيلَ ادْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ According to most of Mufassirin, this person was killed. I try to imagine this picture, you know. A person killed, I don't know by what, what way he was killed, you know. In the meanwhile, in the same second, he hear in his, I don't know what, whatever, you know, not his ear, perhaps something else, you know. He hear the, the statement, Qilat Khulil Jan. Anyone is going to look from the physical look, this is poor person, you know. Ya haram, he was killed, you know. He feel bad. In the meanwhile, he was listening, enter the heaven. Okay? In my view, he did not lose anything. <laughs> okay? Because he has such a noble, such a luxurious, you know, statement, you know, come from him, Qilat Khulil Jannah, okay? And this is, it means a lot, you know. So what I'm trying to say, please, 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 don't fool yourself. Don't think that this life is everything, you know. The one who is cured from cancer, you know, he's going to die eventually after a few years. Okay, yani, I may save my health, I may save my age, you know, for certain period of time, then Everything is going to be overwhelmed, you know, and the person is going to take, be taken away, you know. When I look at my, I'm going to look at myself, not at, at anyone else, you know. I look at my land, niche. My father, rahimallah, passed away. My grandfather passed away. My grand grandfather, all of them, you know. I'm, I'm going to be an yani, exception there? No, I'm going to have the same case, okay? And I'm going to pass away one day, okay? This is the case, okay? So that why I did speak a lot, you know, about it, you know? I'm sorry to tell you, even among the Muslim, for dead, Resurrection, they have complete objection of it. They will not believe in it. Okay? But when you speak about other things, you know, okay, yeah, and inshallah, it's okay. Yeah, you see? Yeah, and here you have different standard. They felt, all of them, that this life is, yeah, and my explanation is correct me if I'm wrong, you know. They feel that this life is everything for me, which is not the case. Okay? 
Everything for me is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything for me is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's it, you know. My relation there, you know, my way, this is everything for me. If I'm going to lose such a thing, you know, I lost everything, you know. To lose my life, I'm going to lose my life. I have no doubt about it. Okay? And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ankabut, وَإِنَّ الْأَدَارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ what the meaning of the lahi al hayawan? This is excessive expression, you know, in Arabic language. It means the real life. Okay? You want to look at it from the physical point? The, the death is going to be slaughtered, you know, there, you know. No, no, none, the, n neither the people of hellfire nor the people of heaven, they are going to die after it. You know. If you want to take it from the physical look, you know, they are going to live for, for eternally, forever, you know. The, 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 the people of hellfire, they may have the wishes, you know, to die, but it's not available. They don't have it it's available for them, you know. I'm sorry to tell you, you know, even this life, you know, may find some people, you know, they feel really bad about themselves, you know, they feel that they should die, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not write this for them, you know. We may write this, you know, for a person, very young man, you know, and everyone's going to be uh, crying about him. But uh, it doesn't make a lot of difference. The one they cried about and the one they feel that he should go and he did not go, what's the gap between them? 20, 30, 40 years, let's say 100 years, which is almost impossible, you know. It doesn't count a lot, you know, when you look at the, the case of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how he gives the eternal life for these people. When you say eternal, even in mass, you know, when you try to approximate them, you know, 100 is going to be considered like zero, you know, nothing. Okay, see, here the holy name of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhyi, this was quite observed, you know, by his people, you know, because they filled them, them themselves, you know, because of negligible, you know, and be not, not that developed or what. They were at the bottom, and the Prophet raised them up, you know, to be at the top, you know. One day, Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab was sitting this, this during his uh, time, you know, with some of the companions. And they start speaking, you know, about the fitan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from fitan, you know, that is going to come, you know, what has been mentioned, you know, by the Prophet and others. And here comes the smart question, you know, from Sayyidina Umar. Who do you think that is going to change? To have these changes, who is going to have these changes, you know? And the companion were not able you know, to answer this question. And he answered him, himself, he answered, so he said, the one who did not test jahiliyyah, okay? Sayyidina Amr al-Khattab, it's impossible for him, you know, to change those Islamic teachings. Why? Because he tasted Jahiliyyah. He do not do know exactly what did happen to him in Jahiliyyah. Yani when I look at him, I don't know him exactly, you know. A person, you know, drink wine, you know, in his city, you know, and when he is going to die, no one is going to mention. Now, Omar al-Khattab mentioned in the U.S., you know, after f f more than 1,400 years. You, you can't imagine it. How many persons, you know, they did die, you know, in Mecca, and not mentioned by anyone, you know, because they, they, even they perhaps much better off, you know, that physical explanation that we're given, you know, than Omar al-Khattab, you know. But Omar al-Khattab is mentioned. Why? He said, the one who tasted jahiliyyah and he tasted Islam is not going to change at all, you know. The one who did not taste, okay, homosexual, what's wrong with it, you know, let's do it. Oh, whatever, uh, 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 to have the, the woman uncovered, okay. But those who tasted those matters, you know, and they say if they felt the uh, bad matter you know, about them, you know, they are going to fully recognize. Nowadays, I'm sorry to tell you, Yani, even the Muslims, you know, they try to give fatwa, try to go around, try to find a way, try to find solution, because they think that this is the development, you know, we, could, we should be civilized, not, not uh, of the Middle Ages that we have, we should be too civilized. This is very old, my friend. I give you an example of it. Nowadays, 
they feel that the woman when she has you know those holes you know or not uh, com uh, almost naked you know and she has very uh, short you know clothes you know this is development this is civilization I'm going to tell you this from Quran يا بني آدم لا يفتننكم الشيطان كما أخرج أبويكم من الجنة ينزع عنهما لباسهما. This is quite old to take out in the clothes. Not not something civilized. This is quite old, you know. This from the beginning of the humanity. I don't know about before, you know. But this is from the beginning of the humanity. It, it happened. How come you have the same thing, you know? Because the teacher is one, you know. Is Iblis, you know, the teacher, you know. You still have the same teacher, you know. Teach people, you know, about it, you know, in different pattern and different way to feel them, you know, civilized, to feel them that we are developed. We are not from the Middle Ages, they will say. Uh, really, even this comment, you know, I hate it a lot, you know, we, we have it available, available back in our countries, you know, the Middle Ages. What do you mean by Middle Ages, that we are not developed? In this, I, 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 when I translate it to Arabic, you know, like, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ مَتَمْ وَسَطَ We are the best, you know, even in the Middle Ages, you know, this is the, the best, you know. No, uh, I, I'm not here to, t to tell you that the humanity did not develop, you know, in medicine, in astronomy, in all of these, in computer sciences, no. But in religious matters, they went way back, way down. Okay, and please, please, please don't make the overlap, you know. Don't think that these people who has this significant development, you know, in their age or in their time or in their case, you know, they are exactly the similar that they are going. No, you have those people and you have besides them, you know, the people of religion, you know. Don't forget them, you know, because the, uh, uh, when we move from this stage to another stage, Perhaps those people who are not, who are not well recognized in, in our time, you know, they are going, going to have the superiority. They are going to be much more recognized, you know, elsewhere, you know, in a different stage. Stop here, inshallah. Okay, we'll have break. Sorry, I ran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We move to next name number thirty seven منجي منجي to to save or to make you survive and this is the best explanation of it. You know what was mentioned by him صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said. إنما مثلي ومثلكم كمثل رجل استوقد نارا فجعلت تقع في هذه الفراش فراش والجنادب فأنا آخذ بحجوزكم عن النار وأنتم تقحمون عليه أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم That's mean that he gave this example you know as a person set fire you know and all of these flies and insects they start started to, to come to that fire, you know, and burn themselves, you know, and that person tried to uh, keep them away, you know, by his soap or whatever, you know, he worked hard, and we are, w w without knowledge, you know, try to go to this fire, you know, and the person try to, and this is, may, may be considered, you know, as a very good example, you know, of being survived, you know, by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he is going to be the one who sa save us from this hellfire, you know. This may come, you know, at first, may come at, after a while, you, we should recognize this. Sadatun al-Ansar, when they first became Muslim, you know, just they found the problem that they don't have a head, head they don't have a leader they 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 were massively you know separated from each other you know and that's why they gave him this idea sallallahu alaihi if you are going to reunite you know, again but, but through you uh, no one is going to be dearer than you Okay, and this, then they found out that the Prophet is going to save them from much more dangerous position, which is hellfire. And this is, has been mentioned in different patterns, you know, not that Jalali, 
uh, when the Prophet ﷺ gave the other example, like a people, they were in a desert, you know, or nothing of the luxury of, or life they have, and a very nice person come to them, you know, telling them, I have an area, a lot of green, a lot of water, a lot of uh, nourishment, you know, and the, he took them there, or there, all of them, they followed him, you know. Then he told them, I have much better than your area, you know, and I'm going to take you there. Some of them, they followed him. The other, they did, refused to follow. They said, we are happy with whatever we have, you know. And this is really, it tells you in indirect way about this life, you know, how the people, they are going to be deceived, you know, in this life, and don't trust in the hereafter, you know. And that's why Imam al-Ghazali gave an example of it, like, a person, if, he, if he's given uh, the offer to give him one golden coin in the dream or one silver coin, you know, in the awake statement, you know, is going, uh, state, is going to give the preference for the second one, you know, for the silver, silver coin. He said, when we compare this dunya with the hereafter, it's like a silver coin, you know, in the dream, this is the life and golden coin, you know, in the awake state, you know, the hereafter. That's why we shouldn't fool ourselves. I'm telling you, this is not easy. Uh, we have many people, especially in our time, they are going to drown themselves, you know, they are going to fool themselves, you know, in such a thing, you know. But I would like, from my side, I have some position, I have some cases that I may feel I need to do this in this life, you know. Then I may remember, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me to remember this always, you know. I may remember that there is something better than this, you know, in the hereafter, you know. Uh, uh, I'm not telling you that my life was the greatest one. No, I had some unhappy areas and unhappy hours, you know, unhappy time, you know, in my life. But now when I look back, you know, I feel that even those hours, you know, they were needed because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to do something, okay? I'm quite happy now, now with everything happened to me in the past. Even though in the past, perhaps I hated something. I have some nights, you know, uh, I didn't, did not like, you know, to have the Fajr time. You know? I would like to die, you know, before Fajr, you know. The, now, after those long years, you know, I don't, I don't see anything wrong there, you know. I feel that this is done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me of certain position or certain uh, description or whatever, you know, and I'm quite happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I'm trying to say, build your confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't, yani we have, we may have some miserable, misery, we may have some unhappiness, we may have this, you know, for short period of time. Don't let such a thing, you know, govern you with your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be much superior than this, you know. Your relation with the Prophet should be much superior than these times, you know. And this really, yani, is going to, yani, I used to hear this from a famous wali. I believe that he was wali, you know. Rahimahullah ta'ala, what did he say? You have a carpenter, carpenter, complete failure in this life, you know, wherever, wherever or whenever he works, you know, it's going to be complete failure, you know. Then he figured out, I'm going to work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not going to work for, with uh, anyone, you know, uh, supervision or whatever. What is he going to do? He will go to the mosques, you know, you have uh, plenty of mosques, you know, in the Middle East, okay, and he's going to fix the windows, fix anything, you know, needed some carpenter, you know, to do it, you know, or any wooden, Thing, you know his wife you know kept asking him we, ne we need something you know uh, your your no boss did not give you anything he said wait wait he told her wait this I have very great boss you know and they're going to give me something you know one day okay one day this is the physical matter you know don't expect to have it as physical as this you know uh, during his absence, you know, from the house, tremendous amount of food, you know, and nice food, nice clothes, nice everything, you know, they were introduced to his house. And someone told her wife, his wife, that this is from his boss. When he returned back home, 
He said, the, the wife told him, you know, the woman told him, please don't change this, this boss. It's very nice one, very kind one, okay? Just keep up with this, you know. And this is an example, okay? You may have some hardship, you may have some difficulties, you may have some unhappiness, then every... And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, when he described this, such a thing, what did he say? This practical points, you know, not, not just flying ideas. حفت الجنة بالمكاره وحفت النار بالشهوات حفت what the mean that's like a margin okay what the meaning of margin here if inshallah make uh, Allah may make all of us you know aim toward heaven you know when you penetrate this margin at the margin you may find some difficulties you may find some uh, uh, hardship okay when you penetrate it you know this حفت Margin, it's not more, okay? You are going to find the greatness of it. You are going to be the one of the happiest you know, one in this world. You know? Okay, and vice versa, I'm not telling you. In this life, you have all of these desires, you know, about drugs, about anything, you know. The, some of you people may be interested in this or that, you know. They, 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 you have the desire there, you know. You have the happiness there, you know. But when you penetrate, you are going to find it really bad, you know. And you are going to find a very miserable life, you know. And you are going to find, you want to get away of it, you know. But that's it, you know, the stream is going to take you, you know. No, no chance to uh, escape, you know, or run away. With few exceptions, Allah subhanahu wa is the absolute to do such, you know. But our rule, you know, in this life, whenever you go with the, st with the stream of them, you know, it's too difficult, you know, to run away of it, you know. That's why even you have some people, you know, over the history, in the seerah, in the time of the Prophet on, and before and after, they promised some, some, uh, they promised some, uh, themselves, you know, they promised themselves that, that we are going to change, we are going to do this, we are going to do that, you know. And all of a sudden it's going to come to them, you know, okay. You have Al-Asha, Al-Asha. Personally, I love his poem, you know, because really I feel it, you know, very nice one, you know. This poor person, you know, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he wanted to become Muslim. Those pe Meccan people, what did they tell him? That person prohibit adultery. He said, hey, so what, yani, I'm old man, you know, I'm not interested in this ma matter. They told him, he prohibit wine, prohibited wine. Mm, he prohibited wine. Okay, let me go back, you know, and enjoy my time, you know, in drinking wine. After one year, I'll come and become Muslim. You know? And he passed away in this particular way. Okay. What's the meaning of this? Rather, he is going to be companion. One of the best person, you know, after the prophets, or you pass away in kufr. You see, you see, yani here really you don't have approximation. You don't have someone next to other or uh, uh, okay. You have massive difference, you know. And we keep promising us, you know. I'm going to tell the youth person, you know, nowadays, okay. As your body is going to get stiff, you know, when you get old, you know, the joints and everything, you know, this is again for the spiritual habit. If you, if you like to have good relation with the Quran, start it right now. Don't promise yourself, you know, that when I'll get old, I'm going to start Quran. Don't promise yourself when I get old, I'm going to start night prayer because if you did not start it now, it's going to be too difficult on you, you know, to start it, you know, when you are in that part. I did observe, you know, back in Syria, some elderly. I feel they are too lucky. Why? Because they have a lot of free time. Yet they, they get bored. They complain of the time. How are we going to spend our time, you know? For me, I don't find, I have a moment, you know, to recite Quran or to do this or that, you know. I feel they are too lucky, you know. But this is theoretical matter. My answer to this is going to be as 
you are going to get stiff, you know, and more restricted or limited, you know, in your physical activity, again, in your habits, you know. You are not going to initiate some habits that you never do it you know, before, you know. That's why it's too difficult to change, to have the elderly, you know, change some of their habitual matter, though. If you, if you are interested in some of them, don't promise yourself, you know, do it right now, okay? And make it as a habitual matter with you till you reach that long age insha'Allah and this is going to be much more preferred for you you know and this is that's why the Prophet Sallallahu he instructed us to have zikr whenever we eat whenever we drink whenever we, get, whenever we go to bathroom whenever we get outside you know of the toilet and you name it you know all of those matters they, they have some zikr why to have the continuity of it you know when you want to put up on those matters you know it's going to be much easier than to start them you know from nothing you know i know about certain people you know, they are much older than me when they were raised up you know they don't know how to pray now when they got 60 year old or more they would like to pray but feel they, they don't know how to pray they feel ashamed of themselves, you know, to ask someone how I'm going to pray. You got my point? And you hear what I'm trying to say? It's a matter of get used to this, okay? I'm not putting down the intention. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not putting down the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the try to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But even those matters, you know, you should accustomed be accustomed or get used you know to use them you know in the early age because this is going to be a habitual for you and all of these matter we got it from the munji okay yani, uh, if i'm left alone i don't know what's harmful for you i don't know for what's going to be good for me you know when the, the munji be abi wa ummi he spent, he sacrificed many items in his life, you know, to make it available for the hum all humankind, you know. For me, this is sound too great, you know, and much greater than my expression to express myself, you know, there. Okay. Move to next question. Uh, to next, next name, Mudakir. This is mentioned in the Quran in an indirect way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say, Fadakir. إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْرٍ Okay, that means he is going to remind us by his nice voice talk, by his nice actions, and on the top of it is his look. Okay, when you look at him, you are going to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was the definition of his, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was asked, who are the awliya, who are they? He said, the one who look at, whenever you look at him, you are going to remember Allah, okay? And if the, you have awliya of this type, the, the best among them is going to be the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whenever you look at him, you are going to remember Allah, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You are going to improve your prayer. I have heard from my dad, you know, he has a sheikh, he said that Sheikh did not tell us to stand up and pray, did not tell us to pay some of our money. But when we were in his presence, you know, this is the wording of my dad, you know. My dad is not emotional one, you know. For me, it was very logical person, okay? So he said, we, we feel ourselves, you know, driven to stand up and pray, driven to pay some money, driven to do this, driven to do that, you know. And I think the luckiest among us, you know, who, who has some deficiency there, you know, and he, is, he met with some of these people, you know, to have this drive business, you know, to be taking place on him, you know. Yani, the way I look, I, I used to live in the U.S., okay? They, many, many times they put something for discussion, you know. They have a committee, you know, to discuss this or that. In my experience, you may have different experience, you know. One or two, not one, two or more persons, they are quite familiar with what's going on. You know. The rest of them, yes, they shake head, you know, they say yes, you know, and they, they are not familiar with anything, you know. And when it comes to vote, these two or more persons, you know, how clever they are, they are going to drive everyone, you know, to have them. So, when I have this piece of information, what I'm going to tell myself, you know. 
everything, everyone in this life work for his passion. If this is the case, you know. No, in other words, no one is free. No free person in this life. Okay. If this is the case, you know, I would rather than with full respect to work for you or for the other one or for the third one, you know, I'm going to work for Allah and his messenger, okay? I'm going to make my passion, you know, servant for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. I'm not going to speak up, you know, even if something I'm not convinced with, even if something, you know, that I don't feel the importance of it or whatever, when it's highlighted in the Holy Quran or highlighted in the prophetic tradition, for me, it means a lot. It means everything, okay? That's it, you know. I am going to argue for you, with you, you know, for the rest of my life because this I'm going to be convinced. Why? I'm convinced that no one, you know, in this life act in his behalf. All they take their passion, okay? And this has been mentioned in Quran in two different places. Okay? That means he consider his God as his passion. I met with a person in this visit, you know, in UK. He told me the Western people, you know, in the past, they used to speak about the scientific points. Nowadays, they speak about their intellect, you know, and the, the look to the, these matters, you know. In another word, this is the passion, you know. If everyone is going to go according to his uh, thought or what he think or whatever, you know, the, the scientific person is going to relate himself self to sciences, you know, but it's not going to happen to everyone, you know. Not all of us, we are scientific per person, you know. Some of us, we are, uh, all of us, we are uh, according to our passion, you know, and this passion may differ from one person to another, you know. Some, they are interested in many, the others in fame, the third one in education, the fourth one, you know, in sciences, and you name it, you know, and all of these matters. You know. And when I look at those these piles that we have it available in this life, they are going to be all of them, you know, for ourselves, you know. I, I would like in my life to have something different than this, you know, okay? Because when you compare any of those matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are going to be way down. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu and one hadith he mentioned, he mentioned if the name of Allah, not Allah, not Allah himself, no, the name of Allah is in, the, in one of the two sides, you know, of the scale, in the other side you have all heavens and all earth, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be heavier than them. This is the name. We are not speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala case, we are speaking only about the name. So what I'm trying to say, we observe this, we experience this, you know. Some of us, they may believe in this materialism or whatever, you know. But this is, is going to, to make you like a blind, like uh, no, no, no hearing, no, no uh, handicapped, you know, in many aspects, you know, of your life, you know, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, they want you to have this open mind, this open opening, you know, massive opening. You see, we enjoy our life nowadays because we have massive opening in the materialism, you know, in the same pattern you may have the massive opening, you know, in the spiritual matter, in the matters related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, and that's what the Prophet wants from us, you know. He wants us, you know, to upgrade ourselves. Not to stay in the bathroom, you know, all the time because of massive eating. Not to speak all the time, you know, about something that, yani, uh, you have the rich person sitting there, you know, and we keep speaking, you know, about the, his money and how he's going to spend them, you know. This is, wh what benefit you'll get from this? Nothing. Okay? Whereas when you say, subhanallah, when you have majlis of dhikr, you are going to gain a lot, you know. Yeah, at least, yani, you, are, you are going to be surrounded by the angels, and the angels, they are going to convey the whole picture to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of, of no need, you know. He, he does know, you know, what's going on, you know. But they, when they convey this picture, you know, you will ask them a few questions, then you will tell them, you know, I forgave all of them. Ya yeah, Allah! There's one, uh, you know, amongst them, 
He just joined, you know, because move the car or close the trunk or do this, you know, or that, you know. He's just joined on for this, you know, for no any other purpose. Even for him, you know, Allah, Allah for subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive, okay? Yani this is, for me, what do I understand from this hadith? You should find good company in this life. I'm going to speak about Muslims, okay? You need, as a Muslim, you need nowadays something, someone to push you a little bit forward to Allah. Not to make you go, go away, okay? I'm, I'm speaking about our majority, you know, back in Syria, not here. If you don't have any sin, you know, in that majlis, you know, no ghiba, nothing, nothing at all, you know, they start speaking about dunya. This is going to make you unhappy because for sure you are not going to achieve the achievement that expected from the, this dunya. You are not going to be thankful for Allah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are going to be, and this is the worst, you are going to be angry with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever you are angry with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with you. I need in this life someone to push me forward, not to take me backward. Okay, that's why. So what, ya akhi, why you are too extreme? Why you are too fanatic, you know? You don't... No, I'm not of these types, you know, but I want someone, you know, to help me. I need help. I need someone to push me for, forward, you know. The, when I sit with this person or that person, they are going to take me back, you know. They are going to tell me about certain problems that I didn't, I'm not aware of it or whatever. You know. Like when I... When I have very nice view, you know, of river or mountain, or I'm going to enjoy myself, in the same pattern, you know, some people, they enjoy themselves, you know, by certain spiritual position, you know, certain spiritual standard, you know, to ask them to move from that position or that setting, you know, this is, you are treating them unjustly, you know. And this is one of the interpretation when Sayyidina Suleiman said about the hudhud, this one of the birds, I don't know what uh, I, uh, they mentioned in front of me. I forgot, you know, the name of it, you know, in, in English language, okay? Uh, the, the bird, that I'm going to punish him in very severe punishment. They said the severe punishment to put him with someone, they don't, they don't belong to him. And all of us, we may experience it sometime, you know. We are sitting with some people that they don't belong to us, you know. They have different aim, they have different target, they have different attitude, different way of speaking, you know, and everything, you know. And you are going to feel yourself a stranger, you know, among them, you know. And this is the, the severe punishment which was uh, intended, you know, by Sayyidina Sulaiman to punish that bird, you know, with it. You know. That's why here, when we speak about Al-Munji Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, really, this may sound strange, you know, especially in his time, you know, for most of the Arab, you know, but I'm not going to say so. Why? Because remember, in Awa'il Sumbuliya you have, which we don't read in Sirah, that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did show up, you know, all the Meccan people, they became Muslim. And you have a large crowd, you know, surrounding the Kaaba. They don't have the space to, to, to prostrate, you know. Why? Because the leaders and chiefs, they were in Ta'if city, you know, spending their summer there. When they returned back to Mecca, they made everyone, you know, return back to Kufr. What I'm, what I'm trying to understand, you see, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he brought something which is logical, which is your nature. Fitrat Allah lati fatara nasa aliya. Okay. But those people, since they have different aims, different patterns, you know, different target, you know, they, they don't have any maslaha or any point, you know, to, to have this, you know. They feel that the Prophet wants to compete with them, you know. See how silly, how slow, how low is this matter, you know. Once they met all of them, you know, for them, this was a problem, you know, that the, regardless whatever you they, they do to the Prophet Sallallahu and his da'wah, his invitation, is going to spread more and more. This is a problem for them. 
They decided we are going to offer him. You want money? We are going to collect money for you to make you the most rich, you know, among us. You, know. you want a woman? We are going to select for you the most beautiful woman to get married. You want uh, uh, to be the highest politician? We are not going to have any decision made except in your house. You want? Is this disease come to you? We are going to select the high among the Arab physicians, you know, to treat you. And they said. All of these offers, you know, with someone who is moderate, يعني, according to the Prophet who was moderate. Hutba Abu Rabia, he was described by the Prophet. يعني, all of us, you know, when you have difference, you know, you are going to have someone extreme in his enmity and the other one is moderate. You know? And this is what the case with the Prophet They choose for this offer, you know, to send a person who was considered as moderate. He started giving the offers to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ listening to him. When he finished, did he say yes or no? He did not say yes or no. He started to recite the Quran. He said, Hamim Tanzeer min al Rahman al Rahim. This is descended from al Rahman al Rahim. This is for me, that's it. This is the end of the story. You are speaking about money. You are speaking about women. You are speaking about politician, politics. You are speaking about uh, disease. All of those matters, you know, they are, they are the human level, okay? I'm speaking about something come from Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Out of comparison, okay? And this is what the, and uh, <laughs> when he returned back, you know, that person you know, to the Meccan people, he said, he mentioned something that I understand. He mentioned something that I did not understand. Why? Because many of those spiritual items, you know, or matters, you know, they may not be known for us, you know, but they are available there. We are going to move to them, you know. And the best among us, those who are completely aware, you know, of them, you know, and they don't, uh, they have an idea how to deal with such a thing, you know. Okay? So, here, Munji, Really, he, for those people, he sounded strange, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But he came not for his case, not to prove himself, you know, because he was even before revelation, you know, was at the top, you know, of the Meccan society. He was looked at as the most truthful, the most trustworthy one, you know. But he want to survive many other people, you know. And that's why when his uncle, you know, Abu Talib was about to die, the Prophet ﷺ went to visit him, you know, and in his uh, room there were two of the non-believers, Abu Jahl and Abdullah ibn Abi Umayyah. And Abu Talib asked him, I'm, I'm about to die, you know, try to ease up, you know, with your people. The Prophet ﷺ did say, I want from them one word, you know. By this word, you know, they are going to be the kings, you know, among Arab, and they are going to be superior among the non-Arab. The most enemy to him, Abu Jahl, Bi Abi Anta Ummi will give you ten, ten words, not only one word. He said, say la ilaha illallah. No, we are not going to say la ilaha illallah. You see, he got this point, yani. he, the Prophet Sallallahu did sound logical, okay, Come, uh, going to have the fitra, you know, and those for some other matters, you know, they kept themselves away. Yani the main thing that they, they will not, from the apparent one, you know, they will not follow him, they were concerned, you know, that the Prophet Sallallahu is going to take their position. He was not interested in you know, this, this matter, to take their position. Nowadays, you have from the people of Fuk, you have Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Salam. Up till now, after four, more than 14, we say Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Salam. We have his name, you know. The others, you know, who were concerned, you know, about the, their position, do you know their name? Do you say the, say their name with respect if you if you by any chance you come get to know? Yeah, this is I look at it as a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to be famous in this life? You want to be highly accepted in this life? Go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to be otherwise or neglected? 
you may have the other choice. You know. And this is what happening during the time of the Prophet uh, uh, they, they are quite few those who follow him from those high levels, you know, uh, but, but we, we still, you know, admire them, you know, and uh, highly respect their names, you know. And you have the majority of them, they, they deny, have complete denial of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we, we are not familiar with them. We are, uh, we, we, we consider ourselves, you know, ignorant, we don't know any of them, you know, to know by name, you know. And we feel in our heart a lot of negative matters, you know, against them, you know. Because why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wants to come for Najah, to survive us, to save us, you know, to tell us that this dunya is not everything. You, this you recite in Quran. You recite in Quran, you as a Muslim, you have an appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna wa'ad Allah haqqa, fala taghurrannakum al-hayat dunya wa la yaghurrannakum billahi al-gharur. Then the two main factors, you know, to take you away of keeping up your promise or appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are this life and the deceiver who is, who, who, who is the shaitan. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to miss the appointment. We are, the, some of us, they will miss the appointment with Allah. Again, as a Muslim, we have another appointment with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This is narrated in Bukhari, you know, by Abu Mas'ud al-Ansari. That the Prophet ﷺ was on his pulpit, according to Mr. Masari, he said, "This is the last time I ever seen the Prophet ﷺ in his on his pulpit," and this was shortly before his death. Be Abi wa Ummi He said, "Inni faratukum al al-hawd." Farat in Arabic language, when you have the caravan, they want to rest, to have a rest, you know, or in, in some area or whatever, they will send. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Okay, well, they sent some person or some boys, you know, to have the tents, you know, and everything well prepared for them. This is called farat, you know. And he gave the example of himself, bi abi wa ummi, as the farat for us. And he went to Allah before us, and we are going to find everything well prepared, inshaAllah, for us there. Inni faratukum ala al That's what he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَإِنِّي أَرَاهُ مِنْ مَقَامِ هَذَا Why did he say so? Just to put himself... No. Because many of us, you know, they felt, they may feel this is going to take long time. Okay, it's not going to happen now. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi did say, I do observe it now. وَإِنِّي أَرَاهُ مِنْ مَقَامِ هَذَا وَإِنِّي مَا أَخْشَى عَلَيْكُمُ الْفَقَرِ ولكن أخشى عليكم أن تفتح عليكم كما فتحت على الذين من قبلكم فتنافسوها كما تنافسوها فتهلككم كما هلكم. That I'm not fearful, you know, of poverty, you know, on your people. I'm fearful that this dunya massively is going to have massive opening, you know, and you are going to compete with each other, you know, and you are going to be vanished, you know, in this life, you know. And this is in my understanding when I compared that this is the main factor not to keep our appointment with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? Yeah, we are too lucky. We have a, an appointment with Allah. We have an appoint, another appointment with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we have been told about what of them. We have been told, you know, about what's going to make us, you know, uh, break the promise and did not keep the appointment with Allah and with his, his messenger with these factors, you know. And really, by this matter, you know, and many other matters that I don't remember now, you may consider him as Munji, okay? Uh, I hate to speak this, you know. Some people, they may feel that this is shirk, you know, because here you related to the Prophet Sallallahu something with Allah, which is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala matter, you know. No, not at all, you know, because uh, the, the great matters which was sent by him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Okay, the, uh, whoever, you know, is going to have obedience, complete obedience to Allah and his messenger, you know, is going to enter heaven. The, uh, whoever, you know, uh, is going to have significant disobedience of them. He, he, as if he refused, you know, to go to heaven. How I'm going to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah, I'm not speaking about your people, okay? 
this is, I heard it, you know, in the internet, you know, as a video, you know, about a, an American person, you know, his name is Ma'il, I forgot his last name, you know, he returned back, you know, to Kufr. Why? Because he wants to judge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to his standard or his environment, okay? That's yeah, what I'm trying to say, the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are going to find different opinion by different person, you know. I'm not going to waste myself as such, you know. I have the most truthful one, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He told me, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want from you, and I should find my way to have complete obedience to him sallallahu alayhi wa Whatever he mentioned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or whatever he is going to tell about himself from his side, you know. And that's why you have the connection, you know, between the obedience to Allah and the obedience of uh, the messenger, you know, in many verses in the Holy Quran, this is not a fun, you know, this is not a, a, a matter, you know, that I have heard that, you know, nowadays that everyone consider himself, you know, uh, good, you know, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala standard, okay? Yani the the, the non-Muslim, the uh, other religions, you know, the Buddhism, you know, it, you know, all of them they consider as such. What the difference, you know, between you and them, you know, as a Muslim? I look at it as too unfair, you know, to have this treatment. You are teacher. If your job is a teacher, you know, do you consider the one who has right answer for this problem as the one who has wrong answer? No way. This is business. This is for my life. That's mean you, you put your religion, you know, as number five or six in importance, you know, in the priorities of your life. The first priority in your life is your work as a teach teacher, okay? Then you put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala matter number five or six, you know. And everyone is the same. No, not everyone is the same. This is your task, you know, to search, to find who is the truthful one. And the truthful one is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And that's why when I subject myself, when I put myself down, you know, to obey, I'm not going to obey you or obey this person or that person. I'm going to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How am I going to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Through his messenger, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completely different than the case, you know. And not, not all of them, they, they sound the same. They may have some right matters, you know, in their times, you know. But nowadays, they don't have anything right because Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his wisdom, when he sent his messenger, you know, he abrogated everything, canceled everything. And this is what's available now, okay? من يطع الله ورسوله دخل الجنة ومن يعصيهما فقد أبى. This is the case. This is the common rule that you have. يعني you see how great, how rich we are. You know, Allah سبحانه وتعالى did tell us what's coming to us. You know, in the future, Allah سبحانه وتعالى speak with us. You know about the regulation, the rules. You know of the future. You know, right now you are familiar with it. Right now you have a plenty of time. You know to correct yourself, to adjust yourself. You, you see, you should seek the help of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. That's why in fact you say إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين. Then you say you should seek the help of Allah. You should see, seek the guidance of Allah. You should seek the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you should work hard. And you should have your heart, you know, directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on all patterns, you know. And this is all of them, you know, part of the meaning of bunji that given by him, sallallahu alayhi wa Then we have the holy name, Mazkur. Oh, sorry. We mentioned Mudakir, okay, I, uh, I'm sorry, you know, sometimes I may, may stuck, you know, to a name, you know, when we move to another name. I think we mentioned Mudakir, Fadakir, Inna Ma Anta Mudakir. This is, yani, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi make our survivor, you know, due to his tazkira, okay? He, he was quite efficient, you know, on all of these matters, you know, in his holy voice, holy voice in his strength of the voice, in the way of expression. I'm going to give you some idea you know, about it. Firstly, you read in Shama'il al-Tirmizi, مَا بَعَثَ اللَّهُ نَبِيًا إِلَّا وَكَانَ حَسَنَ الصَّوْتِ حَسَنَ الْوَجْهِ وَكَانَ نَبِيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنَهُمْ وَجْهًا وَأَحْسَنَهُمْ صَوْتًا Okay, that's meaning. These are the ways, you know, of 
attracting people, you know, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is too kind, you know, and too nice, you know, to send to us, you know, all messengers they were with bright or good face, you know, and uh, uh, very nice voice, you know. And the Prophet ﷺ was the best among them, you know, in his holy face, and the best among them in his, his voice, you know. What's about his voice? One time he said, Sallallahu according to Bara ibn Azib, he gave khutbah, you know. They don't have mics, they don't have those sophisticated matters. And his voice reached the women who are in, uh, inside the houses, you know, in Medina al Munawwara. He reached even the women inside the houses, you know, in, in Medina al Munawwara. You see how perfect, you know, this voice, you know? Once, I, I love the, I mean, this story, you know. Uh, once the, the Prophet ﷺ was giving khutbah and he said, Ijlis, you sit down to give the khutbah. This was heard by Sayyidina Abdullah Mas'ud, who was running to the mosque, you know, in the, the market. When he heard, sit down, he sat right away, you know, in the mid, mid, uh, midway, you know, of the street or market, you know. The Prophet ﷺ did say, Ta'ala ya Abdullah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> keep coming. <laughs> See, yeah, this efficiency, you know. It's beyond my limit. It's beyond my expression. I cannot speak, you know, a lot about it. Then you have the Prophet ﷺ, not only by voice, by certain movement. He may cry sometimes while he's speaking about something, you know. Uh, he may laugh sometimes, you know. This is to keep you, give you the complete picture, you know, of the message that delivered to you, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he starts speaking, you know, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter and his favor, you know, and his kindness and uh, whatever, you know, he laughed sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is, I, I consider it's part of the message given, you know, and you see how efficient it, was he sallallahu alayhi wa or he was to to have it in such a, a way you know to express himself in some occasion he may cry okay uh, the prophet sallallahu did cry one time you know and give you the example about the crying out and laugh laugh once he said sallallahu alayhi wa as mentioned in the quran that means made the relation between each other. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the relation the hereafter. Then he gave example to Allah. We have a person, you know, he said, Ya Allah, I have a right on so and so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, nothing left of his hasan at all. They are taken away, you know, by some people, they have right on, on him. Oh Allah, let him carry some of my sayyat. At that point, the Prophet ﷺ start crying. This is, tells you how efficient was he in conveying the message given from Allah Subhanahu. He start crying because this is really horrible position to be in such a position. You 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 want to put some of your burden or sayyat on someone else, you know? And the Prophet ﷺ start crying. You know? Okay, uh, he start laughing when uh, he he start uh, was speaking, you know, about. The last person, the very last person to enter heaven, okay? And <laughs> this is uh, impossible, unbelievable for us, you know. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will stop that person, will tell him, wish whatever you want to wish. He's going to have a lot of wishes, you know. And in the meanwhile, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remind him, we have this, we have that, we have this. Okay, you see, <laughs> we have the reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, that till he finished his wishes. Yeah, this is for me, this is impossible point, but I believe in it, you know, because it was mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi I I feel myself nowadays, I don't have end of my wishes, you know. Till he end his wishes, you know, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is going to tell him, you know, you have all of your wishes, you know, besides the heaven, you know, and 10 times multiplied, you know, of the heaven, you know. That person will be shocked, you say, you are going to get 
to have joke with me, you know, because we are Rabbil Alameen. At that point, the Prophet Sallallahu left. To, get, to convey the complete message, you know, of wishing in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, in hoping of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, of having happy time with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. And I really, I see it very, very perfect way, you know, of conveying the whole message of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, which I'm incapable you know, of that. And this is all part of being Muzakkir Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to be reminded. As I said, even in his shape Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we speak you know, about people and being you know, reminder of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Al-Awliya, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about the Awliya, he said, Alladina iza ru'u dhukir Allah, whenever you see them, you know, are going to remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and here the best reminder to Allah subhanahu wa is going to be the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa by his quality, by his shape, by his holy body, by his holy characters, and you name it. Okay, move to another name, Nasir. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of no need of anyone, but he created his messenger to support certain items you know, of Allah. The great matter, according to Nabhani, and I be believe in it, you know, that was done by him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What was it? To clean the house of Allah, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Okay? You have 360 idols, you know, in Kaaba and surrounding, and the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he held this task, you know, to clean the house of Allah, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. To what extent? He has the massive desire to enter the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will not enter till it's cleaned completely. From any pictures of Sayyidina Ibrahim or anything, you know, of those matters, all of them, they were brought out, you know, and broken. Then the Prophet ﷺ entered the holy house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted in the Quran, he said, Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. What's the outcome of it? لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ وَتِمِّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكَ وَيَهْدِيَكَ صِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا وَيَنْصُرَكَ اللَّهُ نَصْرًا عَزِيزًا Okay, all of those uh, great matters, you know, they were given as a, in my understanding, as a response for this Fatah, this conquer of Mecca. Conquering of Mecca, the, the, the politician is going to, to take it as expansion, you know, of his uh, border. The, the other may take it as revenge, you know, of those people, or you name it, you know, whereas I see the great matter there, you know, to clean the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to clean the haram of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of all of these idols that, that they have been practiced there, you know, and you see the outcome, the reward from Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how great. This is the, the last one. وَيَنْصُرَكَ اللَّهُ نَصْرًا عَزِيزًا So the best one, you know, in this life, you know, to uh, support and give victory for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala matters was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was well shown, you know, in all of his practices, you know. Whenever, as Sayyidah Aisha, she, she did say, he's not going to get angry, you know, and to defend himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But whenever you have any matter of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, or has been uh, misbehaved, it's going to be, you, you are going to find the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really angry, you know, and take revenge for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is part of the Nasr. Besides this, you know, uh, those uh, great fightings that he had, in, namely in Ghazwat Badr, Ghazwat Uhud, and you name it, you know, all they were to, to uh, show our Nasr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though the Nasr is going to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you see, the Prophet ﷺ did not save, did not hesitate, you know, to do anything, you know, to give the victory, you know. Even when it's come to tough position, you know, the, the most brave one you know, among the companion is going to be behind or next to him, sallallahu alayhi wa And he's going to be at first, you know, at the, at front, you know, whenever you have such a critical position and all of this, you know, from Nasr, Allah, Nasr, and you have the, the name after it, Mansur, 
okay, is going to be given victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we recite in Quran in two different places, you know, وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ That means you, you, you cannot have the victory except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's side. Yeah, and when, when this was mentioned, you know, this just to take us away, you know, of our materialism, you know, and to have full confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was mentioned when you have 1,000 or 3,000 or 5,000, you know, of the angels, you know, they came, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did say, this is Bushra, this is good news, this is good tidings. But the Nasr, the victor, is given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, we are going to find it quite obvious, you know, in the Prophet's last case. We are going to find it quite obvious in all Prophet's case, you know, as mentioned, you know, by uh, Hiraqal, you know, the Caesar you know, of uh, Roman, you know, uh, as narrated in Bukhari, that uh, uh, all of these Prophets that they are instructed to fight, they may have some defeat sometimes, you know, or some victory, but the end, the outcome is going to be to them, you know. You just imagine it, you know, the Prophet and Ghazwat al Khandaq, the ditch battle, you know, they have 10,000 persons who come to invade Medina al Munawwara. What did the Prophet say when it finished? Al Anangzuhum wa la yaghzuna. See? This is cannot come, you know, from ordinary way, you know, that we are going to invade them nowadays, you know, and they are not going to invade us, you know. This is, cannot, for, in my standard, you know, it's impossible, you know, to come from the ordinary way of analysis you know, or whatever. You know. Was it right or wrong? It was completely right, you know, because it was mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu You read in Syria after each battle, after the, those critical hours that they pass through, you know, they never ever have such a gathering or any any troop, you know, to come and invade Medina and Munawwara after it, you know. We'll have a break, okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi sahbihi ajma'in, Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'alta wa sahla, wa anta taj'alul hazna idha shita sahla. What surah is associated with this and hereafter? Generally speaking, any Meccan surah may be associated with this with different attitude, one of the most, most surah that speaking about the hereafter is Surah Al-Mu'minun, okay? Uh, and that's why it's ended by these four verses. أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْزَعُونَ فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ What are the three stages of life? I don't know about the number of three. I know about the number of seven. You have seven stages, you know? Uh, before this life and in this life, you know, they have been mentioned, you know, in Surah Al-Mu'minun at the beginning of it, you know, in the first page of it, they are mentioned, you know, you may go there and try to understand the translation of Surah Al-Mu'minun. What does 124K mean? I did not understand this. 124K. Okay, the, the number of the Anbiya, they are 124,000, you know. This is the wisdom we have. Again, the companion, they said, some, uh, most scholars, they said 114,000. And once, uh, one opinion that they were 124,000 uh, of companion, you know. What does it mean, this number, for sure? It has a meaning, you know, but I don't, I have no idea about what does it mean. This is the number of the prophets, this is the number of the companion. How do I know what my my strengths, you know, on, are so that I can do? How do, do I know my strengths, you know? I do, so I do what Allah subhanahu wa taala wants me to do. Okay, this is uh, uh, we may be familiar with this. You know, it depends in different factors. You know, in our personality, in our creation, in the type and nature of us, you know, uh, uh, if we are well familiar with it, we may, we may use it, you know, namely, when you have strong memory, you should memorize Quran. When you have s strong motivation, you should uh, have uh, good deeds, you know, and uh, keep yourself, you know, away of 
bad things, you know, when you are not familiar with yourself, you know, you should ask or seek the advice of someone else. When you fail to do so, you know, you should find a sheikh, you know, to tell you about your specialties, you know, and your deficiencies, you know. In Sunnah, when we feel like that we are stranger, you know, among someone else, you know, what we should do, you know. The answer, if you want it from Sunnah, you know, that's the Prophet Sallallahu used to know everyone touchy point or weak point. And we are quite, uh, going to be quite successful when we, we know the touchy point of any, anyone, you know. All of us, we pretend that we are strong, but we have a weak point there, okay? And if you have the ability to penetrate or uh, affect that person, you know, from the touchy point, you know, you are going to be quite successful. It depends in many different factors, you know. It depends upon how strong in, are, you are in your personality, how the other one is strong, and you name it, you know. That's why... In many of those uh, TV programs, you know, or, or otherwise, you know, when they have a meeting, you know, bet between an atheist, you know, and believer, you know, it doesn't depend upon the fact or the truth of it, you know. It depends strongly upon the personality of the two persons. If you have very strong atheist person personality and very weak uh, believer one, you know, in his personality, for sure is going to be much superior, you know, the, the atheist there. The, yani I'm tr what I'm trying to say, we have a lot of factors to work there, you know, and it's not only one factor. And we are going to be the best, you know, when we know the weak point, you know, in our uh, colleague or in the one we, that we speak with. So it depends uh, on, firstly, let's take it, you know, by the personality, okay? We are created of four different items, you know, according to famous you. You have the soil, we have the wind, we have the, the fire, and we have the water, okay? The, the one who are, is created from water, generally speaking, this is my understanding, I may be completely wrong, you know, is going to be affected by the other, like water, you know. When you put the water, you know, in this glass, is going to shape as it, you know, when you put it in different pattern, very uh, thin one is going to be in different shape. And those, these are the watery people, you know, they are going to be affected by the others, you know, uh, significantly. And that's why they are going to be uh, quite guided when you have the time of everyone guided except few who are atheists or whatever, and they are going to be quite misguided when they have the, the bulk of people, they are misguided, you know. Whereas uh, the, uh, the, uh, when you have the soil pattern, you know, this is the, according to what I understand, you know, this is the best or the most beloved one, you know, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be humble and to be down, you know, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the windy or the fire type is the most beloved to the shayateen and jinn, okay? They, they love certain description from humankind, you know? And this is going to be the most beloved one when you have someone, his uh, nature is like fire or like windy, you know, and they are going to be much more beloved to the jinn than the other types. The last question speak about kissing the thumbs, you know? when you have the mention of Sayyidina Muhammad. As uh, Imam Shi'arani did say, this is, you don't have uh, hadith about it, you know, but it has been mentioned that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq did do it, you know, when you have it, you know. So this is a matter of expressing your love to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? Uh, when it comes to the matter of love, this is my thought, you know, you may do, you may practice whatever you want, you know, without having any regulation or limitation to it, but we are quite weak to argue with the other. When the other, they don't wish to do it, you know, you don't have a very strong ev evidence, you know, ag against them, you know. What is awliya? Awliya, this is mentioned in the Quran Kareem. Generally speaking, as Imam Tahawi did say in his aqidah, all of believers, they are loyal or friends to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they are going to, de to have that massive difference between them, you know. The way I look at it, you know, 
when you say in English, you tra they translate it to English as friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Friendship, it means you have two sides, you know. The side come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the side come from yourself. I think we are quite equal, you know, in the side coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most perfect and he give this relation to all of us, you know, as the most perfect one. For the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is going to be the same, okay? Yani in the, as perfect as we have mentioned, you know. But from our side, we have the main difference, okay? That the one who is in remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in all time, is not going to be equal to the one who keep forgetting Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, not remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, unless there's a massive problem or no, no one to help him, you see? So here, what I'm, I'm concerned about, what I have a, a, a main care, you know, about, you know, that we should take care of ourselves, you know, and our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because our wilaya, our friendship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be, depend completely on it, you know. I give you an example of it. A relative of mine, you know, he came to me. They found suspicion of cancer in CT scan, you know, in his son, you know. Which is, يعني, for him, not good news, you know, and he's going to be uh, emotional and not happy, you know. And he came to me as a physician or whatever, you know, I don't know. Okay. This comment come from him, I did not like. He said, what Allah, what Allah wants, you know, I, we are going to obey him. In very ang uh, uh, the anger or whatever you know that, yani what I'm trying to say, why we look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as that superior that we don't have any channel to speak with him or to get contact with him? No, go cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say, Ya Allah, you have done this to my child, I don't like it. Okay, speak openly, you know, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, I don't like this, I like this. Uh, you see, yani, for sure, this is not, uh, don't misunderstand me. I'm not telling you to lose your respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but build your relation, build your conversation, build your talk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. That's why I did not like that attitude from that particular person. He perhaps better than me, you know, on all uh, attitudes. And, but the way, the emotional way he expressed himself, you know, I did not like it, you know, because I would like to see a person has full confidence in Allah. I'm not telling you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to change. Eventually, alhamdulillah, it, uh, it uh, did uh, show up that it was not cancer, you know, in the case of his son, you know. But what I'm trying to say, okay, whenever you have anything you like or do dislike, you know, Okay, go and complain to Allah. Do, go and speak to Allah. Do, uh, go and express yourself to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have this friendship talk, you know. I'm not telling you to get over your, your respect to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, in the way, why did Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, I should ask myself and the other, why did Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, say, wa habl -warid, that we are much closer to him than the awarta, you know, in his chest, you know. Why did Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, say so? To, to make you available there you know and speak with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some of these people you may not of them you know some of these great people you know they have the authority to speak even in loud voice you know and in certain pattern with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is not given to everyone you know we, what we read in Mi'raj that the Prophet sallallahu heard a voice you know speaking loudly and he asked Sayyidina Jibreel who is this you know and he said this is Musa on who he's making his voice, you know, loud? On Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu got surprised. On Allah, he said, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta-A'la did know this to Sayyidina Musa. This is, this person if is well known to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta-A'la. He has the permission to have it, you know. When he's not that well known, you know, he's not, uh, as they, they, they don't have the permission to do it, you know. And that's why Sayyidina, Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he instructed his cousin Sayyidina Ibn Abbas, what did he tell him? Ta'arraf ila Allahi fi rakha. 
يعرفك في الشدة the way تعرف firstly that's mean excessively you should expose yourself you should try to know Allah سبحانه وتعالى it's not only the habitual or easy one you know even something that you don't you feel yourself you you don't like it you know or do you don't have experience or habit with it you know try to make it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the happy days in the easy days then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to recognize you when you have toughness you know or you have something unusual okay but in both sides you know you should have full confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't have any more questions we'll go to the text inshallah We stopped at number 41, Nabiyur Rahma. I would like everyone, even myself, you know, to compare it with number 18, which is Rasul al Rahma. Oh, 41 before. Mansour, we did mention it that he was given the victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I compared between Nasir and Mansour, and I think if you want me, yani, he was supported, you know, completely by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all cases, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't have anything to add to it, you know. Now, if you have Nabi Rahma, Prophet of Mercy, I would like to compare it with number 18, Rasul al Rahma. Don't think for one moment that there is a repetition here, you know, between Nabi and Rasul al-Rahma. This is uh, one related to the message, one re related to the prophethood, you know, which uh, is going to be a completely different task, you know. His task, you know, in de delivering the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be completely different than the prophet matters, you know. The prophet matters. That, this is what I remember now. The Prophet has said that dream is part of the prophethood. He has a woman, he had a woman, you know, always dream badly, you know, about her husband when he travel, you know, that is going to die or have very negative event. Whenever she come and the, she meet with the Prophet is going to give her very nice explanation of this, you know, and uh, her husband is going to be saved, you know. One time she entered the house of the Prophet, the Prophet was, that, was not there, you know, and some of those people, you know, inside the house, they gave her the bad interpretation of the real dream, you know, and this is what happened to her hus husband. What I'm trying to say, the dream is portion of Nubuwa, of prophethood, not portion of message, you know, has nothing to do with your deeds, you know, with your uh, uh, actions or, or whatever, you know, it, it's related to dream. Dream is part of the prophethood, not part of message, you know, as mentioned by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and seeing, uh, being uh, merciful Wasallam, is going to have this nice uh, uh, interpretation you know of her dream you know whenever she comes to him you know when someone else took the task you know he was not as such whereas Rasul al-Rahma I think all of your people you are familiar how in Mi'raj he cut down you know the number of prayer we have many other duties you know they were were they were adjusted, you know, by him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, by this work, you know. So what I'm trying to say, you have certain level of him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you have the mercy comes next to that task which we, we ask from him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So I don't see Nabi Rahma is similar to Rasul Rahma, even though this is the same person, one person called Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But his task, you know, or his uh, manifestation of mercy, you know, when you, you speak about uh, Rasul is completely different than when you speak about Nabi, it's completely different than when you speak about a father, you know, because he was a father of certain daughters, you know, of grandfather, of uh, the people in Ma uh, Medina, and you name it, you know. Yeah. And here you have some special mercy shown by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have some common mercy given by him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have the most common one when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Okay, this is to all creation. Not all, uh, I was about to say humankind. No, it's not humankind. This is all creation, lil alameen. Okay, so here, this remind me of a point you know I would like to mention you know that the Prophet 
In old days, I, I counted 13 of his tasks, you know, perhaps they are much more, okay, about being common and being special, okay? So you have the common way to have everyone get the benefit of it, you know, and you have the special one that some of those specialized people, they are going to get much more of it, you know. So here, uh, example of it, intercession. You have, you have different type of intercessions, you know. One of the intercession is going to be for everyone, you know. And this is called as Shafa'at al-Kubra, the greatest uh, intercession, you know. Whereas you have some special, you know, intercession from his side, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is going to come to certain people, you know, uh, the one of the easy one you know to do to have 10 salawat on him وسلم, every morning and every evening you know you are going to uh, reach his intercession sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man salla alayya ashran hina yusbah ayna ashran hina yumsi adrakathu shafa'ati yawm al qiyamah I think this is special one this is not the common one because the common one is going to be applicable for all creation you know without exception whereas you have some specialties there you know shafa'ati li ahl kabair umati my uh, intercession is going to be for my perhaps we should uh, postpone it till we speak about about shafa'a and sahib shafa'a but what i'm trying to say here that you have something common you have something special and you should use uh, you should get the maximum of him sallallahu alayhi wasallam and uh, you should be specialized in his field sallallahu alayhi wasallam by having unique relation by having unique uh, mercy you have by having unique care you know of his side you know and you name it you know even the prayer even anything you know and this is maybe related to us you know you may have some person you know sound very good and very strong perhaps much better for you than the other one this is my understanding i may be completely wrong the one who sounded very good for you he perhaps he reached the last station you know of islam the one who did not sound as such, he may be in that the first station of Ihsan. In my personal feeling, you know, Ihsan is much higher than Islam. Okay, you got my point? Yani, it's not necessary to have your, yourself, you know, impressed, you know, according to the level of people, you know. That's why I hate this a lot, you know, when you have good speaker, you know, uh, will be asked, you know, at the end, give us bay'ah. We change the whole attitude because we, we feel that you are good sheikh, you know. And, and here, the talk, firstly, is one of the ways, you know, to, to understand that particular person because I don't expect majority of us to look at the heart of that particular speaker. A speaker. Then you have this, this, that, this matter that I'm speaking about. You have at least we have three levels you have level of islam you have level of iman you have level of ihsan and uh, the the one who is deeply expert you know in islam he may be much more oppressive to you you know than the one in iman or the one in ihsan but this is not necessary to and here for sure we don't know the levels of the prophet وسلم, but nabi rahma I, the way i understand it that it came from his prophethood not from his messenger you know and the mercy was, was quite obvious you know in on him sallallahu alaihi wasallam in many aspects you know in many uh, uh, branches that we understand from his life you know in different pattern then you have nabi tawbah I don't remember here in this text that it was mentioned, this for repentance, you know, that was mentioned, you know, in message, you know, perhaps it, I don't know, I have no idea, it may contradict with some portion, you know, of message, you know, because the message, I, in my understanding, at least, you know, to build up, build the obligation, to build up the prohibition, then the other commands or the other, uh, negative commands that we have or negative instruction okay and this repentance is going to come when you have a person you know sinful person or uh, deficient person you know and is going to have it you know as part of his practice in this life and the prophet as a prophet is going to take care you know of this repentance you know and perhaps uh, this is mentioned i think in 
authentic hadith and perhaps it's taken from the word when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Quran لَقَدْ تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ okay to have the tawbah repentance on muhajirin and the ansar who are uh, at the greatest top level you know in our imagination you know it came through the prophet sallallahu alaihi and the, the holy name prophet not the holy name messenger you know that's why in quran you have the holy name messenger was men mentioned in some areas but most of it you know it was by the name of prophet you may connect both of them you know to the task given to him sallallahu alaihi as i said yesterday he has different level different uh, uh, responsibility, you know, and is going to be called, you know, according to his level, you know, or his responsibility. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So here, prophet of repentance. In my view, when when I want to repent to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, I should mention the name of the prophet. I should mention his prophethood, you know, and try to seek the repentance from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala through the same thing, you know, to be done. Then. He mentioned here, Harisun Alaikum. This is not single no name, it contains two uh, words, you know, in English. Even in Arabic, it contains two words, you know. And this is Heros to start with Heros. Not good character, you know, in the humankind. Heros, when you are, uh, you care a lot, you know, about your money. You care a lot, you know, about your uh, life asset or what, whatever of that regard. This is not uh, well recognized and not uh, praised, you know, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas here you see those characters that may be felt that they are n not good, you know, from our side, you see the great person, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how in his case they were shifted to another area which is good area okay you have heros harisun alaykum that the prophet said care a lot you know about us you know this is great character to have it you know uh, whereas to start when you say heros that's why harisun only period you know was not mentioned as name of him sallallahu alaihi because this may be felt you know by someone that it's not good thing to have, okay? You have Shahih, Shahih, the massive stingy person, you know. Shuhu fi din, it's highly recommended, you okay? If someone ha feels it inside himself, and this is called by some shuyukh, the way to shift your bad characters to good matter, okay? Someone has envy, you know, he cannot take it away. The Prophet ﷺ did say, لا حسد إلا في سنتين رجل أتى الله علما فأتى الله الحكمة فهو يقضي بها أنا الليل وأنا النهار ورجل أتى الله مالا فهو ينفق أنا الليل وأنا النهار. The scholars they said here even though it was mentioned by the form of envy but it means ghibta ghibta what the difference between ghibta and envy ghibta that's mean we, when you have the desire to have similar thing that uh, uh, that the other person have it you know envy when you have the hope that this is going to be taken away from that particular person you know and why it was by the form of Hasad, not by the form of ghibta, you know, in that particular hadith, the Prophet ﷺ was incapable of saying la ghibtata. No, he was, he has the, in my opinion, he has the full capacity to say la ghibtata, but he said the hasada to have those people that have this bad habit, bad inner habit, you know, to uh, shift it, you know, to such a thing, you know, in the form of ghibta, not in the form of hasad, okay? Yani yeah, here, uh, I look at it very rich field, you know, for us, you know, to to change some of our bad characters, you know, to, to good matter, you know, uh, it's going to be accepted and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be pleased with us, you know, about them, you know. Here, the, the meaning, harisun uh, alaykum, you see how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa start the negotiation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for certain points, you know, before our presence, you know, during our presence. Some may ask, how come during other, our presence, you know, because we have this narrated in Bazaar by Sayyidina Abdullah Mas'ud that the Prophet sallallahu did say, Hayati khayr lukum wa mamati khayr lukum. 
حياتي خير لكم تحدثون ويحدث الله لكم وما ماتي خير لكم تعرض علي أعمالكم فما وجدت من خير حمدت الله وما وجدت من شر استغفرت لكم That's mean he's still in his task you know in his involvement all of our deeds they are exposed to him صلى الله عليه وسلم whatever is good deeds you know is going to thank Allah thanking Allah سبحانه at this point at this point you know for me I, I hope that my deed is going to multiply because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said شكرتم لأزيدنكم you are going to have some adding point you know from his side صلى الله عليه وسلم وما وجدت من خير anything which is bad you know or wrong to be practiced you know the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is going to make istighfar for us you know so here he involved himself you know in his life to cut down many of those duties, you know, on us, you know, he involved himself, you know, during his barzakh state, you know, to make this easy for us, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make istighfar, then he's going to have the hard work, you know, even in the akhirah for the intercession, you know, and the other task that I have told you about, some of them, you know, not all of them. Okay, so here, harisun alaykum, I would like from my side and from everyone. This is not the last verse, the verse before the last one, you know, in Surah At-Tawbah, speaking about the Prophet. I would like from my side and anyone who shared the same idea, whenever you hear hadith from the Prophet وسلم, to try to match all of this description mentioned there, you know. I'm sorry to tell you, you know, because the Prophet وسلم, has been accused, you know, by some people. That some they said, this is your cousin, the other one they may, say did not know that the third one did may you, you see you have many of those bad matters you know and all of them in my view they, they contradict with the description given you know in this particular verse you know that's why i would like in each verse you know, in each uh, hadith or in each statement come from the prophet وسلم, to remind myself you know about the description given by who by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is just to make those who are unaware you know about certain points of him وسلم, to make them aware and this is, is going to build our knowledge you know in him وسلم, which is going to build our confidence or trust in him and is going to build our love you know in him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam معلوم صلى الله عليه وسلم يعني well known this is was originally you know he uh, uh, the description given by عبد الله بن رواحة لو, لو لم تكن فيه آيات مبينة لكان منظره ينبيك بالخبر if the Prophet ﷺ did not have the miracles or the extraordinaries or the ayat, just looking at him is going to make you know and understand him very well, you know. Okay? This is, it comes, you know, by his simple manifestation, then he used to encourage everyone, you know, to know much more about him, you know. He has nine, he had nine houses, you know. He encouraged all of his wives, you know, to speak up, you know, about anything, you know, happened in this house. This is, you may start it, you know, by the Quran. The Quran spoke up about certain problems in the house of the Prophet وسلم, in Surah Al-Tahreem. Then, I, I did not remember anything, you know, or any event in the life of the Prophet وسلم, which ha has any cover there, you know, or he be hidden or whatever, you know. One time, Sayyidina Abu Salama, the wife of the Prophet وسلم, was asked to describe the Prophet وسلم. She said, كَانَ سِرُّهُ عَلَى نِيَّتُهُ سَوَى He was from the inner and the outer the same. Then she was afraid that she uncovered some secret, you know, and she went to the Prophet ﷺ telling him, is it okay? And he gave her the permission to say so. You know, what I'm trying to say, even his mat hidden matter, even his inner, even whatever you want to speak about, you know, that the Prophet ﷺ gave the permission to everyone around him to speak up about it, you know. Okay, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make 
Some people, they are not prophets, you know, look from outside in the same shape like him, sallallahu alayhi wa Not exactly the same, but they are going to share some manifestation with him, sallallahu alayhi wa This is as reminder, you know, of everyone. That's why Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq did remember him when he did see Sayyidina Al-Hassan, you know, after a few nights, you know, of the days of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa when he did see Hassan, Sayyidina Al-Hassan, the grandson, he remembered the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa When... Uh, a rumor was, was given you know, that uh, the Prophet ﷺ was defeated in Khaybar, you know, and he was captured, you know. Sayyidina Abbas felt bad, you know, bad, really bad about it, you know. And he used to put one of his son, you know, called Qusam, you know, on his chest and on his uh, belly, you know, while he, he, he doesn't have the ability to, to stand or to, to sit, you know. He was in recumbent position, you know, he's going to put that child you know, on him or I don't know how old was he you know because he you look li similar to the prophet khusam one of those people you know who resemble the prophet وسلم, and he yani, as a reminder you know as uh, of way of expressing his love you know and to take away those hated you know news that reach him you know he used to to have Sayyidina Qusam al-Abbas and so on. so here when when you when you speak about ma'loom okay this may sound for some of us you know as quite obvious you know but here the Prophet sallallahu make himself you know involved in many matters you know of them you know and if even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created some position, some person, you know, to tell you about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To, to, to this extent, now we are in U.S., you know, after more than 1400 years, you may know about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam much more than you know about yourself. I know about certain person, they know about his shape, they know about his family, they know about his, their, their his relatives, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and uh, all of these details, you know, much more than themselves, you know. And this is come from the holy name, Ma'loom, from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we are quite rich and quite guided and quite knowledgeable, you know, in this matter, you know, because to know something, you know, about such a great personality, you know, like the Prophet Sallallahu Don't think it's easy, you know. Many people, they have been disguised, disguided when they said about Sayyidina, the great Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam, they said he is a god, you know. This is wrong information, you know, given to them about Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam. Okay, well, you see, whereas about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're going to get the right and the accurate information, you know, given, you know, by different way. Move to another one, Shahir, Shuhra. This is fam famous, yani, or uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him famous, you know, among his people and among ourselves, you know. And this is to tell us, you know, in indirect way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave any excuse for anyone not to believe in him sallallahu alayhi wa yani when you look at it you know physically as one person he is sent to all humankind you know you, you it sound for you as impossible you know, to happen you know but when you have it come to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the fame that he uh, was given to him you know from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is going to explain very well how he was as such you know even you have in the stories you know and there's some uh, portions you know, of sirah that some stranger they may come to get more knowledge you know about him you know uh, uh, one of those rabbis you know he said that any description from the prophet وسلم, i did know it you know and experienced it i tested it you know except two you know i did not test it, them you know he came to test them you know and the prophet وسلم, halim the name of this person was zaid ibn sa'na if you go back and check you know you know the complete story of his and how he became muslim you know because he did not know about all facts you know of the prophet وسلم. sayyidina salman al farisi was given you know by some of those highly educated people you know he was given three signals you know or three descriptions you know about him sallallahu alayhi wasallam and when he experienced this uh, or tested this you know three description of his sallallahu alayhi wasallam he became a muslim okay 
sometimes the, some people they may use it for the tricky point this is my feeling you know when they told the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam jibril is very tough angel you know if the one come to you is different than jibril who are going to believe you i look at it as tricky way you know of misguiding someone else not the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam why because they know they are quite sure that all prophets you know without exception the one who was in charge you know, of revelation for them you know was sayyidna jibril okay they 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 have this tricky question you know to make the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam not the prophet is not going to change you know to make someone that they expected you know to change his statement you know, about it you know and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as you may know not only for these people you know for anyone he did not change any statement that he brought okay and he was quite truthful and quite next to his word you know in all of these matters and aspects and this is when you have someone is as famous as him sallallahu alaihi wasallam it may be feel that easy you know but it's going to become more complicated and more difficult you know and we see how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did pass all of those matters you know yeah i'll give you give you example you know, which amazed me a lot you have some fake prophets some of them they did show up you know during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of them was called tulaiha and this fake prophet he said that i have an angel called zunnun when they came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you have a politician you know or someone else you know there say this is liar this is a lie they, he has spoken about some what did he say sallallahu alaihi he did say laqad zakara malakan azim ash-sha'n he mentioned you know in his word an angel who is quite great when you know among the angels okay so here what i'm trying to say his task sallallahu alaihi being famous you know did not change any of the reality or the facts you know we are quite rich you know to get s- such facts you know about allah about the religion about the relation about him sallallahu alaihi wasallam from him sallallahu alaihi wasallam when someone is f- quite famous besides him sallallahu alaihi wasallam he may adjust some of those comment or whatever you no know, which never happened you know, especially in the risala side you know from him sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay when it comes to some some other issues he's not going to lie sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's impossible for him but he may try to hide something you know uh, when a bedouin person came to him he said ya rasulullah i say allah ma saluka al jannah wa azuka an nar i seek to go to the heaven you know and i seek sh- shelter from you not to go to hell fire i don't understand dandana okay this is some type of voice you know given la la fahmu dandanataka wa la dandanata muaz what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say hawlaha nudandin he did not mention him about the specific you know wording that he used with muaz ibn jabal okay and this is part of the prophetic tradition okay to have different levels you know and speaking with people you don't have one level okay and this is for the famous one is going to be much more difficult than the usual person to have different level to have them truthful all of them you know to have no lie you know in all of those talks you know this is it may be easy to speak up you know about them you know but it's going to be quite difficult to have it in practice then you have the holy name shahid this is mentioned in the quran in two different places inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashshiran wa nadira this is going to be the observer you know on us the witness on us okay and this is according to say now al khattab what make him have complete denial you know, of the death of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said i felt when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said shahid that there is going to be the very last one you know to die you know in our nation okay uh, whereas as we may know nowadays 
as I said, that particular hadith, we are going to have massive ox exposure of our deeds to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and is going to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever he, we, he have good deeds, you know, and is going to make istighfar for us whenever we have bad deeds, you know, in that regard. And what I'm trying to say, you see that uh, even after his movement, you know, toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we still under his control, under his supervision, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ala sahbihi ajma'in. We'll try to answer some questions, we have plenty of them, we know, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, you know, to have the convenient answer to such a question, you know, if there's any mistake, you know, this come from my side and from the shaitan side. First question is very long one, you know, about the, I think about the human relation, you know, this is what I understand. Could you please explain the differences, you know? Okay. All of us, you know, we have a nature, you know, of relating ourselves to different people, you know, namely to our parents, to our spouse, to our children or whatever. What the main difference between the believer and non-believer, since this is part of the nature and it's going to be practiced by all of us, you know, the, 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 the main difference, the, this is what I think, you know, the, the believer, his relation with the other is going to come through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regulated him toward his parents, you know, when they are believer or non-believer, regulated himself to do toward his spouse and whatever, you know. And by this, even though it may sound natural, you know, for some people, for me it's quite great when you know why because when someone get married you know or uh, has this consideration for the money when the money is go gone you know they may have divorce you know well, uh, about beauty they may have divorce or whatever you know of those items you know of life okay whereas when it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I hope this is going to have long lasting, you know, relation, you know. So here, if I fully understand this question, you know, the difference, you know, between what I mentioned yesterday and today may, may be applicable to such a thing, you know. Uh, it, it, we have uh, an, another important point that everyone should hold his responsibility. Don't look to the other responsibility that my friend or my spouse or my dad should have those duties, you know, to be done. Don't care about them, you know. Just do them through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they did not give you the convenient response, you know, to your deeds, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you the convenience of it, of it you know. Here, this is a problem back in Syria. I don't know if it's a problem here, you know. You have someone, you know, who is old or he needs some care or whatever, you know, and he's going to give preference, you know, in his inheritance to one child over the other. This creates a lot of problem. And this has been initially mentioned by Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shut the whole door, you know. He said, you don't know who is going to be much more beneficial to you. Okay, what I'm trying to say, the way I understand it, every, let every one of us, you know, have his duty. Don't care about the other's duty because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best one, you know, to know uh, the, the other's duty, you know, and it's going, to, it's going to respond to you if you are in need in this life. If it did not happen in this life, it's going to be in the hereafter, I think, because we believe in the hereafter. Okay. Speaking this question, speaking about fitna and how to raise up our children, you know, in this environment, you know. Uh, perhaps I'm not the best one, you know, to answer this question, you know, because I, uh, I'm not a social worker. 
Secondly, uh, in my belief, you know, the environment play a significant role, and I think it should be accepted by everyone, you know. And uh, the environment, it has significant role to play there, you know. Even the one, if you are familiar with, you know, in the Hadith, the one who killed 100 person, you know, the first so signal of his repentance to move from his environment to different environment, you know, to have some different people, you know, surrounding him. What is the some practical means to increase our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I believe that you have a lot of them, you know. Usually I concentrate on two of them, you know. Firstly, to recite Quran. If we are not Arabic speaker, don't feel that bad, you know, about it. Even the Arabic speaker, they don't have this good relation with the Quran, okay? Uh, my expectation, all of your people, Arabic or non-Arabic, you are going to have beyond your expectation, yani what I'm trying to say, the expectation is going to be much lower than the reality of it, you know. When you try, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to help you. Then, you have in this time, you know, it came to my attention, perhaps you have much more experience than me, you know, the availability of the Quran. You have some computer uh, uh, programs, you know. You may have the Quran according to any tafsir you want, translated to English, any way of pronunciation by the famous reciters, you know, and what's the meaning of that particular word, and you name it. You know. This availability of the Quran was not there, you know, in the past. It's just need, you know, to think about it, that I am, as Muslim, I am deficient. I need Quran, okay? When you feel this deficiency inside yourself, I think you are going to correct it, you know, by then. The second point that I highlight a lot, first is recite the Quran, second point is to have night prayer, okay? These are the two main matters that I look at them, you know, don't feel for one moment that these are the only two ways, you know, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have many ways, you know, of getting close, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but these are my, uh, the, the, the ways or, or the channels that I fully understand. What did the Prophet Muhammad do before sleep? Okay, I may not a able to give you the complete thing, you know, but this is you may have it in uh, the book called at targhib at Tarheeb about the night azkar of him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or you may have it by the azkar written by Imam Nawawi. I assume the second book, you know, is translated to English. I'm not aware about the f first book, you know, the azkar. Okay, again, what did he do? You know, you have a lot of Quranic chapters. They were recited by him, the most long one, you have Surah Al-Isra and Surah Al-Zumar recited by him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You have Al-Musabbihat, which are six, you know, they, every night the Prophet Sallallahu used to recite them. He have the Al-Sab'a Al-Munjiyat, this collective, you know, by some scholars, you know, but each one, it has a, 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 some hadith, you know, about it, you know. Then you have the Azkar, you know, of Sabah, and uh, Azkar before going to sleep by him, Sallallahu Alaihi did he recommend us to do yes and no what do I mean by yes and no yes because we are entitled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to follow his steps why did I say no because the Prophet out of his mercy to his nation you know he used to hide some of these matters, you know, because as I said yesterday, the nafila, he don't, don't want, uh, give a heavy burden, you know, for his followers, you know, and that's why many of those nafila matters, you know, is not going to have it in public, as I said before. When Islam started, and here we have three questions about Islam. I feel from these three questions, you know, the controversy that we have, even we have some scholars back in Syria, they have the same idea. I have opposite idea of this, you know. The idea is that they said Islam 
all everyone is Muslim. The Christian, they are Muslim. The the Jewish, they are Muslim, and you name it. The the real one, you know. We are not speaking about the fake one. Okay, I don't think so. Why you don't think so? Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did say, "Who is the Muslimin? Muslimin?" This is who the pronoun may be related to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, may be related to Sayyidina Ibrahim. In both cases, you know what I'm trying to say. This is special for us. This is not every. When you have the prophets, they were described as Muslim. I fully believe in it, you know, because the prophets they were Muslim. You know, they used to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the maneuver and the way the Muslim they worship nowadays. You know, for the followers it was mentioned two or three times in the Quran that they were Muslim you know I think this is the linguistic meaning of Islam not the uh, uh, terminology of Islam okay what I'm trying to say this is not the real religion this is to f have full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is uh, the meaning of Islam this is the fundamental uh, meaning of Islam to have full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what I'm trying to say the prophets they have been described as Muslim in many verses in the Quran I haven't counted them you know you have the non prophets you know they mention either in two or three places of the Quran the way I understand for for prophet I have no problem you know because they were worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to Islam instruction in their time you know but the others I I consider them, you know, as have the full submission. Why? Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed them in the Quran, the real one, you know, he said the Christian, he said the Jews, he said this, he said that, you know. He did not call them Muslim, you know. I feel this is a special for us, you know, special name given to us. This is, tells you about the specialty. This is the last, very last version on in Surah Al-Hajj, okay? And it's going to tell you about the specialty of it. This is my opinion. And I, I understand that some others, they may have different opinion about it, you know. I have a little of concern about it. If all, all of us Muslim and we are going to go to heaven, what's the point of become Muslim? No point there. Okay, and yani it changed religion is one of the most difficult decision to be taken in this life, you know. When you ease it up that easy on them, you know, you are Muslims and you are going to go to heaven, you know. What's the point of being Muslim? I don't see any point for it, you know. If someone has any point, please uh, uh, clarify it for me. Here he speak about dreams, you know, someone is, uh, I see in the dream and they are not very close. If this person, you know, that we did see, not specified here, not highly recommended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't feel sorry about it, you know. This is good, good news from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, you are not that close to him, you know. If he's close to Allah, namely Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu or some righteous people, you know, you should have main concern, you should try to work hard to get closer to him and you try to beg and beg, make supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get, to get closer to that person. Can you describe the Prophet diet? Yani it sounds as if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi have everything available yani, and it's going to choose choice, you know. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala did say in Quran, have, haven't you read this verse in the Quran? Okay, hunger, okay. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever he has some of this type of food, he's going to give preference to, for someone else, you know. Even himself is not going to eat. Yani, to have a diet, you know, this is for the one who has availability of everything, which I believe that Prophet did have the availability of all kinds, you know, but he used to give preference for someone else, okay? The second point, you know, uh, for the one who cons consider this life is everything, you know, for him, okay? And when he is going to die, that means the game is over. This is not, was not the attitude of the Prophet because he did give example, you know, of this life as like a person, traveler, you know, he 
rested, you know, under a, the shadow of a tree for an hour or so, and then he left it, you know. This is his example with this dunya, you know, and we should have the same example. That's why I'm too hesitant to answer this question. Anyway, the di uh, this, the prophet, I'm sorry, the prophet did mention the diet. If you are body only, one third of your stomach, regardless, okay? If you are soul, few bites and you are in the middle there is a famous doctor here in the US you know I think he was in Florida called Ahmad Al Qadi he made uh, this experiment on the mice you see all animals with exception of humankind you know you have full stomach for him because it's going to stop eating you know at that particular point whereas humankind is going to keep eating you know so he estimated the full stomach for the all mice and put some group you know on full stomach the other half stomach the third when uh, on one third and the fourth and yani different patterns you know and he found out from that experiment that th those who were put you know on one third they have the longest life okay if you are body alone one third is the best thing you know for your body if you are body and soul the soul for the soul few bites is enough you know and you are stuck in the middle i'm sorry to tell you you know i'm start i start by myself you know i don't follow those instructions so this was the diet mentioned by the prophet not about the types you know, of food you know ab about the amount of food that make us you know uh, having these health problems you know, nowadays you know would he uh, make his bread i have no idea he did not fill his stomach you know from barley bread bread for two consecutive days how often did he eat meat not that often you know because it was not available for him you know you have as the Sayyida Aisha mentioned that you are going to have the crescent then the crescent then the crescent you know and none of fire type you know is going to be set up you know in any of the house of the Prophet I'm sorry you see we are of different level you know I was discussing this you know before coming here to US you know some person he said because Aisha did not know how to cook as if everything available and say that Aisha was stupid one you know did not know how to cook you know how, what level is this you know such a level you know I think you know this is my thought you know we don't deserve to speak about these people what we should memorize after Quran if you are scholar, you know, and you have strong memory, you have some poem done, you know, in all uh, branches of knowledge, you know. In Sira, you have Alfiyat al-Iraqi. In Mustalah al-Hadith, you have Alfiyat al-Iraqi or Alfiyat al-Suyuti. In uh, Arabic language, you have Alfiyat ibn Malik, and you name it. If you are not that uh, important, you know, in knowledge-wise, you know, try to memorize some of the ahadith namely start by Arba'in al nawawiyah because you are going to use this ahadith in many occasions you know, of your life this was they were highly selected by imam al nawawi is it possible to eat the meat sold here in us i'm going to have old answer you know because when i used to live in us you know you have each slaughtery has a house has its own way you know of slaughtering the meat you know some of them may meet the islamic criterion the other not okay so i cannot give common or general answer about this question you know okay uh, if you are interested in this point you know go to the slaughtering house and do uh, see or observe how they do it you know and if it does it fit you know the Islamic way what are the five names you know that give uh, here he said given by Allah to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
I'm sorry, I did not prepare myself for it very well. I know that Sayyidina Jubair ibn Mut'im, he did say, Inna li inda rabbi khamsata asma wa asma. Ana Muhammad wa ana Ahmad wa ana al-Muqaffi wa ana al-Hashir wa ana al-Aqib. Then you have some others name, you know, mentioned in Sahih Muslim or elsewhere, you know. If you don't have any other questions, we'll carry on, inshallah. We mentioned about Sayyidina Shahid and we mentioned that this is mentioned in different areas of the Quran. The other uh, uh, name is Shahid. This is may sound similar to Shahid. In Arabic language, it's more excessive, you know, than the Shahid. What's the point of mentioning the excessive and the ordinary one, you know? I think because for the one who look for different category of people he is going to have should put in mind that the Prophet is much more excessive in this matter for the one who has only one person to look at you know you should make sure that the Prophet is the shahid on him you know and this is subhanallah it gain a lot of controversy among people and some may call the other kafir and whatever you know it has been in my view you know it has been abused you know to prove certain points just to prove that i'm knowledgeable okay we have the love of the prophet when you love the prophet even if you speak whatever you speak is going to be accepted it may be right or wrong okay but we are going to be accepted because out of love you have to be spoken you know about him when you have someone spoke you know wrongly about him you know and not you don't feel that strong love coming there i have some problem but i'm going to put my head down you know and admire that person you know because still you know the love mattered you know i'm not the the good one you know to understand the way they love the prophet to be honest with you out of many experience you know you are going to find that those common people or ammi or those who are not educated many of them they love the prophet a lot much more than the ordinary man or the highly educated man and here i feel among our muslim nowadays the mismatch between love and knowledge I'm sorry to say this, you know, I hate to say this, you know, but this is, has been quite obvious for me. You have mismatch between knowledge, you know, and love. That's why whenever I go to any Islamic school or whatever, I ask them, do you have in your syllabus, you know, any, any program, you know, about Sira or Shama'il? Most of them, they'll say no. I'll tell them, please put it there, you know, because I think it's too important to be put there, you know. When you have your knowledge, you know, this knowledge, knowledge make it servant to the to your love of the prophet i have the, some bad experience with some people you know, they used to love the prophet a lot when they start learning you know their love is going to diminish gradually okay the other factor which is really bad when you get in touch of him وسلم, for frequent time you are going to lose your attention. Again, this is really bad, you know. I still remember, you know, the first ever hair, blessed hair from him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I did see was by a person in UK, he passed away, Rahimallah Ta'ala. He got it 22 years before that event. As if he got it now. This is what I love. This is what I like. As if he got this blessed hair now, you know, in his concern and in his uh, uh, interest and you name it, you know, he impressed me a lot, you know, as if he got it now, you know. He got it 22 years ago. So, please, 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 try to get over these problems. I consider them as problems. When you have knowledge, you are going to decrease your life 
which is not necessary, you know, but this is the case that I see, observe in many people, you know, and when you are in touch with some of those physical part, portions, you know, of him, sallallahu alayhi wa again, you are going to lose your interest, you know, or your eagerness, you know, or your yearning, you know, or whatever of that regard. Please try to get over these problems. Uh, we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are not companion, you know, because the companion, you know, if they are going to get bored, you know, of it, they, you, you, you have like Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, he joined him, you know, before revelation, after revelation, got married to his daughter, and then when he passed away, Allah he was the one who did take care, you know, of him, Sallallahu Alaihi washing the body and wrapping him and putting him in his grave, be Abi and Ummi, and uh, all of these matters, for me, did not change the love of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. And I look forward to have it inside myself, I look forward to have for others. I'm going to speak about myself, I'm not going to speak about the others. I reach almost 20 years, I don't know anything about Quran, about Fuqah, about anything except Sirah. And I used to enjoy my time a lot, you know. When I returned back to Syria, you know, 20 years ago, I felt inside myself, I would like to read Sira in the same way and the same pattern. I did read Sira, you know, a book of Sira. But to be honest with you, it was not, it was not like the innocence or the greatness that I used to have it, you know, when I, when I was a child. Why? Because I became an adult, you know, I'm going to have some reason, some logical answer to some of those matters, you know, which they don't fit, you know, the Prophet ﷺ by any way, okay? And that's why, yani what I'm trying to say, all of your people try to learn, teach your children, you know, the seerah of the Prophet. Try to teach your children, you know, the, the shema'il of the Prophet ﷺ. They are going to be much more pure and much more innocent than your people. Then you have Mashhud, and this is for the one who has any doubt, for sure the Prophet ﷺ is going to be observed and watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the others, you know. Why observed by Allah? This is just to make sure for everyone, you know, of us, you know, that all of these matters, even though we greatly, you know, thank the Prophet ﷺ for them, it was under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's provision. We don't have anything, you know, which we escaped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or we have some turn way or some way, you know, of uh, being away of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, fr from, our, from our side, we, he should be mashhud, you know, because we should upgrade ourselves, you know, we should improve ourselves, you know, and the best way to observe the Prophet Since we, we miss that chance, you know, to meet with him, you know, in this life, you should try to learn, you know, about his prophetic tradition, you know, his prophetic uh, sta uh, the statements, you know, or, uh, or life, or sira, or whatever, you know, and this is what Allah subhanahu wa said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٍ حَسَنٍ And the Prophet ﷺ did highlight two main pillars, you know, in our Islam that you should observe him. صَلُّوا كَمَا رَأَيْتُمُونِ أُصَلِّ Pray the way you have observed me, you know, or seeing me, you know, praying. خُذُوا uh, عَنِّي مَنَاسِكَكُمْ Take the, uh, the way of performing your hajj from my side, okay? Besides the other thing. Then we, we move to the next one, number 49. Sayyiduna Bashir. He brought us, you know, the good tiding. This is beyond our expectation, okay? And we have those great companions on the Jeon, the Prophet out of their love or other reason, you know? They were given the, the good tiding, you know, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, beyond their expectation, yeah, to have those people of Badr who, by chance, you know, they just joined the Prophet They were addressed, do whatever you want to do, you know, I'm going to forgive you. This is the address given from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of those good news, good tidings, they come to us through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even the dreams. 
Someone may feel that this dream is you know, special for me, but the Prophet ﷺ who confirmed this, this dream for you. Why? Because he said, Okay, it's going to be seen you know, by the same person, or someone is going to tell him that I did dream you know, or did see you, you know, in this part. So here, all of these bashair, all of these good news, they came to us you know, from him, وسلم, and specifically he mentioned this. وسلم, I'm sorry, you know, I, I'm getting old. I try to remember this hadith and keep forgetting it. أنا خطيبهم إذا وفد وأنا مبشرهم إذا أيسوا وأنا I, I forgot the own Biyadi liwa alhamd yawma izin or whatever, you know. That's mean he is go going to be the speaker among us, you know, and he's going to be the the one to go give us, you know, the good news when we are despaired, you know, of ourselves. Then you have Mubashir, okay? This is another way of having it in excessive way, and this is mentioned in the Holy Quran in Arsalnaka Shahidan wa Mubashiran wa Nadira. Okay, that's why it was mentioned in particular. Firstly, because this is different form of Bishara. I'm sorry, I don't know, but I, I believe that there's a main difference, you know, between Bashir and Mubashir, that even though both of them, they are in the excessive form that expressed here. Then you have the holy name Nadir, again mentioned in the Holy Quran, and the Prophet ﷺ did hold, you know, both of tasks you know to warn us about something to make us aware of something you know and to give us good news you know about this this may sound contradict with each other some of the audience they may love the kindness you know a nice matter you know and they ran away from any tough or uh, majestic, you know, uh, statement or behavior, you know. On the other hand, you have the one who is tough, you know, quite tough and is going to run away from anything which is kind, you know, or nice, you know. And here you have the balanced way, you know, given by him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to have the both things, you know. Even his ministers, he had two ministers of the earth and two ministers in the heaven, you know. The, uh, both of them, you know, the ministers on the earth and the ministers of the heaven one of them was majestic and the other one was too kind you know Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar and from the heaven you have Jibreel and Mikail okay and uh, as uh, mentioned in Sunan al-Tirmidhi they are the four ministers of him and we live very nice life why because we have the balanced way come from him we may be deviated you know we may be doing something wrong you know but this is not part of his tradition no his tradition is the midline that we should look forward to have it you know and this is reminded me you know you have Riyadh Salihin they have different translation to it you know of, uh, of it you know to English language you know and uh, uh, I still remember that in Riyadh Salihin you have very lo long chapter you know, speaking about the good news and good tidings and you have a, a very long chapter again to speak you know about the warning sign you know uh, what benefit will get from them you know when you feel yourself deviated to one side, try to correct yourself, you know, by the other side. This is, may happen in the Quranic verses, you know, because even the Quranic verses, you have some of them, they are very easy and relaxing, and the, some of them, they are tough, you know, and is going to have massive warning to you, and uh, and uh, that's what Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq did mention to Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab. He said, did not you see that in the Holy Quran, you have uh, the tough verse next to the good uh, good verse or good tiding verse you know and this all for your sake to make you as having the two meanings you know inside yourself you know in your practice in your life in your relation with the other in all aspects you should have it as as such you know that's why this is one of the explanation that's why you have in the holy names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have the tough and the nice one in the holy names of the prophet you have the tough and the nice one in the uh, attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are going to find 
as such, you know, in the way he used to live, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are going to find both of both aspects, you know, but I'm going to say that the mercy is going to be much more dominant than the other side, but there is another side, you know. Nowadays, the way I look at people, most of them, they try to look that they are kind and nice some of them you know they are going to be much worse than the wolves you know from inside you know even though they are too kind you know too soft in their speaking you know and this is has been mentioned by him sallallahu alaihi wasallam through allah to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who are going to do so and so i'm going to have fitna on them that they are going to have the hearts of wolves with the skin of the sheep okay and i observe it you know i observe it among the people you know I, what i care about you know for yourself and for me don't be as such okay be yourself when, whenever it needs toughness be tough whenever it needs mercy be merciful whenever it needs kindness be kind and you name it okay and the best guidance you are going to get you know for such a thing you know to go back to the holy quran and to go back to the prophetic tradition you know and here even among the name you have bashir you have nadir okay and th this to to tell you how in very well balanced way the prophet sallallahu did show up you know both aspects that uh, we have mentioned you know. and then you have munzir okay uh, we have in Arabic, you know, some verbs, you know, derived from the three letters, you know. Okay. And this is Nazir, it comes from the three letters, Nazara. Okay. And you have some come from the four letters, you know, in f formula. You have what we call in Arabic, Sulasi and Rubai, about the verb, Munzir. It comes from the formula of four, okay, and it's going to, uh, I'm not telling you that this form doesn't mean by it excessive, but here when you have extra letter, whenever you have extra letter in Arabic language, that means you have some more excessive work you know or excessive meaning you have it you know and that's why you have the two forms you know the nadir and munzir perhaps some people they ne need only three they will be nadir <laughs> for them you know some they need munzir and they are going to have four some they may not may not get benefit from three or four you know they need perhaps million you know the prophet is not going to change his attitude or his characters you know for these people then speak about the illumination or the light of the Prophet Sayyiduna Nur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, yani by this, uh, this was physical and spiritual. You have it first in the Holy Quran. I should mention here, you know, that the first time I got a word of it by my Shaykh Shaykh Muhammad Sukkar rahimahullah ta'ala, when someone recited, قَدْ جَاءُكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ وَكِتَابٌ مُبِينٌ He said the Noor is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, okay? Yani here, according to many interpreters, you know, we are going to find that the illumination or the light is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yani what I'm trying to say, why did I mention the, the, the name or whatever? Just to tell you that in our all time, you know, rahiman Allah ta'ala, okay, we used to have it as an easy and something usual, you know, to happen. You know. Nowadays, you have a long t discussion about it, wrong argument, this one is kafir, the other one is not believer you see for this matter you, know, you see it was too easy you know in the old days you know and nowadays it became too difficult you know, and too controversial for some people you know, not for me inshallah okay so here as i said you know you have it physical and you have spiritual the physical the pro uh, sayyidina anas ibn malik did tell you about it when he said i observed medina al munawwar when the prophet sallallahu entered and all all of it you know became illuminated and I observed that in Medina, when the Prophet passed away, and all of it was dark. 
okay and uh, 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 if this is the case with the physical explanation is going to be much more in the spiritual one why because in my understanding and in everyone else understanding the spiritual is going to be magnified and much greater than the physical one we are uh, we are limited in our uh, physical and spiritual activities you know but we are much more limited you know in the physical one and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this is common for everyone not uh, all of us you know without exception we have something unseen for us okay and that's why the prophet did say in one hadith i see the thing that unseen by your people i hear something that unheard you know by your people okay and this is should be our belief and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did praise you know at the beginning of the quran alladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb okay yani here they believe in the unseen some of the great scholars they said even if you see the prophet وسلم, put on your mind that you did see something you did not see something even for the prophet وسلم, when he, you see him completely in the complete shape you know don't believe that you have seen everything you know about him you know and this is just to upgrade to increase your knowledge or we believe in uh, our uh, prophet Stop here. How they're saying it. Siraj. This is the old description, you know, of the light. Now you have the electrical one, you know, and this is the Siraj. It means the physical component of it, you know. And the Prophet by but was a light by himself, you know, and for, for to get some of this light to yourself, you need some physical measurement to be used there, you know. You should eliminate, you should enlighten yourself, you know, by the Holy Quran. You should enlighten yourself, you know, by the prophetic tradition, you know, and you name it, you know. And uh, uh, and this name, you know, again it was mentioned in the Holy Quran, the Siraj. Okay. This is mentioned in Surah Al Ahzab, and we should have a lot of it's not a matter of repetition, you know. In his nature, he is going to be light, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but in our nature, I'm completely dark, okay? I should eliminate myself, you know, by having this light turned on, you know, inside myself, you know, and by this, I'm going to eliminate myself. Well, the Prophet وسلم, this, the light, he told us about two ways, you know, to get yourself, you know, have a light, not to be in complete darkness. Firstly, by prayer, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was salatu nur okay this is one way of eliminating yourself you know the other way in surah al nur okay this chapter of nur or light this sounds strange you know because you have one third of this chapter you know is going to speak about the gender relation you know your relation with the other gender okay then all of a sudden at the end of when we said you have one verse after it you start Allah Nur Samawat Lart. You have speaking about the light for all roughly one third you know of the chapter, then you have an end by another verse similar to the previous verse. Okay, then return back to speak about the relation between the two genders you know okay and this is very important you know because if you want to have your heart eliminated don't listen to those speaking about civilization or development you know or we are going to have mixture or whatever you know take the guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you want to eliminate yourself you should be regulated according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instruction which has been mentioned you know in this chapter you know and some person 
who used to attend us, I think he's in California, you know, and perhaps in LA or elsewhere, you know, he told me about this story because he was young, you know, and he used to keep his gaze, you know, away from the other gender, you know, and he was observed by some non-believer people as elimination. I believe in the story, you may believe, you may not believe, you know, but I take it from the chapter mentioned in Surah An-Nur, okay? Because this is really, for me, sounds strange, you know, and tell me, telling me about certain point here. What I'm trying to say, we have some habits, we have some social activity, we have this, we have that, we have some philosophy, we have some people, you know, to speak up, you know, about certain matters, you know, all of them, when I compare them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are not going to be as effective or, or as having a meaning as when we sp believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or speak with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or have some meaning given, you know, from the Holy Quran of from the prophetic, you know, uh, tradition or whatever, you don't know. And that's why I would like from myself, I personally, myself, I was re not raised up, you know, in the way of having the perfect, you know, uh, way of handling the relation between the two genders, you know. And I expect many of your people, they were not, uh, they, they have the same problem, you know, they were not raised up, you know, according to Islamic way, you know. And that's why I feel myself, I feel the other, we need a lot of changes, you know, in that regard, to gain some elimination from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's side. Then we have the holy name, Misbah. Or lamb. Why he mentioned it in this form, you know? Because as Qadi Ayyad mentioned in Shifa, you have some interpreter of the Quran, they said about this famous, you know, verse speaking about nur or illumination in Holy Quran that the second light there speaking about the Prophet Sallallahu and the example was given that he's like a lamb, you know, inside that lamb you have this uh, light or illumination, you know, and this is La Sharqiya wa La Gharbiya. You have many descriptions there, you know, I, I may not be able you know, to mention all of them, you know, please we'll go back, you know, and check it. I think this is verse number 35, you know, in Surah Al-Nur, you know, you may understand, and you don't take the physical explanation or lamp. Okay, no. And you are, uh, uh, I give you an example of it, you know. We say, we say Sayyidina Musa is Kadimullah. When he hear the words, you know, come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to many scholars, he hated to hear anyone, anyone sp uh, talk or speech, you know, after it, you know. Why? Because he has this great experience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here when you have this great experience with the Prophet sallallahu I'm not telling you it's going to be the same, you know, but it's going to be from the same pattern, you know. Okay, that's why when the Prophet sallallahu passed away, a famous companion called Abdullah bin Zayd, what did he say? Oh Allah, I want, I don't want to see anyone after him, you know, take, take my sight away. And he became blind like, right away, Abdullah bin Zayd, okay? This is a, a significant lover of the Prophet Sallallahu and whenever you call the Adhan, he's going to have a portion, you know, of the reward because he was the, the one who dreamt, you know, about Adhan, you know. He said when he received the news, the bad news that the Prophet Sallallahu passed away, he said, I, oh Allah, I don't like to see anyone after him. Take away my sight, you know, and he became blind. Huda, that's mean guidance. Okay. You may have a person guided, you know, on his way, how to go back home. You may have a person, you know, has been guided in, in all of his life, and we have the person who was guided how to reach the heaven to reach his destination, you know, and I feel the difference, you know, between these people, you know, and even the one who reach heaven, they are not equal. You have some they may reach it, you know, with very easy way, the other with much, with much more difficult, and the difficulty may build up, you know, for, uh, according to the deeds that we have practiced, you know, in our life, you know, and here, this remind me that whenever you hear any statement about him, Salah, 
problem, you should think your in your inside yourself about the guidance, ah, the, the most guidance. Okay, and this is tells you that one of the main tasks, you know, of the Prophet وسلم, to to guide people to the extent that he was described by himself, you know, as the noun. To have the the description come by a noun, you know, like here Huda or Adil for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or whatever you know it means much more than you say when you say Hadi or Mahdi why because as if he is the noun and this is have the meaning of excessive meaning of it you know even though it, it was in very simple form and this is was his way sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to be very simple you know uh, very easy you know in his way and he was the most guidance ever you know in the life Shall we answer the question? Okay. We are going to answer this question given to me. Look, a long one, you know, then we'll, we'll end the session. Islam means submission to whom? What do you expect? To whom? We are equal here. I'm not going to give submission for your people, you know, or for anyone of your people. You know. I'm going to give full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to me to show my humbleness and to put myself down, I'm going to put myself. Namely, in the time of the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the other times, you still, some of us, they have their parents, you know. You should put your wings down, you know, for your, your parent. You should treat everyone, you know, around you the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed you to do. You should, you may have submission to someone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but as I said before, you know, this is going to come from the Muslim, you know, as part of his submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They speak about the asker, apparently he felt that some people, they have full submission. I'm going to speak, you know, up. They have full submission for everyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the point here? I don't see any point, okay? If someone have full submission to Allah and not, none for anyone else, you know, it's going to sound much more Muslim than the one who has full submission for everyone according. Yani I am not here to tell you about what's you in the inner, you know, in your side, inside yourself. I'm not going to speak about your heart. I'm going to judge you from the apparent, okay? If such a person come and want to get married to my daughter am I allowed to give him his, my daughter no he should say ashhadu an la illa wa ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah okay oh, many relations in my life is going to change according to this word i don't look my son in law i did not look inside his heart to say if he is real muslim or not you know but i deal with him from the apparent way okay the, please 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 for this askar and from everyone you know don't liquefy this matter okay this matter has two components one component i'm fully responsible about it the other component related to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my component how I'm going to deal with such a person, okay? Namely, marriage, relation, and you name it. I'm going to judge myself according to Allah's instruction in these matters. Then, when you speak about heaven, I believe that he's not going to go to heaven, you know. You may have other belief. This is Allah's matter, not my matter, okay? Then, he, he wrote down that the statement which I hate a lot, you know, and I don't see it as uh, applicable to, to any time. Okay, we'll stop here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. The first question speak about Surah Mulk. There's uh, the word Nazir. Does it mean Sayyidina Muhammad? I think when it's you have it in the negating form, it means any messenger or any prophet. Okay, uh, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala 
سيد بلا قد جاءنا نذير فكذبنا وقلنا ما نزل الله من شيء يعني اي هاف تو هيزيتنس يو نو تو كونسنتريت اور هايلايت سيرتن بورشن يو نو اند باي باس ذا اذر بورشن يو نو فور ذا اذر كويشن يو نو ذا لاست بورشن اوف ات ذات ذير از ا ستيتمنت ويتش اي هيرد يو نو ذات ذا بيرسون هو came to these uh, to the western countries he found muslims you know without islam the person who was in muslim countries he found islam without muslims you know i don't know yeah i'm not going to answer this question you know but do you consider homosexuality you know and other practices interest and other things drinking wine they are, are islam i cannot understand them you know, as such you know that's why i i'm completely against this statement you know and this is confirmed the hadith i'm going to, to, to mention this hadith to you okay that the prophet sallallahu did say listen to what did he say this is in abu dawood and this is authentic hadith ana bari um min kullu muslimin yaqum bayna azhar mushkin subhanallah now in different patterns you know i see the muslims persons you know in this country they feel themselves you know as if they don't have any relation with the muslim in other sides you know yeah this baraa it came it took place from both sides you know the prophet is bari minkum okay and you show the baraa from him sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he used to care about all muslims you know i i uh, correct me if i'm wrong you know have you seen the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam rejecting any muslim now you say all these billions you know or muslim of muslim that they are sitting there they i don't recognize them okay go to hell all of you this is against the attitude of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay and subhanallah yani i was really surprised because i did not see this behavior come from his side sallallahu alaihi wasallam only many people here i'm not telling all people you know many people here have the same attitude you know against the muslim back in our countries they are poor they are oppressed they are this they are that you have the most luxurious life you know you still you know you feel that you want to take it in this life and in the hereafter no way you are not going to take it in the hereafter unless you are going to be real muslim okay shall we carry on Sayyiduna Mahdi, okay, yeah, that's me, the Prophet Sallallahu not only he's the guidance, he's going to be to everyone, you know, for, in the same way, you know, yeah, and, that, uh, and this is his akhlaq, this is his character, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever he has something, you know, he's going to uh, make it available for everyone. and that's why uh, that's that's what i look for to have it from my side and from everyone's side okay be don't be selfish be generous be sakhi okay whatever of good matter you have rather th- saying you know they are not anything you know they are really bad okay Tr- to find a way to help these people you know to help those who are not guided those who uh, miss guidance those who miss money those who miss uh, uh, support those uh, you, you should feel bad you know about them you know. and this is one of the meaning that i miss to mention you know in number 43 when we speak about harisun alaykum the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to have main concern for everyone you know is not going to consider him uh, himself you know out side you know the the equation for anyone okay and we should have his guidance with with us you know all the time you know and that's this is the generosity you know for sure you are not going to find anyone similar to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but this has been mentioned during umar bin khattab time they ask him how come you give the qurayshi people you don't give anyone else you know the same pr- uh, amount of money that you give the qurayshi there was what was his answer when i give the qurayshi people you know the money is going to spread all over the community when i give it to someone else it's going to be limited to them you see yani this is quraish this is the tribe of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what do you think about him he is the original one he is most generous one sakhi one okay of giving giving the guidance giving the good matters you know care about uh, 
even يعني, really he used to give preference you know of everyone over his family he has the most noble family you know he told Sayyid Fatima his daughter I'm not going to give you the servant you know and leave the Ahl al-Sufa without food don't imagine not myself not, not, uh, neither myself nor anyone you know don't imagine for one second that we love our daughters much more than the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, he is perfect, he is great, you know, in all of his matter. Even in his love to his family, to his daughter, he was great and perfect, okay? When he told her as such, this in, indirect way, tell me, don't be selfish. Okay? Don't look after you. I know about certain people. They are going to sacrifice their family. They are going to sacrifice their time. They are going to sacri sacrifice their money. For what purpose? Just to help the others, you know. When you have, as Muslim, you know, all of us, you know, we have this attitude. We are going to be in completely different, you know, uh, position or circumstances that we live nowadays. Then we have Sayyiduna Munir. As we mentioned about Noor and Munir, you see, yani, uh, these names really helped me a lot, you know, because they speak about him, Sallallahu from the himself, and he was not selfish, you know, to keep it for himself, you know, he offered it to f for everyone. His Noor was eliminating for everyone. Okay, his guidance was given to for everyone, you know. I'm sorry to tell you, some of these people, they accepted and then some they rejected, okay? And I cannot consider them the same. Sayyidina Da'i, okay? Please don't forget, here you have very important point. And we have other points, you know. And the Prophet ﷺ was perfect in all of them, you know. He was da'i ilallah, wa da'iyan ilallah bi'idhni. Okay? He called to Allah subhanahu ta'ala. This is was successful in some cases, you know. Was not successful in other cases. Okay? And really we are bad when we consider the success area with the not success area, you know, because of our as our passion you know or we're approving our case i am not here to speak about myself i'm here to speak about allah i'm here to speak about the messenger sallallahu alaihi i don't care about myself i don't care about anyone okay i ju just care about allah subhanahu wa and his messenger and this should be the attitude of everyone you know and you have this uh, quite obvious in the prophet sallallahu case and in Many of his companions, perhaps I should mention this name because really it admire me a lot, Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, he has complete ignorance of himself, you know. He's going to ignore himself, you know, completely on the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the sake of his messenger. He's not going to prove any point for himself, you know. Even this makes the people speak about against him. One time, Sayyidina Khalid ibn al-Walid was surrounded by some Roman, huge number, you know, and he was in very small amount, and he was very smart, you know, to escape them, you know, and return back to the Muslim, you know. And the, the talk starts start in the army of the Muslim. If Abu Ubaidah was there, will not know how to, to escape. Who get uh, angry? Not Abu Ubaidah. The one who got angry said, the Mu'az Abu Jabal. He said, what's wrong with Abu Ubaidah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to save him. Okay? Yani here, when you have a, a complete ignorance of yourself, you are going to find someone else you know, to speak in your behalf. Or not anyone, Mu'az Abu Jabal, the one who did speak you know, about Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah. He said, what's wrong with Abu Ubaidah? If this happened to him, he's going to be saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, it's not يعني, for sure I'm not here to put down. We have some physical maneuver, we have some physical way, but to to dictate on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make this maneuver, you know, uh, judge everything in this life, this is completely wrong. You have Allah subhanahu wa why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create miracles? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has this extraordinary nowadays we speak about it? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has something impossible you know, in our mind, you know? 
all of these matter to tell us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one you know to judge in this universe you know no, 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 no one else you know these rules these physical rules or other natural rules or whatever you know, they are they govern us but they don't govern Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by any way okay so here Da'i I did see him be Abi Anta wa Ummi Ya Rasulullah invite her to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and invite her to himself and invite her for everyone to invite them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, I should mention here, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadith, he make example, you know, of the Quran as invitation. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invitation. This is the, if you want to call it food or whatever, and served by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, similar to other inviters, all of them, they would like you to come to their invitation. And what I understand from that particular hadith, even Allah wants you to come to his invitation, okay? There's an invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala done by the Prophet. Yeah, and those items, those names, you know, you don't find them, you know, in our life. I'm going to speak about my life, you know. I don't have anything dearer than Allah and his messenger, you know, in my life. So you have invitation done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and you have the inviter is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, uh, and this is uh, Bukhari narration, I'm going to mention it. Sayyidun bana daran wa sana'a ma'dubatan wa arsala da'iyan. Fadda'i huwa Allah. Fasayyidu huwa Allah. Wal ma'dubatu hiya al-Islam. Wal baytu huwa al-Jannah wa al-Da'i. هو محمد ومحمد فرق بين الناس okay like a master he did invitation he built a house he made an invitation and sent inviter the master is Allah and the house is the heaven and the invitation is Islam and the inviter is Muhammad and Muhammad on فرق is going to show the difference between people as it's going the one who uh, accept him you know believe in him is going to be uh, as responder to his invitation you know and the one who failed to do so is going to be from the otherwise side then you have Mujib okay the Prophet was too humble you know firstly again I'm going to have it in the same pattern here you have something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask him to do and you have some people ask him for certain things to do and the Prophet was too perfect you know in answering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's going to find this in his you are going to find it in his practice Okay. When, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and Nabiyu awla bil mu'minina bin anfusihim right away he started practicing in Salasa. Not from the honorable position. I love the honorable position of his Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He started practicing it from the duty pr position of it, you know. He's going to pay the debts for any de diseased person, you know, and is going to make Janaza prayer on him. This is the way he he started to make to respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instruction. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and for him, he started it in his way, you know. Then as Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik he said, whenever you have any person in Medina, call the Prophet is going to answer him. We are not speaking about me. We are speaking about very busy person. All matters needed from him is going to be called for any trivial matter. Yet he answered all of these people. The, some of them, a woman was a little bit crazy, you know. She asked, I want to meet with you, you know, in privacy. He said, okay. You, f you try to find any street, you know, or any road in Medina, I'm going to meet with you. You see, yani this great time of the Prophet ﷺ was spent with, this is, I may not understand, I'm going, going to give you this story, you know, to understand it, you know. When Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz became the Khalifa, he felt that he cannot ha have all of these burdens, you know. He cry, uh, try to cut down some of his duties, you know. And this is the reality, you know. We are humankind, we are limited, you know. We are incapable of doing all of the, these things, you know, right the way. The Prophet did not cut down any of them, you know. The, 
uh, you have great person they are not like me they cut down some certain areas you know because they felt themselves you know they are incapable of doing it perfectly the way it should be done then you have mujab for sure in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala standard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered many of the supplication given by the Prophet sallallahu the most important one he said he highlighted sallallahu alayhi he said none of the Prophet was without being given an answered supplication all prophets they use it in this life except me I'm going to use it in the hereafter for my nation okay you see how selfish is he sallallahu alayhi wa even the supplication, he did not use it for himself, did not use it for anything. He left it for, for who? For this community, for me and you, okay? He left this dua, and, and this is mujab. You have no doubt, you know, because the most truthful one is the Prophet Sallallahu You have no doubt when he speak about it that this is going to be accepted from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala right away. You may have some other dua that are accepted, you know, plenty of them. You have some few of them; they will be not met, you know. But the Prophet is too smart, you know. It's going to change the pattern of them, you know, and have them met example of it you have this revelation you know, in the Quran this is I think verse number uh, 49 I think in Surah Al-An'am has the full capacity subhanahu wa ta'ala to send a punishment from above your people when I read this verse, you know, will not come to my mind at all that we are meant, you know, by it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right away, and there's masjid in Medina al munawwara called Masjid Al-Ijaba. He went there, begged Allah, may sabla, oh Allah, save us of punishment coming from above us, you know. And this was answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was saved, and we, we were saved, you know, from it. Or underneath, Again, he begged Allah, and he was answered. Then, that it's going to have division, you know, among you people, you know, and you are going to have the uh, heaviness, you know, or the the uh, hardness, you know, come from each other to against each other, you know. I'm sorry about this, you know, and the answer was not was no. What did the Prophet ﷺ do? Anyone else, you know, is going to stop there. The Prophet ﷺ changed the pattern of it, you know. He said in another hadith, Ummati ummatun marhuma, la adab alayha wa la hisab, wa inna ma'adabuha fi dunya fi zalazil wal qatli wal fitan. Okay, those negative behavior that we behave, I'm sorry to speak about this, you know, we behave in this life, they are going to be our punishment, you know. When we return to ba back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, no punishment, no reckoning, nothing at all. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ did ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he did not answer his request, you know, for the third one, you know, in that particular verse, to make it in this life, not in the hereafter. You know, you, nowadays you have many people. How come you know, really they are bad, you know, these Muslim, you know? This is our punishment, okay? We are punished, you know, in this life, you know, because we are not that good, you know, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So we'll stop here, okay? Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina. I'm sorry, as usual, I, I was not able to finish all names, you know, of the, the Prophet. I, I hope that I gave the message for everyone, you know, to enjoy your time, you know, reading and try to understand the holy names of the Prophet ﷺ. Because really they mean a lot, you know, for anyone, you know. Uh, just leave yourself alone, depart from yourself, you know, and try to understand the meaning there. Try to improve yourself, you know, according. Try to find your share, you know, of 
if it's possible you know to to have some share in some of these names you know now we are going to inshallah to go over all names you know in arabic language allahumma salli yourself and i would like from everyone you know to make salawat whenever any of these names you know mentioned you know allahumma salli wa sallam barak ala sayyidina muhammad sallallahu wa sallam alayhi wa ala alihi sayyiduna ahmad sallallahu wa sallam alayhi wa ala alihi sayyiduna hamid sallallahu wa sallam alayhi wa ala alihi sayyiduna mahmud sallallahu wa sallam alayhi wa ala alihi sayyiduna ahid aw ahyad sallallahu wa sallam alayhi wa ala alihi sayyiduna wahid sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi sayyiduna mahi sallallahu wa sallam wa ala alihi sayyiduna hashir صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا عاقب صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا طه صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ياسين صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا طاهر صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مطهر صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا طيب صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا سيد صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا رسول صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا نبي صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا رسول الرحمه صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى على آل سيدنا قيم أرقسم صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا جامع صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا مقتفي صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا مقفي أو مقفى صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا رسول الملاحم صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا رسول الراحة صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا كامل صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا إكريل صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا مدثر صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا مزمل صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا عبد الله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا حبيب الله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صفي الله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا نجي الله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا كريم الله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا خاتم الانبياء صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا خاتم الرسل صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا محيي صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا منجي صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مذكر صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ناصر صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا منصور صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا نبي الرحمه صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا نبي التوبه صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا حريص عليكم صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا معلوم صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا شهير صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا شاهد صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا شهيد صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مشهود صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا بشير صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مبشر صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا نذير صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا منذر صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا نور صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا سراج صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مصباح صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا هدى صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مهدي صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا منير صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا داعي صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مدعو صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مجيب صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مجاب صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا حفي صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا عفو صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ولي صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا حق صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا قوي صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا امين صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مامون صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا كريم صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مكرم صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ماكين صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا متين صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مبين صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مؤمل او مؤمل صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا وصول صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ذو قوه صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ذو حرمه صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ذو مكانه صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ذو عز ذو عز صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ذو فضل صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله سيدنا مطاع صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مطيع صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا قدم صدق صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا رحمه صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا بشرى صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله سيدنا غوث صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا غيث صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله 
سيدنا غياس صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا نعمة الله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا هدية الله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا عورة مسقى صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صراط الله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صراط مستقيم صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ذكر الله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا سيف الله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا حزب الله صلى الله الله سلام عليه وعلى اله سيدنا النجم الثاقب صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مصطفى صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مجتبى صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا منتقى صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا امي صلى الله عليه وسلم سيدنا صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مختار صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا اجير اور امير اور اخير صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا جبار اور خيار صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ابو القاسم صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ابو الطاهر صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ابو الطيب صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ابو ابراهيم صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مشفع صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا شفيع صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صالح صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مصلح صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مهيمن صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صادق صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مصدق صلى الله وسلم او المصدق صلى الله وسلم سلام عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صدق صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا سيد المرسلين صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا امام المتقين صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا قائد الغر المحجلين صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا خليل الرحمن صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا بر صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مبر او مبير صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا وجيه صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا نصيح صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا ناصح صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا وكيل صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا متوكل صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا كفيل صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا شفيق صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مقيم السنه صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مقدس صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا روح القدس صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا روح الحق صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا روح القسط صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا كافي صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مكتفي صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا بالغ صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مبلغ صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا شافي صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا واصل صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا موصول او موصل صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا سابق صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا سائق صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا هادي صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مهدي او مهتدي صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مقدم صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا عزيز صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا فاضل صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مفضل صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا فاتح صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مفتاح صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مفتاح الرحمه صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مفتاح الجنه صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا علم الايمان صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا علم اليقين صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا دليل الخيرات صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مصحح الحسنات صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا مقيل العثرات صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صفوحا عن الزيلات صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب الشفاعة صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا صاحب المقام صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا صاحب القدم صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا مخصوص بالعز صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا مخصوص بالمجد صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا مخصوص بالشرف صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا صاحب الوسيلة صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا صاحب السيف صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا صاحب الفضيلة صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا صاحب الإزار صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا صاحب الحجه صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب السلطان صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب الرداء صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب الدبجه الرفيعه صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب التاج صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب المغفر صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب اللواء صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب المعراج صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب القضيب صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب البراق صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب الخاتم صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب العلامه صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب البرهان صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صاحب البيان صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا فصيح اللسان صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله 
سيدنا مطهر الجنان او مطهر الجنان صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا رؤوف صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا رحيم صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا اذن خير صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا صحيح الاسلام صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا سيد الكونين صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا عين النعيم او عين النعم صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا عين الغر او عين العز صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى اله سيدنا سعد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى آل سيدنا سعد الخلق أو سيد الخلق صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا خطيب الأمم صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا علم الهدى صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا كاشف الكرب صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا رافع رتب صلى الله أو الرفيع رتب صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا عز العرب أو عز القرب أو عز القرب صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا صاحب الفرج أو كريم المخرج أو الرفيع المخرج صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى آله سيدنا كريم المخرج صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه وعلى آله يا رب اللهم يا رب بجاي نبيك المصطفى رسولك المطهر المرتضى طهر قلوبنا من كل وصف يبعدنا عن مشاهدتك ومحبتك وامتنا على السنه والجماعه والشوق الى لقائك يا ذا الجلال والاكرام وصلى الله على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما